Shit on my shoulders, I'm living this way. I wanna come on, I grip on your cake. Loading, I'm down, I do what it takes. Fish on that nigga, I'm not my mistakes. I'm in the cut and I'm slipping away. Niggas, I know they moving real fake. Funny how love can turn into hate. Funny how love can turn you away. Funny how love can turn you away. Funny how love can turn into hate. Funny how love. Funny how love can turn you away. Funny how love can turn you into hate. Funny how love. Funny how love can turn you away. Funny how love. They taught me, baby, they didn't taught me nice. You taught me, baby. Taught me, baby. If you taught me, baby, they didn't taught me nice. Taught me, baby, they didn't taught me nice. Taught me, baby. Taught me, baby. Get taught me, baby, they didn't taught me nice. Taught me, baby. Taught me, baby.
Yeah, we done came from the bottom Mad that we up, but I don't hear him talking Started with knowledge inside of my noggin We took a dream and then we started vlogging Put my city on the map now I'ma say how it is and now I'm back down On the road to 100k, we finna act out We gon' show them that we not just in the background we the main event, we the main show We the one that people always gonna pay for If I F, we the best, no debate though Easy Number on one sports feet. channel, every angle I'ma show them all how we ride Best sports style show, we not like them guys We playing it safe, are they fair to the lines We switching the narrative all of the time Like who to go, in the game is not MJ Kobe Bryant top 10, not what we say I keep my life, you want us very overrated Keep it real, if it ain't fact, we don't say it Now I'm safe, but we won't be ignored It's facts over feelings, you talk about history Boys, you Scooby-Doo talking in mysteries You is a puppet, the ticket, that's misery Said that you bite it, they boy, know your history It's facts over feelings, you talk about history Boys, you Scooby-Doo talking in mysteries You is a puppet, the ticket, that's misery Said that you bite it, they boy, know your history uh, All in your feelings, you gotta be kidding me Bad for respect, but you only show jealousy Wanted some status, but you make it enemies Talk about brown workout like you burn calories Calling a bank, cause he come with the cavalry Caught another L, ready, took another Cassidy Now you on the two, talking like you had a strategy Nah, that's just passion. We love the game. You already know what it is. FYF, you don't got tough skin. You might as well not even come on in. Talk to him. FYF, blow the whistle, man. We too official. Better check the film. We not one of them. The greatest to ever fall above the rim They wasn't with me shooting in the gym Cut the small conversation, debate on major levels This the playoffs, baby, bring that pressure, we never settle Constant spin, getting it in, I wanna win That teamwork got us headed to the ship again Run better than MJ, cut it out Half these fans in the stands don't know what they talking about Half court jumpers, crowd going wild FYF rank number one, you better say it loud Intellectual talk, but fuck your feelings Olaju one too overrated, Kobe still a realist Top ten all time, now how they cut the line Magic Johnson, Draymond Green, one in the same kind Fuck your feelings, fast break, stop and pull a J He got how many rings, nothing else to say With the team, live streaming, play by play It's the dream, full steam on the road to 100k FYF, blow the whistle, man, we too official Better check the film, we not one of them The greatest to ever fall above the rim They wasn't with me shooting in the gym Cut the small conversation, debate on major levels This the playoffs, baby, bring that pressure, we never settle Cross and spin, getting it in, I wanna win That teamwork got us headed to the ship again Started small, then turned into big dogs They treat me like the GM I just make the call, no matter who my op is I'ma stand tall, then pull up to the game Fresh like I just left the mall 100K, 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 check the score We gon' bust the shot clock, fans running to the floor All I hear is goat this and goat that Man, your team suck, hang it up like a coke rack I love the game, I admit it, I can't quit it Step in front of me, man, your ankles gon' get the business Been a legend like Moses Malone, way up ahead of my time This the greatest sports show ever, I just had to remind FYF, FYF, blow the whistle, man, we too official Better check the film, we not one of them The greatest to ever ball above the rim They wasn't with me shooting in the gym Cut the small conversation, debate on major levels This the playoffs, baby, bring that pressure, we never settle Cross and spin, getting it in, I wanna win That teamwork got us headed to the ship again If we have sports, man, it's my man. We back, man. We got another show for you guys, man. Appreciate you guys being here. Um, got another day, man. Salute to everybody that's pulled up. Cuba, rap guy, reloaded, man. I see y'all in here. Creed, Alexander Fitzgerald, man. Appreciate y'all being here, man. Got a great show. Got a lot in store. Um, as usual, man. I, I always notice, man, some of the craziest things. 
And and it always seems like it's LeBron James that stimulates the worst out of people, man. That's what it seems like. Salute to B. Jones, man. Salute to Sammy. I see y'all in there, man. Both of y'all said great intro. Yeah, you know. We try to we try to keep the intros clean, man. Got actually got a new intro coming. Intro, a new intro coming next week, man. So y'all make sure y'all stay tuned to check it out. Um, but and then again for the people, I saw a few complaints, especially like on Facebook, some of the other platforms. For the people that say that the intro might be slightly too long, look, the, 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 the reason for it is look, man, we got to get the notifications out. That little extra eight to ten minutes, man, allows people to filter in here. So when we get started cooking on the topic, man, we all we we locked and loaded, and, and most for the most part, the people are in here to to to, uh, to receive the message, man. This is gonna be a, a call in show, so we're gonna be opening the panel up um, fairly quickly today. Um, Creed Jackson said it's been a minute. Hey, man, man, we've been dropping some heat lately, man. So make sure you pull up, man. You know we still doing our thing over here. We still cooking on a lot of topics, but um. Like I said before, man, it just seems like players like LeBron James, right? One of the most talked about athletes, whether it's good or whether it's bad. They generally bring out people's true nature and people's true feelings. It What it also exposes is. Um, these great players, because they are so great, they do expose from time to time why people are so wrong about them, man. Um, last night was an example of that. Like, so there was a lot of people running around. There were a lot of people running around, man. I can't wait to see what Dreamers Pro has to say about this. And a lot of people. But there were a lot of people who were like, look, it's LeBron James. It, this is what he does. This is what he's been doing. This is not to me when LeBron James did what he did. I've seen it so many times throughout his career. It's no longer surprising to see him lead a comeback like that. Right. He, he's not going to be able to outdo the, the 25 points in a row against the Pistons. Like some some of the things that he's been able to do in the clutch, he's never going to be able to outdo the 3-1 comeback versus the Warriors. LeBron James has some of the greatest, most clutch moments in NBA history. Not only does he have some of the greatest moments, I mean, if you're just talking about eye-popping moments that stand out in highlights, not only does, not only does he hold that, you guys, but he literally leads – in NBA history in almost every such clutch statistical category that you can think of. Like, I know people want to play narrative and say, oh, well, Kobe's better or Jordan's better. And and I understand why you push that narrative. I, I understand it. We all understand the narratives attached to it. Just It's just factually in, inaccurate. Now, you may have your reasons. You know, some people... And there are going to be plenty of people that come up here today that no matter what the numbers are that we put on the screen, like some of the numbers that you see right here on the thumbnail, LeBron James is first in NBA history in clutch points. He's first in NBA history in clutch field goal percentage, right? 22 shoots 22% higher in, in go ahead and game tying moments in the playoffs, right? Higher than Jordan, Steph, Kyrie, KD combined. Has the volume, has the percentages. Right. When you talk about closing games, if it's just about the fourth quarter, LeBron James is the greatest fourth quarter scorer in NBA history for his career. I don't know. I don't know how you slice it. Even if you start going on a on a year by year basis, even if you go to like a year by year basis since since clutch uh, traditional stats have been kept by the NBA. Just start looking at it. Just scroll through the seasons and you'll start seeing one name that's at the cream of the, the crop of all of these lists. One name that always is in the top 10. If not number one, that's LeBron James. And I want you guys to go there. The NBA, NBA has its own tab. All you got to do is pull up the clutch traditional stats and you just go to 
2009, 2010, 2011, and so on and so forth. And as you progress through it, you're going to see one common theme. There's one player that's consistently in those metrics on a year in and year out basis. That's LeBron James. So, again, it takes me back full circle again to a conversation and not just a conversation, man. And we're going to talk about all this. You know, I, I'm, I hear in conversations when I go to other channels, the over glorification, um, the people giving their own testimony and reasons as to why Kobe or even Jordan or anybody might be better. And it just seems like one of the easiest go to's is clutch. And one of the easiest go to's is clutch because the people that say LeBron isn't clutch or for the example that I'm using when I was old, when I was listening in to the Man Down Sports podcast, we heard that lady talking about LeBron just isn't the closer that Kobe is. What these people don't do is they don't define what a closer is. They don't define what clutch is to them. Maybe if you are one of those people that has Kobe or Jordan better in the clutch, when you come up today, one of the first questions I'm going to be asking you is, what is clutch to you? And whatever your definition of clutch is, do the numbers and stats align with your thought process? Because if you come up here and you give me some odd finesse angle of clutch and in that particular constraint, Kobe or Jordan, whoever you have is above LeBron, I'm fine with that. But I think we all have a pretty consistent logic on what clutch is. So I'm curious to see what people come up here and say, especially the Kobe fans, especially the Jordan fans, if they are. Because my thing in these these conversations when we're debating players is you sometimes just have to concede. Right. If a player's just better at something than another player, just concede. Right. Maybe there are other things in your criteria that elevate that play over another. But when we're talking about clutch with Brian, Kobe, Jordan and any other great clutch or closers in the NBA history. A lot of people are just going to need to concede clutch to LeBron James because the numbers. The percentages. The moments, the highlights, it's all starting to fall heavily in LeBron's favor. And it shouldn't take reminders like we saw last night to remind everybody, damn, he really is clutch. Damn, he really can galvanize the whole team. Damn, he really can put a whole team on his back. Hold on. Even defensively, damn, he really can lock up still in the clutch. But see, I'm not surprised by that because LeBron has been doing that his entire career. So it's just odd to me how this is surprising to so many people. But, it, you know, the one funny thing is. The funniest thing, y'all, is this. Moments like this, I've never seen moments like this have people having some of the biggest meltdowns I've ever seen on YouTube, right? We know the most famous meltdown on FYF Sports, one of the most famous meltdowns, right? We, we remember Ticket TV's meltdown when he starts shaving his head on the live. Um, we remember Kwame Brown's meltdown when he came over here. We remember Dreamers Pro's meltdown when he couldn't really face the fire, a legend of winning in Gilbert Arenas. So that we're going to be talking about Dreamers Pro, once again, has had another meltdown. Dreamers Pro has had another meltdown, you guys. Right? So Dreamers Pro will do these videos, you guys. And we're going to play this video. I, you guys got to see this because I know the locker room touched on it yeah, uh, already today. But he starts talking about a topic, you guys. And as he starts talking about the topic, he gets more frustrated and more frustrated until he just completely melts down. So not only does he just melt down, he gets far off topic. And then as he gets off topic, I don't know why he does this. And again, I blame the locker room. 
But then he he turns videos that have nothing to do with me or the locker room into sneak dissing me in the locker room, maybe some other content creators that I'm un unaware of. And I'm just like, my guy, man, what? I ain't even done nothing lately, man. I've been I've been cooling it over here. I haven't really been going at his neck like that. And but the one thing it does show me is that he watches a lot of the content. Like that last live stream that we were doing when we were all calling for Dreamers Pro to come pull up, Dreamers Pro was in the chat. He knows too much about the content. I'm talking about things that were happening three and four hours with into the stream. He is very knowledgeable about these things. But I want y'all to check this out, man. Dreamers Pro once again. And look, I don't want to make this about Dreamers Pro, but what, what this is about, Red, this is what LeBron James has been doing to people, right? Especially the haters. Because we've already exposed, and somebody, I forgot the person that introduced this video to me. And I might, I'm going to remind everybody here of who Dreamers Pro actually was. Dreamers Pro, and somebody enlightened me to this video at one point in time early in his channel history, was a LeBron James fan. He even has a video calling LeBron James the GOAT over players like Kobe Bryant. This is who he used to be. But over time, right, YouTube, I blame sometimes the fans, They've somehow, you guys remember Golem uh, off of Lord of the Rings, how at one point in time, you know, Golem was a normal person. He was a normal little hobbit, right? Walking around, looked like just me and you, just regular people. But then over time, right, somebody gave Dreamers Pro like that ring, that ring of hate. And then over time, Dreamers Pro went from being a humongous fan of LeBron James to a shriveled up just ball of hate man every time he talks and so much so that in this video that i'm about to show you guys smeagol that's his name smeagol yeah so much so t killer that he's unrecognizable if you if you even look at his video from the past because i'm gonna play both videos if you even look at his video from the past he looks healthier he looks you know he looks more you know a uh, 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 vibrant man you know everything is you know everything looks good man he you know he has color to him he doesn't look so bland i think for the times he, he might have had a little style like he was talking like he was me or you but over time man he's just shriveled up and so much so that in this most recent video he is now turned to attacking his own subscribers that's what he's done, man. Check this out. It's funny. Now, this is funny. We, we're going to get to the, the, pri the primary topic of the day. I just wanted to start it off with this because I thought this was one of the most comical things I've seen, right? He is definitely an entertaining content creator. I give him that. All right, hold on. Let me add the sound. He is definitely an entertaining content creator nonetheless, man. Uh, and he's definitely wrong about a few things in this video, man. But man, oh man, the hate, the hate has turned him into Smeagol of the Lord of the Rings, man. He he didn't, and, and y'all see what the hate did to Smeagol. The Smeagol shriveled Gollum up into something that was unrecognizable. He was hiding in caves, right? He he lost, he lost, I mean, he just lost who he was, man. Check this out. Because your titties were tingling last night watching LeBron James go off. Y'all got to be out of y'all minds. Y'all really got to be. I am not giving LeBron any single love prop, nothing. I'm giving LeBron the same exact energy he gave Kobe during his statue ceremony. Zero. Zero. Absolutely zero. That's the amount of energy I would give. So I made that crystal clear to you dudes. Then I don't know why you're asking me now. Number one. Number two. The Clippers are playing a game without Paul George. Not an excuse because I still think they should have whooped that ass. They're playing a game without Paul George. They lose the game. 
to a ninth or 10th seed. The Lakers win that game and they are ninth and 10th seed. What in the hell exactly do you think I'm supposed to be doing? There are a lot of games that Kawhi Leonard has been playing very well recently. Have you been seeing me do shows recently? The only time I was doing shows was when it was talking about the All-Star game, uh, this thing. I am not like these creators that do LeBron videos every single day, every two days, beating a meat to LeBron. I'm not. Well, why would he lie like that? Right. He said he not one of them content creators that do videos about, Le about LeBron every single day. He do videos about LeBron every single day. He literally do video. He just said, because he's probably talking about the locker room or somebody like this is his way of throwing shots without saying names. He literally do videos about LeBron every single day. Remember, remember in my last video, we counted them. He had did 78 LeBron James videos in 60 days. 78 LeBron videos in 60 days. But see, remember y'all the hate got him good. So this is this is this is where I say the hate has Dreamers Pro's mind convoluted. Because he doesn't consider all the hate videos about LeBron LeBron videos. He only considers videos the positive videos of LeBron, any video that might glorify LeBron or give him his, you know, when you get, you know, you, you're actually giving him his credit or just do for the things he's actually doing, whether it's past, present, wherever you want to do. He only considers anything positive about LeBron, a LeBron video. So all this, all his content, even though the majority of his content over the last 60, 120 days has been LeBron James, he, I think he claimed in this video that he hasn't done nothing on LeBron James in two weeks. We all know that's a lie. But Dreamers Pro, even your LeBron James hate videos, your most recent video trying to side with Jason Whit Whitlock on the LeBron James PED allegations, that too is a LeBron James video. This video right here that, that Dreamers Pro just uploaded, this is a LeBron James video. Now he tries to make it seem like it's to others. It's another LeBron James video doing that we talk about different things i'm not one of those creators that every single day my team comes out and they do good i'm doing shows i'm not doing that so if i don't do it for Kawhi, why would i do it for lebron why would i be doing it for lebron number three let me make it clear to you guys again in case you don't know in case you got cotton in your ears i don't know what it is i wanted to say y'all got something else in your ears but i'm not gonna say that I am not going to support the Lakers as long as LeBron James is there. I repeat it once more. As a Kobe Bryant fan, the Lakers got weird to me after that. I am not supporting the Lakers until LeBron retires from the Lakers. I am not supporting that team. I'm not with it, and I'm not doing it. Let me make it crystal clear. Don't be expecting no support videos from me or nothing. Number four. You got all of these dudes in the media twerking it up all over the place. Slapping each other with honey. Gyrating, busting it down, <laughs> throwing ones at each other all over the place over this game. And y'all want me to? Y'all kiss my ass. Y'all can kiss my ass. You're going to have Jay Williams. You're going to have Shannon Sharp. You're going to have all these dudes running Gilbert Arenas. All of them. Being a team that they said, oh is the clowns of the NBA. You want props for beating a team that's the clowns of the NBA? I thought they were the clowns. Why y'all want props for that? So you're going to have all of these dudes hyping it up all over, and then you want me to join? Y'all must be crazy. I'm. Let me say it again. I'm not doing any pot, like, oh, give him LeBron. I'm not doing it. When LeBron went out of his way to ignore those questions about, because some people said, well, you didn't go to the tournament. You weren't there. Okay, fine. You were there, maybe. Maybe the Lakers invited you. Maybe Jeannie Buss invited you, since you would know. But when he went out of his way in the press conference, when the reporter even alluded to, he just totally ignored it. Okay, then I'm going to ignore it too. I'm going to ignore it too. They're the ninth seed. What you want me to say? What y'all want? Did y'all just win the championship? Why y'all so hype? If y'all keep saying the, the Clippers are trash, then why are you getting hype off of the Lakers beating the Clippers? How y'all getting hype? This dude talking about integrity? 
You're going to bring integrity to me? Where your favorite player is being run around being accused of taking PEDs, you're going to bring integrity to me? Y'all going to bring integrity to me? That's not the allegation of Kobe. That's your. Yeah, look now. This is now. I'm, I'm gonna take it back in the video because I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys what truly set him off. All right, that's that's what he's talking about integrity. Because one of his own subscribers hit him with a message, so he exploded like this because of one of his own subscribers. Hold on, let me let me take it back. Let me find this spot in the video. All right, here it is, right here. All right, now I want you guys to check this out. Immediately get a hold of it. And they start coming up there and they start leaving the following comments. Did we really just see the oldest player in the NBA in year 21 beat the Clippers? Interesting. Another person says, you know, this channel just loves to hate on LeBron when they make it about the Clippers and not the fact that this man just single-handedly Led 19 led a 19 point comeback in the fourth quarter. Another person said, uh, this is the one that really um annoyed me when I woke up. I'm trying to find it. He goes, Jesus Christ, Charles, this is what you have to say about the game. You have as much integrity as a glass cup. We all know that the clipper, if we all know had the clippers went on a 21 point comeback in the fourth quarter Kawhi scored 19 in the fourth and LeBron choked the entire fourth and got locked up by Kawhi and missed the game winning shot we all know what your mouth would be spouting right now so man up and say what you should be saying where do I even begin first of all you guys saw Look, y'all, that's how you know he heated. That's how y'all know he heated. Look at the jump cut in the video. He was so heated, he couldn't even do the next part on the, in one take. He had to edit something out because he probably went, he probably went off the rails for real, for real, and had to edit it out a little bit. Look at the jump cut, y'all. He had to, he had to edit some out. He, look at the jump cut. Where do I even begin? First of all, <laughs> you guys saw the title of this show. It says, LeBron fans beg Dreamers Pro to praise him after he blatantly ignored Kobe Bryant statue ceremony. Let me make something crystal clear to you, LeBron James fans. And any cre other creators that are LeBron fans that watch the channel that maybe agree with these LeBron fans. I need to make it crystal clear to you dudes. At the end of that ceremony video show that we did or whatever, that LeBron didn't attend, I made it crystal clear in that show that I will not be giving LeBron James any kind of props, any kind of hype, any kind of, oh, he did this, he did that for ignoring Kobe's statue ceremony. You don't, you, you go out of your way to number one, not attend the ceremony. And number two, when you were asked about it, you just brushed it off like you didn't even give a damn about the, the question. And y'all think I'm going to be sitting up here twerking it up all over the place for you guys, pouring honey all over my stomach, slapping each other all over the place because your titties were tingling last night watching LeBron James go off. Now, I'm telling you guys, look, it was his own subscribers that set him off into a tangent. He was reading his. It's not like he went to my channel or, not, or Gilbert Arena's channel or the locker room channel or anything like that. He went to his own channel. His own subscriber said, bro, you have as much integrity as a, as a glass cup. Like he, And what he tries to do is he tries to say these LeBron fans. No, no, <laughs> those are your subscribers, man. Those are your fans, man. Like if you read Dreamers Pro's comments, his comments are filled with his own subscribers barbecuing them. And you better read them quick because he will get to deleting comments. He will get to deleting select comments. That'd be his own people, man. That's it. His people came to my videos and commented. People that I had never seen, names that I was not familiar with. That'd be him. 
But he went off, man. He went off on a tangent, man. Let me see how he closes it out. Hold on. Dude talking about integrity? You going to bring integrity to me? Where your favorite players being run around being accused of taking PDs? You going to bring integrity to me? Y'all going to bring integrity to me? That's not the allegation of Kobe. That's your man. <laughs> Kobe ain't got them type of allegations. <laughs> That's the allegations your man has. And y'all want to talk about credibility? You want to blaspheme and bring Jesus Christ into it? Over because you like some dude? Y'all got to be crazy. You can go produce all the lives you want to do. Ain't nobody going to watch. <laughs> ain't nobody. All y'all going to do is keep our name popping in the algorithm. Thank you for the shows. Nobody going to watch. <laughs> nobody. Nobody. The last one is, oh, all you got to do is LeBron James videos to get views. We, I haven't been hearing from you dudes for the past two weeks. Y'all see them views. I don't hear from you dudes because y'all know the real. Y'all know the real. <laughs> Why you do this all the time, man? Look, that's what I'm saying. It, I'm not there. I'm not in the comments. Maybe locker room was in the comments. I don't know. I'm not there to bother him. He He's snapping. This he's he really snapping on his own. He's snapping on his own subscribers for calling his integrity to question. And it's just triggering. It's triggering because he has some he has some, you know, he, he has some moments from the past that just keep giving him flashbacks. The flashback when he was on this channel, the flashbacks of his interaction with the locker room, flashback to his, his debate with Gil, flashbacks to legend winning conversation. So he keeps getting these flashbacks when his own subscribers talk to him. So when his own subscribers are talking to him, he flash back to us. And then when he get mad, he start talking about like he did on this channel. I see you niggas at the top. Now he talk about views and stuff, man. We're not talking. Look, I'm going to say it one more time. Just like I say in all the other videos, man, dreamers pro salute to you as a content creator. You, you put out a lot of content. You're doing a hell of a job getting a ton of interaction. I just think you just got some trash basketball takes. As a content creator, you're doing your thing, but you got some trash basketball takes, man. See, it's a it's a, it's a separation there. But he, he likes to just throw it all in one pot, man. He get mad at us. He start trying to talk about everybody's channel, man. He start going at people. Man, he crazy. Oh, this is TMZ Pro, TMZ Pro, trust me. If they could do it too, they'll be doing it. Don't get it twisted. All of these MFers that you see on the internet, all of them trying to make money. And all they do is sit up there and pocket watch dudes all day long looking at their view. I don't be running around looking at dudes' views. Oh, look how many views he got. Let me bust out the calculator. Dreamers Pro just said, I'll be looking at people's views. But just like 30 seconds before, he says, don't nobody watch. Y'all ain't getting no views. That be, that's what I may talk about, man. He just be contradicting. He literally just said, don't nobody watch. Y'all don't be getting no views. And then he get mad. He just said, he get mad at people because he says, all we do is watch. Man, I, I just think he just, he just like a walking contradiction, man. Listen, he literally just, he literally just made these crazy allegations, man. He is wild, man. Let me calculate how much money he got. God. You dudes are weird. Y'all spend more time calculating another man's pocket than trying to figure out ways to multiply your own. I wonder, look at all the views he get. Are you enjoying the views? <laughs> what they're saying is, are you enjoying the money? What is wrong with you dudes? <laughs> I never met somebody that was focused, a man focused. Hey, man, AP, man, I have no bad blood with Dreamers Pro. No, I don't, man. That, that this is he is entertaining. When I would when I listened to this the first time, I was laughing. He is an entertaining content creator, man. I'm not beating up on dude. I just thought this was funny, y'all. Look, y'all can go check it out, man. I'm gonna shut it. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the video here. It's, it's only like a few seconds left, man. Obviously, he's just snapping. He had another moment, man. Like I said, I we didn't see Dreamers Pro acting like this until the locker room came came around. I promise you guys this. This this was this was all initiated by the locker room. 
So that's that's who Dreamers Pro really needs to blame. He needs to blame him, man. I didn't do nothing to him, man. All I did was just do basketball videos. Like and he he just he, I just don't think he knows how to respond to the locker room. Right. I don't think he knows how to respond. Because every time he responds, he just give locker room more content. That's all he do, man. Salute to Dreamers Pro, though, man. Man, he had another moment on his channel, man. He spazzed out. Right? He spazzed out, man. I didn't backdoor be live. <laughs> He says, locker room say he goes to you because he thinks, hey, look, man, I don't, look, man, it is. Now, he was talking about you primarily in that video. He won't, he won't say my name for whatever reason, man. He says, man, y'all call him TMZ Pro. That's how you know he watches, man. At least he, at least he understands who is, who he is. His identity is TMZ Pro. There's nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Look, we're going to drop the link, man. We're going to bring y'all up here, man. We got to cook on it, man. Is LeBron is LeBron James the greatest clutch player of all time, y'all? Is he, is he the greatest clutch player of all time? That's what we need to know. And if you say he's not, and if you have someone over him, we, I just need to know, look, there's no issue with you having – Whoever you got as a better clutch player at the top. The main thing is, what's your definition of clutch? What is your definition of clutch? Because if you are willing to say that someone else is a better clutch player than LeBron James, you need to have a very unique definition of clutch. Because from what I'm looking at, there is no metric. There is no metric that supports any player in NBA history being better in the clutch or in closing moments of a game than LeBron James. Well, you, you can go shots under five seconds, right? Shots under five seconds, LeBron James leads Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan at 47% under five seconds, five buzzer beaters. 7 to 15, 47% from the field, Jordan 45%. So LeBron James has the volume right up there with Jordan, but he also has the percentage the, 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 that goes to efficiency in those moments. So he has volume and efficiency. Game time, go ahead, field goals in under 10 seconds in the postseason. LeBron James, 12 of 23, 52%. Jordan, 7 of 15, 47%. Kobe, Five of 22, 23%. LeBron James, once again, has the best volume, and LeBron James has the best percentage, right? When we go to, when we go to playoff game-winning baskets, right? LeBron leads the NBA in the mo with, with the most playoff game-winning baskets, right? LeBron James, just his... Just his game winning baskets in the playoffs alone makes up nearly 10. It makes up 10% of all of the game winning baskets in playoff NBA history. So Le LeBron James, just by himself, 75 year history of the NBA, LeBron James, just by himself, makes up for a little over 10% of all the playoff game winners in NBA history. I, I want you guys to think about that. Right. When you just go to just performance wise, right? If if there's there's gonna become these are not longevity stats, Juan Stockton. See, see Juan Stockton. This is why I say volume and because the volume, if we just said volume alone, that's longevity. But the percentages shows your efficiency and it nulligates the longevity argument. You got me right. You see that right there. So again, volume with efficiency is what you combined, not just longevity. 
Volume by itself is longevity. The things that I'm telling you right here is not just volume. I'm giving you percentages. So because the one thing that affects longevity, the, the one thing that longevity hurts is longevity generally hurts your percentages over time. So unless you're truly great at something, if you play a long time, for example, if you are a great scorer in the NBA, if you're one of the greatest scorers in NBA history, what's going to happen over time is your points per game, your average is going to decline over time. Right. Or your or your points per game is your overall points is going to decline. But when we start to look at what made the guys like Jordan, the Kobe's and players like that, some of the greatest scores, we start to look at, OK, let's look at their best seasons. Let's look at their best stretches. Let's look at their peaks, their primes. And then let's look at their efficiency. Y'all get mad because LeBron's just more efficient in, in these moments. So, again, when you come up here, I want you guys to have a better understanding of what you're actually hearing. Because, again, when you just say these are longevity stats, it's just you trying to create a very quick cop out so you don't have to accept the information. So you just call it longevity stats. But you, you got to have a little understanding of mathematics. Look right here. He says, where is Clutch in the finals? Okay. But Otamo, I'm going to allow everyone to come up here. And if Clutch in the finals is your only Clutch metric, then say that. He says, the ninja just got blocked by Jamal Murray in the Clutch. Okay. So Otamo, if it's about one individual moment, I can say for Jordan, he got the ball stolen by Nick Anderson in the clutch. Then he threw a turnover. And it, on the next play, he threw the ball right out of bounds, Pat, not shooting it, trying to pass in the clutch to Scottie Pippen. If I wanted to run with narratives similar to how you Jordan fans like to do, I could try to propagate the narrative. Oh, he was scared to take the shot in the clutch. Can you guys imagine that? Can you so you guys, you know, Jordan had a moment in the playoffs where he did not take the shot and tried to pass to Scottie Pippen, threw the ball out of bounds, turned the ball over, and cost the team a trip to another NBA final. Does that mean Jordan is not clutch? See, Otamo, when you say when you say stuff like that, it just lets me know. So now Otamo has moved to three and six in the finals ain't clutch. Okay, so Otamo, if you need, okay, so if you've already moved off of longevity, if you've already moved off of the individual moments, if the finals record is clutch to you, then you need to come up here and explain to us how your finals record is the definition of clutch because today we're not talking about LeBron James's career. We're talking about him as a clutch player. That's all we're talking about. See, I don't, you, you, you gotta just stay locked in on the topic. It's just clutch. If you're just so much of a LeBron James hater that you are just all over the place and you've already started talking about his finals record, then I don't think you have a true, definition of what clutch is i'm just asking you guys to come up here and use use just a few percentage points of your brain power and think a little bit i'm not asking i'm not asking you guys to come up here and think one percent two percent or ten percent just give me 0 0.5 0 0.3 percent of brain power today all right without running the narratives just a tinge of brain power all right I'm not going today. I'm not going to ask you guys to draw up plays, right? I'm not going to put you on front street right there. I'm not going to expose your lack of knowledge about the X's and O's of the game. I just want you to, if you just remember, I've really dumbed this down to just clutch. I'm not talking about the goat conversation. I'm not talking about all this is just clutch. See, see old Tamo. 
So, so we have, so Otamo, we have your definition of clutch now. So Otamo's definition of clutch is your finals record. So that, that right there to me means Bill Russell is the most clutch player in NBA history. So Otamo, Bill Russell, Sam Jones, John Havlicek, I guess those are the most clutch players in NBA history. I'm going to ride with that one. Guys like Magic Johnson, we're going to take those guys because they have the better finals records. Makes no, I mean, it don't make sense to me, but maybe when I drop the link, which I'm about to prepare right now, you can come up here and explain how, how your finals record is clutch. Because the last time I checked, Otamo, the guy that got the name Mr. Clutch had a one and eight record in the finals. So I want you to ask yourself, Otamo, and I didn't give him that name. LeBron James fans didn't give Jerry West that name. It was NBA fans of that time and throughout history who saw him play and make clutch bucket after clutch bucket. He was one and eight in the finals and they called Jerry West, Mr. Clutch. So Otamo, it just ain't your math, your brain power ain't computing. So I just need you to increase your level of brain productivity. Just increase it from 0.1% and bump it up to 0.5%. Right? I, I noticed there's a lot of brain. So you can download on your phone. There's a lot of brain games that you can play that activate certain neurons and get you thinking a little bit more logically. Download a few of them apps. Get your brain going right here. I'm, I'm sipping on right here, right? What I do is I sip on pre-workout. I'll fill this one liter up because, you know, if you drink pre-workout congested just in, in a big and in, in, in when it's not diluted now, it's going to have you all over the place. I dilute it down into one liter. Sip on some pre-workout, man. It has a lot of nutrients in there that, man, get your brain going, man. Look. I'm not, I'm not up here telling you guys to do stuff that I'm not doing. Sometimes my brain power would be lacking. So I'm sipping on my pre-workout, man. Do something to activate your thought process, man, so you don't come up here sounding crazy. So you look, see, look, y'all, they're going to see, I told people, see, I told people about this on the last stream, right? When you say things that connects you with the LGBTQ community. See, Mr. Jones, see what I want you to do, Mr. Jones, is when I drop the link, I want you to come up onto the panel and say this out loud because it don't sound right. Like, how do y'all think of this stuff without it already being on y'all mind? How do y'all think of this stuff with it, with you, without it being on your mind to a certain degree? Remember, this is reminiscent of Jason Whitlock. Remember when Jason Whitlock called out ESPN because he was browsing ESPN's website and he saw an ad pop up that said ball sacks and butt plugs or something. And he did a whole Twitter post. ESPN is so despicable with these. Look at this. Look at this. These ads that that they like to push and propagate. And then everyone had to remind him, a hey, hey, Jason Whitlock, hey, you know, those are targeted ads. You know, that's how ads work. They're all targeted. It's all based on your search history. So if you're searching butt plugs and ball sacks, that's what those are the types of ads that's going to pop up because that's what you into. It's called targeted marketing. It's targeted ads. It's called remarketing. So they're just remarketing stuff that you already search and are interested in then jason whitlock shut the hell up he did a whole twitter post trying to call out espn thinking he had the next hot take didn't realize he was just exposing what he searches that's why i say to mr jones when you say stuff like this I'm really curious to know what is in your own browser history, my guy. Because if we're being honest, y'all, this is just not how normal people talk, man. 
Look at see Hitman X is just see Hitman X is just letting the cat out the back early. And I salute Hitman X for that. Look, if Hitman X is doing a live and you see that type of ad pop up, look, Hitman X is in the clear. This is just part of my search history. I respect the game. He's in Texas. We're, that's that, that's it. That is. So, man, look, man. So, Mr. Jones, man, you, you just got to clear your mind. That's why I said increase your brain power. Look, Mr. Jones, you've all of a sudden stopped typing in the chat. I'm not asking you to stop typing the chat, man. Look at rebranding. I see rebrand is just letting it cut out the back. I respect the game. Look, I can show you another picture. Let me show you this picture of Jason Whitlock. Man, watch this. Jason Whitlock. ESPN tweet. Watch this. Look at this, man. Jason Whitlock is wild for this, man. <laughs> Look at this, man. Let me share my screen before I'm going to drop the link right after this, y'all. Look out. This is Jason Whitlock right here. Check this out. Let me zoom in on this. All right. Jason Whitlock gets clowned by fans for calling out ESPN over ads on a website. Might want to check that search history, man. Look. Look at this. It says, oh. <laughs> look at Look what the ads say, y'all, man. It say, balls deep inside of me is a great way to spend your birthday. It says, Jason Whitlock, where's his tweet? So Because Jason Whitlock did a treat. Look, everybody start frying him on Twitter. It says, might want to check that search history. Right? This is what Jason Whitlock said. I'm looking for... So Jason Whitlock tried to clown ESPN. He said, I'm looking at NFL standings on ESPN.com. This is the ad running above the standings. How is this possible? How is it appropriate? Bro, he gets barbecued. <laughs> Jason Whitlock wondering why he gets porn targeted ad. <laughs> I don't even want to play this video. I don't even want to play this video, man. Oh, man. They are killing him, man. It says Jason Whitlock after learning about his cookies. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh no, man. I gotta play one of these, man. <laughs> it said Jason Whitlock after th learning about his cookies. Dude throwing his whole computer in the garbage can, man. Man, they are barbecuing him, man. Oh man, they are killing him, man. Hold on. They laughing at this man, man. Look, and now Whitlock is blocking everybody. Look at this. He get to blocking people. <laughs> he said, was it something I said, Jason? They blocked him, man. <sighs> I guess they said these are the only cookies Jason Whitlock know about, man. He don't know about the other cookies, man. Jason Whitlock is wild, man. Look at this, man. Jason Whitlock is crazy. And this is the video, right? Dreamers Pro. Because Dreamers Pro, that would have been a hell of a story for Dreamers Pro to do a video on. Did we ever, did we see Dreamers Pro? Because that's right up Dreamers Pro Alley to do the non-basketball, spicy topics, slightly funny, right? Kind of an expose type of piece. Instead, he doing videos supporting Jason Whitlock, talking about, uh, man, I saw Jason Whitlock's video on LeBron James and PED uses, man. And I was, man, it was very alarmed. How can you, how, if you're going to do a video on Jason Whitlock, how come you didn't do a video on this? Because remember, Dreamers Pro is all about the exposing and whatnot. This man tried to expose ESPN and expose his expose his own search history, man. I'm I'm real curious to see what type of ad this is for, man. Balls deep inside of me is a great way to spend your birthday, man. But I'm scared to see what the hell Jason Whitlock got um, in his search history, y'all, man. That is wild right there. That is wild right there, man. But this is the things we got to deal with, man. This is the things we got to deal with, man. Hold on. I'm going to get this link together, man. Make sure y'all support the channel, man. Hit the cash app, dollar sign, FYF Sports, man. Support the channel, man. As you guys know, man, look, YouTube does not like FYF Sports, man. They're killing the ad revenue, man. If you enjoy the content, right? If you enjoy the content, support the channel, dollar sign, FYF Sports, man. $1, $2, 50 cents. Man, all you gotta do is support the channel. Show your love, show your appreciation to FYF Sports. 
um, all the all all the funds go right back into producing more and more content, man. And, and look, as my basketball season at GCU starts to come to an end, um, we're about to come up on a, a slower spot in our season right now. Um, we're going to be pumping out more and more content. Um, like I said, we got other content creators that are also doing shows on FYF of Sports as well. You guys have already seen Fontaine's Five with his uh, NBA props show. He's going live a few times of the week. We're going to have a new show on Fridays coming over to FYF Sports. I'm not going to spill the beans on that, but tune. make sure you tune in this Friday, man. We got a new content creator who's bringing his own series over here, FYF Sports. So the main thing is, look, if you're a content creator, if you're looking to expand, man, if you're trying to get your own brand or channel in front of a, a bigger audience or whatnot, come over here, FYF Sports. You can have your own show. It costs you no money, right? All you got to do is be willing to come over here and produce high quality content, Um on a consistent basis, man. Let me just this link in the chat for you guys. And we're going to get y'all up here to cook, man. Is LeBron James the most clutch NBA player in NBA history? Hit the link to join the panel, man. And I'm going to put that Cash App link in the chat. I know you guys have been seeing it already, but the link is there. Um, if you want to support, you can easily click that link to support, man. Um, I will be getting a PayPal up soon. I know some, uh, I know some of you guys have been asking me, I've been getting emails. Um, um, I've been getting emails about, uh, uh, my PayPal and PayPal donations. Um, yes, that will be coming soon. That will be coming. Soon. We got Jay in the backstage. Michael says you guys are 24 and four. great record. No, we're actually 20 and four. Uh, Michael, we're 20 and four, um, which is still a great record, man. 20 and four on the season. Um, we got some um, scrimmages coming up against some semi pro teams to get us ready for nationals. We had two more tournaments left on the year, and then it's a wrap. But again, right now, we, we're at the, this year, um, the pressure's on us, man. The pressure is on uh, because if we don't do it this year, we we running around looking like the 2011 uh, uh, Miami Heat, man. We just kind of choked away. We got twin. We got Jay. All right. I see we got a few more people. Coming. Next stage was good. Jay, Jay, you were the first one in here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm say about that 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 red game yesterday, man. That shit was a disgrace. That was an embarrassment. It doesn't add up. The way the Clippers were playing during the fourth quarter yesterday, that shit was completely rigged. That was bullshit. And I am done with the NBA. And okay. I don't care. Hold on, Jay. Anything. And Jay, I don't mind anything. that take. I don't mind that take, Jay. Um, but I do want to know is um, why do you say the game is rigged? What What did you Be see in that game? I just saw, like, the way the Clippers were, like, playing in the fourth quarter. Like, it just didn't add up. Like, okay, during the first half, like, the Clippers, like, everything was rolling. Like, they had everything going. Like, they were moving the ball around. They wasn't playing – isolation like they wasn't being selfish and stuff the same way that the 49ers versus Chiefs game that the first half they was running the ball and that they were running up the middle and stuff and doing play action and then when you get to the second half in the fourth quarter it's like they're doing something completely different like it doesn't make any sense like something just doesn't add up the Clippers in the fourth quarter all of a sudden want to start jacking up crazy shots start jacking up crazy threes playing too much iso ball like not moving the ball around like it just doesn't add up man and, like you can just see if you don't see that these games is fixed and predetermined then i don't know what else to say man but this is big bro man jay man i feel you know i feel bad jay i feel bad jay now jay one more question jay with the clippers being your team how do you feel about the integrity of the Clippers if they were willing to participate in 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 this propaganda of LeBron James allowing to come back, right? Allowing media to push these mainstream narratives that he is one of the greatest clutch players. How do you feel about your favorite team and your favorite players playing a main and integral role? Kawhi Leonard losing the ball out of bounds, right? Getting clamped up by a 39-year-old. How do you now feel about LeBron James? And James Harden and those guys, man. I mean, I already knew the NBA was fake and stuff. I already knew it was like entertainment because that's what it is. At the end of the day, like this stuff is entertainment, you know. They have these games predetermined, you know what I'm saying? Now, 
don't get me wrong, like I still watch, you know what I'm saying? Like I still come on come on here and like talk basketball, top it up with y'all, but at the end of the day in the back of my mind, like I already know what it is, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't control the outcome. So it's just entertainment. That's all it is real. The NBA's just WWE basically. No different than the NFL or any other professional sport. And that makes sense, Jay. That makes a lot of sense. But again, I want more in-depth insight on your personal feelings about Kawhi Leonard, man, being a member. Key turnover late game. James Harden literally, like you said, throws the ball out of bounds on that late game base under the baseline, under the basket out of bounds play, right? The plays mm -hmm. were vivid right there. The fix was vivid right there. But the problem is that means James Harden and Kawhi Leonard got the memo. Are they, yeah, they are they, are they, are they active losers? Like, do you have your mindset on just those two change? Because they had to be the main uh, uh, participants to make this happen for LeBron James. But it's not just them. It's the whole NBA. It's everybody. Everybody's in on it. Like, that's the point that I'm trying to make. Like, it's not, people just think, I'm just saying this because I hate LeBron. Like, no, I'm trying to tell you, like, the whole NBA is a, it's a circus. Like, it's it's fixed. Like, it's rigged. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody's in on it. Like, the head coach, the players, like, the management, like, they all know about this stuff. The referees, can't forget about them. Like, I mean, they all know that this stuff is going to be rigged and scripted. Like, they already know before the games even happen. Now, Jay, last question. My last question is, if you know that it's all fixed, if you know this is all fake, you just said you hate LeBron James. If it's all just for entertainment and it's fake, then why do you hate LeBron with the vitriol that you do, man? Why do you have such fervor towards the hate? And why are you, did you put on that same ring of hate that, that Dreamers Pro put on? Are you shriveling up into Gollum and Smeagol in the same fashion? Are you loud and hate to consume? If you turned on your camera very quickly, can we can we check on you? Can we make sure that you're okay? Or wh what's going on with that, man? Man, I'm I'm good. Why you why you asking me that? Like I'm I'm good. I'm, I'm sitting in my room. About to watch some MTV. Jay, you still watching MTV? That's that's an alarming right there. I didn't know people, especially at your age, still watched MTV. That's a, that's why I say we have to check on you, Jay. Because I mean, I'm about to watch like I'm about to I'm about to watch like I'm about to watch some Jersey Shore. Like, what's wrong with watching TV? So you watching Jersey Shore and you're watching MTV. It's just very odd, Jay. We got to make sure that you are doing okay, man. Can we get it? Can we get a quick camera? We got to make sure you're okay, Jay, man. Something's, something's up, Jay. The hate, the you don't want to, you don't want to really slander Kawhi Leonard to and, and James Harden too much. Um, you haven't really slandered the Clippers, man. So Jay, you doing all right, man? Jay, Jay, you got it. Now talk to us, Jay. Are you okay for real? For real? You got the looseness on your t-shirt neck. Are you okay, my guy? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm cool, bro. Like, I'm just chilling. All right, like, why, why you like why you doing that? No, nah, I'm just uh, Jay. Look, Jay, we just have to <laughs> tap in. We have to make sure everybody is doing well on FYL Sports, and this is all because we have y'all. We have y'all well being in our hearts and minds, man, and we care about Jay, man, very deeply. Look, I allowed you to come up here and do your own rap show, man. I thought you did a hell of a job when people were clowning you and tearing you down. I said it was a hell of a job, man. I was dancing and grooving to the music, so. We got your best interest in heart, but I don't want to see you shrivel up into a Dreamers Pro type of character, man, because of the hate, man. Especially if you believe that the NBA is fake, man. man. So salute to Jay, y'all, man. Jay been one of the hottest takes of the year, man. The NBA is rigged, and Kawhi Leonard and James Harden were active participants um, in the in the rigging. And man. LeBron. And LeBron got a boule tattoo on his chest, too. If you look on the chest, like he got a black bullet tattoo. That's I'm not facts. Making stuff up. That's facts. Okay, yeah, look, y'all salute to the chat, man. Look, we had Jay come up here. Hey, I mean, I thought Jay did a hell of a job, man. What do y'all think? Um, look, Jay came up here and cooked. Um, and Jay, now, now that we you talked about last, last night's game, you said the clutch from last night was fake. Let's just talk about LeBron James as a clutch player. Can, can are you not a participant in this conversation because you just believe it's all scripted? Well, you miss. Look, you didn't understand what I was saying. Yes, it's all scripted, but at the end of the day, like it's still entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Like 
I know a movie scripted, but I don't mean I'm still not going to talk about it. Like, I'll still come up here and, like, chop it up with y'all and, like, talk about it. But at the end of the day, like, I know what it is. Okay, got you, man. Salute to Jay, man. Jay might be on to something here, y'all. We might have to do an independent video just on that narrative alone, man. Might have to, might have to bring Jay up. Hey, Lamont, man. can you get Jay or so over here on FYF where he can expose all the, like, conspiracy <laughs> theories and sports? I don't know if Jay can be consistent enough to have a show, man. I need consistency, man. If Jay can showcase a high level of consistency, man, yeah, we got you. Hey, Lamont, when All he right. speak, you got to play the X-Files theme song when he speak. So, like, you know that he's actually spitting that shit. Ah, or the Twilight Zone music, man. One of those two, man. Jay said he was watching Jersey Shore, though, man. That is wild. Yeah, that's, you know, what? that's why, you know, Jay, that's why I think you in the locker room have so much in common. Because that's right around... The same. I don't got nothing in common with that dude, bro. But that's right around the same era, right? Me, locker room. Easy to think. It, that's why I say I'm surprised that you still watch MTV because I thought that was phased out. But the fact that you reliving your glory days through Jersey Shore, man, that's wild, man. I'm only I'm only 22. Hey Jay, were you on um, you Jay? Were you on Ticket TV early? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So you never mind. So the nigga with the V neck was talking to. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, let's man, are you the one. same man? Hold up, no, 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 wait, no, I'm cleaning up my act. Um, let's stick to the, the script, Lamont. Go ahead, <laughs> okay, Jay. Nah, he was no, nah, he was up. trying to troll me. You was trying to troll Jay, me. Hey, man. Jay, can I, can I ask you something? Nah, Jay? This dude, this dude was trying to troll me, man. Jay, can I ask you something? Yeah, what is clutch? <laughs> locker room. What is the locker room? Locker room is wild. What is clutch to you, man? I get my cousin to slap the fuck out of locker room, bro. Oh, hold wow. on, Jay. Jay, now, Jay, they one thing I want you to clarify because I don't believe this to be true. Everybody in the chat is saying you had a v neck shirt on, and you don't look like that type of character to be wearing a v neck. Can you please confirm that that's not a v neck, it's just a little loose around the neck? I don't want a big screen, Lamont, because I don't think that was a v neck. That definitely wasn't. Man, it's a white, it's a white t shirt, bro. Oh, Talk okay. to him, Jay. Talk, Jay. The people want to know. The, uh, the, the people want to know, Jay. Um, you just open the closet. No, P Jay. Nah. The people, Jay. So the people want to know. The people want to know, Jay. Is it a V neck or is it a crew neck? Man, I ain't showing. Man, I ain't about to be showing myself on here, nigga. One more time, Jay. V neck or crew neck? People got bets on it in the chat. All right. That's how it is. Posing, crew, crew neck it is, man. Crew neck it is, man. If you voted V neck, you were wrong. It hey, nah, not... Lamont, Lamont. Hell, no, that that nigga got a V neck on. Hold on, Jay, go back on camera, guy. Like, don't do the selfie pose. Like, show us the. the... That's a V neck. That's a crew neck. Nigga, that's a V. That's a... Give me a V. <laughs> Give me a W. Like, nigga, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you better not ever talk tough to nobody else. Or any nigga, panel this, you V-neck wear, bitch. Nigga, nigga, this my fucking undershirt, nigga. This ain't what I be wearing out. You got a V-neck undershirt. Shut your silly ass up, nigga. Go sit nigga, down shut somewhere, your kid. Bitch ass up, oh nigga. wow, okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Shut your ass up. Wait, Jay, Jay, listen, <laughs> I'm with you, brother. LeBron is a um. He got that tattoo that you said he had. Go ahead, uh, Lamont. Uh, man, y'all was wild, man. Y'all was wild. Um, look, man, look. Nah, we just messing with you, Jay. We giving you a hard time. We we appreciate you coming up, but Jay. Before I move off, because I want to hear from Twin, what is clutch to you in the NBA? Clutch is like when you come up, when you come, when you show up in moments that matters the most, like the fourth quarter. You know, when it's like late in the game, like when it's two minutes left to go in the game, when the game is tied, or when your team needs to go ahead bucket, like you shoot it and you make the shot. You know what I'm saying? Like Michael Jordan, like what he did back in the day, like what other people did, when it mattered the most. Like that's wait, but if it's script, if it's scripted, is it really clutch though? I mean, no, but you still made it when it matters. Right, but it's it's scripted. He was supposed to make it. Yes. Right. But so he asked clutch? me what clutch. But he asked me. But he asked me what my definition of clutch was. So I'm giving him what the definition is. Okay. No, I so that, uh, what player do you feel? Is the most clutch player in NBA history? Shit, uh, I don't know. Probably got to look it up. Mm, so you don't know. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Kobe, J Jordan, 
Which one? None? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Okay, man. Hey, Jay, I mean, they, look, say, they say you look like you 45 in the face, too, bro. They said you're not 22. You got to show, like, <laughs> ideas. <so. laughs> not no damn 45. Hey, nigga, about, you're about, nigga, you're at least about 40. Nah, Jay. I graduated high school. I graduated high school in 2019. Nigga, you graduated high school in 1983, nigga. <laughs> nigga, no, I didn't, bro. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, Jay. We not. I'm not gonna let them do that to you, man. I love. No, because they lying. They over here lying and shit, bro. Nah, yeah. nigga. You one of them African athletes, so, nigga. We know you're real. Nigga, shut your bitch ass up, nigga. You sound, <laughs> you, you, you sound, nigga, you sound retarded, nigga. Jay, nigga, we you, gotta, you sound like you a sound grandfather, retarded. nigga. We're trying nigga, to watch the language. Hold on, can, to calm it down. <laughs> Hold on. You sound retarded, nigga. Hold on. Get some slow, money hold on. Hold on, Jay. Jay, we got you, Jay. Now, Jay, because I don't want to lose you. I want to keep you on the panel. So I don't want you to get too discombobulated. Let me go to Twin um, real quick. Um, your thoughts on this clutch conversation, man. You heard what Jay had to say. Um, you know, what, what are your thoughts on everything that we've seen thus far, man? I think people lie numbers don't. Mm. I, I think people are going to lie, people are going to spin, people are going to, you know, spin whatever narrative, talk whatever narrative they want. Numbers don't lie. That's that's all I really got on it. If you can look at the numbers and not say LeBron James is the most clutch player ever, you're just, uh, you're delusional. Like, mm. your level of disdain and hate for a player outweighs reason and logic and your ability to read numbers and do math. I'm sorry. Like you, you roll down the numbers and you put everybody in each situation, what they do, what the volume they had, the percentages they shoot. So if you can't just accept the fact that you know what the numbers say, you're delusional. Period. That's it. Hmm. I agree right there. And and so what's your what's your definition of clutch? Your ability to hit baskets, timely baskets, not just, you know, the, the, the definition, the NBA's definition of clutch is usually what I go with. But if you're going with my own personal definition, what I think clutch is, is basically able to hit timely shots <clears throat> consistently, able to make, and that's, it's not just hit timely shots, put your teammates in position to actually make timely shots as well. So you can, mm. you can make make clutch plays it's not just you making a clutch shot you can make a clutch play you can have a clutch defensive stop there's plenty of ways you can be clutch but see we don't want to talk about that we just want to make it seem like if you're not hitting a buzzer beater in game six of the finals it's not clutch you, you see what i'm saying it's it's ridiculous there's plenty of ways to be clutch in the nba Oh, that makes sense to me. Let me go to rebranding, rebranding, man. What what are your thoughts on this, man? What's your thoughts on clutch, man? What is clutch and, and who you got is the most clutch in the league? Um, my thoughts on clutch is really just Steve's in the moment. Um, and you can do that like bro was just saying, by playing defense, by making the right pass, you know, scoring, of course. Um, and to me, I think, you know, LeBron James is the most clutch right now. Um, if my life was on the line. I'll be honest, if my life and my future wife's life was on the line, I would want LeBron James to shoot the shot so that we could survive. I wouldn't want Jordan. I wouldn't want Kobe. I wouldn't want Curry. I wouldn't want KD. I wouldn't want anyone else but um, LeBron James. Now, as far as him shooting the shot or him making the game win and play? Ooh, I think those one. are two different either, things. Either, no, listen, either one, right? Like, I'm sure he'll find the open man. Um, you know, like last night, we've seen him clamp up when it was clutch to me that was that was the most impressive thing that he was doing really like was clamping up Kawhi Leonard who was still I don't I think Kawhi Leonard got like I think he got people didn't give him credit because Kawhi Leonard was actually making like clutch buckets you know LeBron James just stopped the one and counted so no, I agree there man wait hold on what did the comment say clutch is not wearing a V neck Man, they hating in the comments, man. Wait, no, I didn't, hey, bro, I didn't know they was talking about you, bro. I didn't even read that. Hey, they, they hating in the comments. Hey, no, I don't, man. Fuck them niggas, man. They, they hating, bro. We got blue late tattoos, man. Fuck them. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. I would say disregard that. For real, though, Lamont. Hold on, say that. 
Everybody mm-hmm. tries to make clutch just, oh, you hit a t- You can make a, again, I, I believe when LeBron James blocked on Andre Iguodala in the finals, that was a clutch defensive play. When he stopped Kawhi Leonard last night, last night from making that shot, that's a clutch defensive play. If you can grab, if you get a big steal, if you can grab a big rebound, like uh, Chris Bosh uh, getting that rebound, kicking it out to Ray Allen, that's a clutch play. That's mm. a clutch rebound and a clutch pass. Yeah, like they, they try to make they try to make it seem like being clutch is just making a basket. And if you didn't do it the way Jordan or Kobe did it, you can't be clutch. Again, people lie, numbers don't. If I need somebody who's gonna win me a game and it's coming down to the clutch, I'm going with the numbers, and the numbers say LeBron James has done it better than anybody in NBA history. That's hey, just bro, but, but can you blame them though? Like, is a is making the right pass as exciting as shooting over two or three people? Like, is you know grabbing a clutch rebound is that is exciting? Can you like really find those highlights appealing? Yes. If a basketball fan, at the end of the day. If you're rooting for your team and they're up two points <clears throat> and the opposing team and put up a shot and they need to get that defensive rebound, you goddamn right I'm excited because I know the game's over if they got the rebound. Especially if they've been killing them on the glass all night. But and but the, here's the come up with that but you know what, Twin? Here's the crazy thing about it. And this is this is this is where I think clutch is kind of a flawed narrative because there are so many things that go into that one moment that we define this clutch so for example you just talked about chris bosh getting the rebound and then making the pass to ray allen but when we when people talk about that moment they're usually talking about how lebron had missed the previous shot or how ray allen knocked down the shot the one person that never gets credit it seems like is chris bosh with the offensive rebound which was clutch and then making the pass which was clutch and it's just like Okay, so That's very what true. people have done now he is should get a lot more. Y- he should, and and the crazy thing too. about it is, people now have turned clutch into only an offensive stat. Getting a great defensive stop late game no longer can get you considered as a clutch player. It has to only be on the offensive end, and so clutch has now become only and purely an offensively driven stat. And I think a lot of people forget the times when we've seen some really some great defensive stops, even in last night's game. Right. One of the best defensive stops of the game was Austin Reeves on Norman Powell. Right. Holding it down while the shot clock is one. This this was, you know, but but at the end of the game, you Austin Reeves will never get credit for that. Less likely to even get credit for that because his name is not LeBron. And people will just gloss over some of the some of the things that people do that help. Like if Austin Reeves doesn't hold the fort down on that play and let's say Norman Powell is able to knock down a crazy three and let's say the Lakers lose the game, it changes the perception of LeBron James's game and that comeback if they lose that game because one player doesn't. So what was truly the most clutch moment in that game? That's what we have to think on. LeBron has some great defensive clutch moments, but I think because people have tried to use clutch to define or, or to to uh, shape Jordan and Kobe's legacy, they've kind of tried. They've also redefined what clutch is, and and now you have to try to mirror what Jordan and Kobe did to be considered clutch. Oh, and that's crazy. what I call BS. Yeah, because we seen Kobe get a clutch rebound in Game Seven versus Celtics, and you tip it out the Ron Artest. And nobody talks about that. All they say is, "Why not just save Kobe?" Oh, we seen versus New Jersey Nets. Kobe fourth quarter clutch defense on Jason Kidd. Y'all don't talk about other moments in Kobe. All y'all want to talk about is the shots. And all okay, that. so Ralph, let me ask you since you came up here, what is clutch to you, and who is the most clutch player in NBA history? Oh, clutch! Clutch is to me is the same definition that me and you came with. with Last year, when we said it's more than just shooting, and we gave out uh, several instances on clutch. And uh, to me, right now, who's the clutch? Well, he did. Sur- he just surpassed Kobe, and I think it's LeBron James now. Because before, before y'all was y'all wasn't glazing the stat of most clutch points this 
or most clutch stat. It was Kobe Bryant with that stat. Y'all never glazed that stat up until LeBron James got him. What? It sure wasn't Kobe. It was Kobe Bryant, sir. It, it he had the most clutch so. baskets in NBA history. It was. No, it, was. it was Kwame Brown, bro. No, like, it stop, wasn't. Bro. Man, you niggas be saying anything, bro. No, like, I don't know why. Now bro. it's Kwame Brown. It's Kwame Brown, though. Get yes, out of here, bro. bro. He, Y'all need on, to dog. stop trolling, for real. Let's be serious one night. We branding and, and the other cat that yelled out a blatant lie. My bad. It was Kobe Bryant. Stop it. No, but no, rap. But that's why I'm asking people, what is your definition of clutch? And how oh, does it's, guy... more than, it's more than scoring. It's on both ends of the court. Doing it. And, and it's not, remember, we also said, Lamont, me and you both said, and Sturdy said, it's clutch no, is not just the fourth quarter or last five minutes. It's when you need the ball to go in the hoop or the, 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 the direction to go your way. The momentum changer, shifter. That's what you that's what you called it, Lamont. Yeah. And I yeah. agree with you. Like I did last time, and to and, and and what you're saying today. So right now, to me, it's LeBron James uh, all right. time, and I agree with it. Hey, so let me go to Young Africa. And salute Young to Af- you. Thanks for having me, brother. Young Africa, what is what up, what man? is what is clutch, mm. and who do you have as the most clutch player in NBA history? Oh, Cl- clutch to me is um. Obviously, a player's ability to perform under pressure, right? So pressure is what we commonly define as clutch, right? And so pressure comes in the playoffs. Pressure comes in a game seven. Pressure and the best players of all time rising under that pressure is what clutch means in general, right? And so to me, LeBron James is the most clutch player in NBA history. And one of the reasons why is because he's consistently been able to do that, right? Some Certain players have been able to do runs. Certain players have been able to be clutch in moments. But throughout a whole career of consistently producing that no and so but let me let me say this though because one thing that's become synonymous with clutch now is winning shout out to michael jordan right usually players that we define as clutch are the players that have also won whereas a lot of people hold it against lebron james four and six in the final six losses all up in the chat right how can you be clutch with all these l's well let me say this right who the most clutch players that never won a title, but still are defined as clutch in NBA history. Guys like Reggie Miller, right, clutch. Guys like Charles Barkley can be considered clutch. If you remember, right, I was watching just the other day, right, looking over MJ's finals opponents, right, 93, Western Conference Finals, Game 7, Phoenix Suns, Charles Barkley gets the game winner in a Game 7 to go to the NBA Finals. I would call that clutch. Great player, great move, great bucket. And so... When players are able to do that, get to the finals, loses to Michael Jordan, and nobody remembers that clutch shot. Nobody calling Charles Barkley clutch, but he was. And if you look throughout his career, I'm sure he would be um, clutching many other moments too. And so I disagree with this idea that you have to win to be clutch. And so I put it to you as a coach. How many times have you seen players on your team be clutch and you ended up losing? How many players, how many times the players stepped up in those big moments, played their best game, and it ends up in a loss, and maybe Africa, waters down Africa, I can give you the perfect example. Africa, I can give you the, the perfect coach. example. But go ahead. Go perfect ahead. example of what you just asked. The answer to that question would be Michael Jordan, 63 points against the Boston Celtics. That's that was a clutch-ass performance. Mm-hmm. The most glazed performance ever. That's the only time anybody is allowed to praise losing. I'm mm-hmm. serious. No, I would call that clutch. Very clutch. But I still call it. But I would even yeah. call LeBron's 51 versus Golden State exactly. in the lost clutch. I consider that um, the best game of his career, personally. I call that the best game he ever played. Yeah, he, he, he looked he looked absolutely unstoppable that exactly. game. You know what I mean, and it came down to one mistake. And it happens, you know. Um, it happens. We I've had game, I had a game like that last year where we were down eight with 40 seconds to go. We come back. Based to the heroic efforts of one of my players, really one player, um, we come back, we take the lead, but the game was lost on a miracle three hmm. um, off one boneheaded mistake. And, you know, so, it, yeah, I, I know what you mean. And that's why I say that's where I think people struggle. Like we was talking to Otamo in the chat. He doesn't know how to give a person the label of being clutch 
without separating the winning. We can, I can still, if you go back through NBA history, I can see why they said Jerry West was Mr. Clutch, even though he was one and eight in the finals. Mm. All right. I can still go back and say that a guy like Joe Johnson, one of the most clutch players of all time, not because he won a ton or won a lot of championships but because his, his ability to perform late game and Robert Ory, his ability to knock down shots late game. Um, but Robert Ory's led to championships because of the team he was on. So your man, Brandon Roy, Brandon Roy, I got him as clutch too. I mean, but clutch is in different ways. And that's why I say it's cur- It's funny to me how people, and I think that's where people start to have narratives and agendas when they start to say, Oh, if you don't do it in the finals, it's not clutch or the regular season don't matter or the first round of the playoffs don't matter. And so they, they try to create these constraints to where this can only be clutch compared to what this person, because we know that a lot of LeBron James, a lot of his biggest moments came outside of the finals. It came in the playoffs. It came in the regular season. So people try to say, okay, that is less relevant. And they try to confine it to the finals. That's just that. Honestly, that's just a, a defense mechanism to try to protect a particular player. And we all, it's the ball headed menace from Chicago. Hey, they uh, the is a, is a comment. Is a comment that just said um, from Otami. Mm-hmm. He said, um, that's a part of being the greatest clutch player of all time. Can't be the greatest with a losing record. That's from Otami. Bullshit. Bullshit. That's a well, team they, no. accomplishment, man. Well, the, yeah, yeah, that's what that and he's that's what Ralph was right about that. Like winning is team. Being clutch is individual. And just like we talked about, you can have a great game and still lose because of the team, just like we saw with Jordan just like we've seen with LeBron, just like we've even seen with Kobe at times, right? When he didn't have a great team behind him, you can still, that's, so that's why I'm, I'm asking y'all to think in Otamo. I asked you earlier, try to increase your level of brain power because we got to get away from just saying, oh, if they didn't win, they can't be clutch. Because if, but Otamo, but it's also a part of your definition. That's why I need you to come up here and give us your definition because if your definition... It's primarily based out of winning. You need to tell us. The finals 10 times. I can make that argument. That's clutch. The that ability clutch. to go to the oh, finals man. on a consistent basis is clutch. Oh, of course. But, yeah, but they, don't want to they, they can't celebrate that, though. If his definition is championships, then you there's know, not many he, clutch he, players he stopped, in NBA. We stopped celebrating it NBA once LeBron started doing it. Oh, of course. No, but no, no. If you are a certain fan of organizations like the Lakers or Celtics, that can't come into play because they're all about winning. Yeah, but he was. Not, but he, hold on, no, but he was making finals was when he wasn't with the Lakers. Though. No, the I'm talking about. I'm talking about before. outside of the individual. If you play for that organization, just like last year, I didn't expect the Lakers to do what they did, and I'm a Lakers fan. I commend them, but I'm not celebrating it overly because we didn't get the job done. That's so what you, I mean. So that and run was clutch, correct? Yes, but I'm not overly Lakers. celebrating it because it didn't end in the result of the. Lakers organization. No, but but see, that's the that's what I'm trying hey. to separate, Ralph, is because that's what that's why I say is we can't say that run was less clutch because it didn't have a desired end result. Right. That's why I differentiate diff, like my fan demodium mm-hmm. from being oppressed. Because I'm impressed, but from a fan side, I'm really not because I'm expecting championship. Oh, we, well, we well no, what happened? No, but remember what I said earlier, and I'm gonna go to Young Africa. Oh, go I said what happens though, Ralph, is what makes it not as impressive is when you see it from one player so much, right. it becomes less and less impressive. Like what LeBron James did last night. It, I mean, no, I was. It, 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 it's, it's impressive, but when I look at it, it's just like I don't know why y'all acting surprised because the man didn't did this a thousand times over. But but you know, let me go ahead and go to Young Africa. Go ahead, Young Africa. But, but yeah, and I would I want to say this because if people. Like in the chat, right? If you associate winning with clutchness, right? Well, then your your list of clutch players would just be the historically great winners of the NBA, right? And if you do that, right? And that's fine if that's how you do it. If you do that, then I wonder, right? If you got Michael Jordan, for example, as the most clutch player, I wonder, Lamont, how many mm-hmm. players will call Scottie Pippen clutch, right? Because if you're going to go by winning and it's not just one man that's clutch, it's, it requires a team. There's many plays in the game. Uh, different roles on the team. I wonder how many people call him Scottie Pippen clutch, right? I wonder how many people are going to call the second and third guys on these championship winning teams clutch as well outside of the shot. 
is Derek Fisher clutch, right? Uh, is Robert Ori clutch? And obviously he gets that praise because of the winning. Uh, a certain players like that is Allen Iverson clutch for what he did going to the finals and hitting that shot over Ty Lowe. Uh, Reggie Miller gets that praise because of the um, famous and infamous moments of those New York Knicks series. So like, I wonder how many other players get that respect on championship teams because I don't hear that. Rarely do people huh. say Scottie Pippen was clutch. And if that's just one man only that was clutch, that's a lot of praise for one dude on one team when it was a dynasty, right? And so uh, where's the praise for everybody else as well? How clutch was Draymond Green? It's real quiet when you ask questions like that. You know what? Look, this is why when we think back, and I like that you brought up Scottie Pippen is, like Scottie Pippen was a great player, especially in that 94 year when Jordan was gone. But you see how so desperately he wanted that last shot, mm. right? He, you know, because when you're a great player and your ego is involved, because there's because for all the other things that he did on the basketball court, the defense, the rebounding, the passing, because the media and how people talk about basketball, because you don't get credit for for those things mm. as clutch, he wanted that last shot instead of Tony Kukoc. Because he knows those are the shots, those are the moments that can convince the fans, the media to get MVPs. They, they got to see you do that to be clutch. They don't care about all of the other stuff. And we see how it affects the superstar level players. Um, and we see how the media have kind of changed how players see and play the game. They want the, certain guys want that last shot now because they want the label of being clutch. They want the, the Mamba mentality look or, or, or the label on them. But they don't think that being a great defender late game or a great passer late game, like the media or some fans, Young Africa, you've seen this a lot on other platforms. They shun LeBron for being a great passer playmaker late game in the clutch. They, they call that weak. They call that shine away from the moment. <laughs> and it's just like, are you sure about that? Like, mm -hmm. see, but you see how we or the media or fans shape what, how, even how players see and play the game. Um, it's, it's wild. But Lamar, okay, that's, that's, just, that's just that's just hate. Let me just ask this question real quick, uh, Ralph. As a coach, what type of player would you want? Would you want a Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant that's taking the shot no matter what, believing in his shot creating and shot making ability, or do you want a LeBron James who's going to make the right play at the right time every time? Which one do you want in the clutch? As a coach, who me? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I'm obviously going to want. The right play. I always want the right play. And you know, look, I played, I've played my national champ, my most recent national championship appearance. I hate watching the last minute of that game. If you go watch the last minute of that game, my best offensive player, a guy that's given me 50s, been dunking on people, doing all this stuff. It looks like on that last play that cost us the national championship. He went with the mom and mentality. Mm. You know what he? Do you know what happened? Forced up a shot. No, nah, he didn't. Even, but, but buddy, buddy from Wisconsin sent that shit the other way. Sent the shit because the and look, I, I, you know, at that time, his, my his Jacob he, and I'm still cool with him and everything. One of my best players we ever had. That's his mentality. His mentality was that Mamba type mentality. If y'all ain't getting it done, I'm gonna get it done. But that's the same mentality. So I'm always gonna go with. I just need somebody willing to make. So when we go away from my championship year, I can just go back to last year when I had uh, my best player was a guy by the name of Drew. He was more so the guy. I'm going to make the right play, whether I shoot or get the ball to others. And we were playing in um, a semi uh, our conference semifinal game. And it came down to the last play of the game. He gets the look off a of pick and roll, but then he dimes it down low under the basket to uh, to my big man Tate, and he gets the layup for the win. He made the right play when he could have just chucked the shot up. Um, so that's the difference in mindset. It, I'm always going to take the guy that's willing to make the right play because the right play is going to win more than just chucking up a bad shot. Just look at, for example, Kobe's percentages on, on some of those shots. Like when I showed you that uh, in late-game situations in the playoffs, um, it says right here, Kobe is uh, – Okay, yeah, in game time, go ahead, field goals in under 10 seconds. There's a reason why Kobe is shooting five of 22 in those moments because when other teams know that you 
are going to be more prone to chucking up the shot than making a bad play. They can just sell out to always defending your shot and not your playmaking. Right. Um, and that's one of the reasons why Jordan and LeBron's percentages in those moments are significantly higher because Jordan has shown a willingness to make a pass in those moments. We know LeBron will make a pass in those moments. So it may, actually makes you much more difficult to guard late game when you had that versatility in your bag. But Lamont, like I said, numbers don't lie. We know who's done it the best because we know how fans and especially the media tries to shape clutch. They're not going to go in. They're not going to do a, a, a full on deep dive how we're doing right now into this topic. They're just going to keep it on the offense. And even even when you even when they have this topic on ESPN, they always say Jordan, even though the numbers don't say it's Jordan. Hmm. Or they'll say it's Kobe, even though it, even though the numbers don't say it's Kobe. And then when you have a Shannon Sharp, a but the numbers Ray, used to say him though. No, when, bro? I'm talking about ever since LeBron James has been in the league. LeBron, his Le LeBron just been got better. the cut either this bro, year or last he's year. Had more, <coughs> LeBron James has already had the most clutch points. Or clutch points. No, he did not. Years well, ago. Well, Ralph, no, from what I'm looking not. at, he just, well, Ralph, he just got that. That's so, Ralph, did. Ralph, from what I'm looking at, it says that. It says that he really started eclipsing a lot of these guys in 2018. Thank you. So I don't he think did it just happened years ago. <laughs> and when, bro, Man, I ain't time. got long. I ain't got long, but you kept him, brother. Uh, cause when you break up the numbers, I hope you. I hope you realize that clutch stats wasn't imputed in Michael Jordan's career till 1996. So when it comes to comparing Michael Jordan and LeBron James, you got to do it in a different way due to the fact that Jordan clutch numbers wasn't computed until 96. So it's really for 96 to 98 and then the little part of the 2000s in which he played with the Wizards. So you really can't compute that the right way to try to go off the numbers when it comes to LeBron versus Jordan. Now, Kobe, you got a point. But when it comes to Jordan and LeBron, it's a little more complicated. You got to dig a it's little not, more deeper, bro. No, it's and you got to make no, sense not. about that. Yeah, yeah, why you yes, just yes, don't yes. agree with, with? Why you just can't <laughs> agree when the number? Well, uh, the volume's there. People are telling the, the truth. The volume's there. He gave you the number. But perhaps, perhaps, the volume. So, now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Rob. I don't even need help on this. So, end of the day, brother, how in the hell you could say that the numbers just tell it all? But you not understanding that clutch numbers wasn't taken for Michael Jordan until later in his career, until 1996. I understand that. All right, so how can you? So, 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 all right, so how can you go out well, the numbers when it comes to LeBron versus Herm, Jordan? Then? Herm, that's not 100 percent accurate. So, the clutch stats that you're talking about is the it's something called clutch. It's basically the NBA's player cr clutch traditional stat. That stat was created in 1996, and that's the stat that Jordan won't fall under. But what, what I've mentioned was there are things that we can calculate that we consider to be offensively clutch. If right here, I have shots in the final five seconds in the fourth quarter of overtime. Well, we can calculate that because they're just shots and games. We can track that. So Jordan, 5 of 11 in those moments with three buzzer beaters in the playoffs. LeBron, 7 of 15. 47% from the field in those moments with five buzzer beaters. That's not an analytical stat that can track. That's actual game data. When you go to game time or going ahead, field goals with under 10 seconds to go in the postseason, Jordan is 7 of 15 because we can watch the games to get that number. We don't need an analytical stat to track it. LeBron is 12 of 23 in those moments, shooting 52%. Jordan, 47%. Kobe shooting 5 of 22 in those moments at 23%. We can track that. But you are right about the clutch traditional stat on NBA.com. That has only been tracked since 1996. But I have I didn't use any of those stats to say that. And, but those stats also favor LeBron. Those clutch traditional stats on NBA those favor LeBron. But there are yeah, other out, metrics that out, we can yeah, utilize. Outside of you, outside of you, though, a lot of those people will use those uh, NBA clutch stats, though. So that's what, why. What, that's what about, like, for example, what what about stats and elimination <laughs> games? Now, like so right now in elimination games, I feel like that's probably one of the most clutch scenarios a player could be in. Right. Whether it's offensively or defensively, it says right here in elimination games, LeBron James leads in 30 with 33.7 points per game, 10.7 rebounds, 7.5 assists and a field goal percentage of 50.2. 
and a three-point percentage of 36.3 among the three legends when you compare Jordan, Kobe, and LeBron. So even when you look at the most tense, like an elimination game is probably one of the most tense games you can play in because everything's on the line. If you consider that to be clutch, LeBron outpaces them in performance, not just statistically, but he also has a better record. Um, than yeah, those guys but, but uh, to be fair, like I'm uh, I'm I'm just asking gonna you gonna this, lie. Numbers are not going to lie. I was and just trying to ask the money question. And, and Kobe, and Kobe is the worst. <laughs> Kobe is the worst out of the three in elimination games. He only averages twenty two point three points what? per game in elimination. How many elimination games he been in? Oh, yeah, not, I, I, I got it right here. He I was about to, I was about to, it doesn't matter, bro. He sucks. It does matter. He hasn't been in that many game, elimination games. He's not as I mean, Ralph, before you interrupt him. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Ralph. Hold on, Ralph. Hold on, hold on. Let me. I'm going to let her go. I'm going to say, I'm going to answer Ralph's question right now. So right here, it says Kobe has a win loss record of nine and ten in nineteen games. And it, he's, he's so he's played in nineteen elimination games. He's nine and ten in those games. Michael Jordan is six of seven in those games. Jordan has played in thirteen elimination games. It says LeBron holds the best win loss record of fourteen and twelve. Um, he's played in the most elimination games. Um, with at twenty six among the three, so that that's the number. So Kobe has a losing record in those moments. He and, and he has Jordan actually has the least volume of the three of with thirteen games. Kobe with nineteen and Brown at twenty six. Mm. Jordan below five hundred in elimination games. Damn, her. Huh? So uh, I mean, I mean, most of that happened early. So early. so if you're just going with Kobe and LeBron, Ralph, Kobe and LeBron's volume is comparable. It, it's much more closer than Jordan's because Jordan's only played in thirteen. But, but no, Lamont, because that's what the numbers say, Ralph. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I? Because in the beginning of the elimination games, what was he? What was his minutes? What was he coming from? It Ralph, matter. Ralph. It does just... matter. <laughs> Yo, hey, hey lower you your fucking sure tone, Ralph. This is the data. Ralph, early in his career, he was winning championships. Ralph, you the nigga was in the '97, '98. Both, nigga. He was on the bench. We got it. We got it. It was a three-point game. These niggas retarded, huh? Kobe sucked in the clutch. Her, no, he, he didn't, bro. Ain't hey, no need to be extreme. But listen, he was winning a three peat early in his career, bro. Like there was no losing in the early part of his playoff career. Bro, what the, the fuck are you talking about? 97, 98? Idiot. One year, two year is the sample size. We're not talking about two oh years. Oh my ago. goodness. That goes Third towards his his... Yeah, these niggas are retarded, huh? Well, he and we are. Right. So what? So what? So what? So what? Hey, wait, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm gonna help out. Ralph, hold on, y'all. I'm gonna help out. Ralph. I'm gonna help yeah, out Ralph bad, a little bit. I, I'm not. Elimination games. Hold on, hold on, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna help out Ralph a little bit. Ralph, you could have, you could have educated and said that a lot of Kobe Bryant numbers dipped drastically, really after his chip, both his championship runs. You could say on the uh, back end when he went to three straight finals, on the front end when he. With the four, when he went to four or five years, rather, uh, when he was with Shaq, uh, really in the middle part with Shaq. Now, in the middle part with Shaq first left, he had a lot of fucked up moments in the elimination games, and then on the back end, after after he went to three straight finals on the back end, when he when he had Mike D'Antoni, when he had Nash and all them, he struggled in the elimination games as well. So that computed into why his numbers dipped low as well. So. I mean, so I mean, I mean, I mean the numbers. The numbers are the numbers. You can't ignore what happened with Kobe Bryant. So no, he, he did. He did perform. perform. He did perform. Right? He didn't perform, man. Nigga, you eat. Okay, so that would be a Kobe Bryant problem, Paul. Right? I, I mean, I mean, people probably the guys that play basketball understand the game. Probably understand what was going on with Kobe and why it he had to do so much. They, they, they but at the time, perform. but. Damn, man. Nigga, he did before. You, you know what I'm You don't I mean. even know, you know, know what he lost. What is this point for? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yo, let niggas, let, let niggas, hold on, let niggas, let niggas finish okay. real quick, yo. He don't even know what he's talking about. No, hold on, finish eating your food. Let niggas eat. I'm tired of these excuses. I'm not eating. We got to sit here and think about the circumstance. No, he lost. He, he motherfucker, you ain't. Hey, her, I know you ain't letting nigga let nigga salt you like this, her. No, no, no. Let's, hey, y'all, let's just go one at a time, y'all, because we can't see, hear see. nothing. No, no, no. Y'all don't know the excuses. Let no, 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 me go to her. It's, it's on her. It's on her, y'all. Let me go ahead, her. No, no. Here's my thing with guys like that. That's what make me troll LeBron sometimes, because y'all niggas go 
above and beyond to try to defend shit to fit your narratives. End of the day, we just talk of basketball. By the numbers, Ralph, I love Kobe. I love. I respect Kobe Bryant's game, but LeBron is actually more clutch than Kobe, and we can't ignore I, and that's that. That's what I said. But, that he got. Nah, 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 this but, nigga but Ralph, just over the Glazer. Nah, but but what I'm saying, but what I'm saying, though, is no reason for you to defend. It. Everybody knows. Kobe wasn't afraid of the moment. Everybody knows that Kobe, when it comes down to it, he came through a lot, but he also had a lot of failures. No, before. I'm talking about the but, the you he he hype about the the record. I'm telling this nigga, he didn't play when, when in Utah and you versus Utah. Yes, nigga. he did. The nigga, the nigga, the nigga, the nigga shot four air balls, so he did play against Utah. Hold like, on, hold on, y'all. Let me go to this one right here because I want to get to the chat as well a little bit. Up, y'all says there's no context necessary for elimination games performances I, I agree there i think uh, uh you know maybe you could say not all of kobe's games but he played a significant role but i think he's played enough to where we can say his elimination games he does have the volume to be compared to somebody like lebron james um and just it means statistically and if you're one of those that 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 um harp on the win lost um, what's his Lamont? He since the bull won the glaze so much. What's his field goal percentage in uh, elimination games? Okay, so uh, Kobe Bryant's field goal percentage in elimination games. Is that twenty something? Hold on, fifty-four right point five, bro. No, it's not. I'm looking at it right here. I don't think. I don't in think his last, Kobe Bryant in elimination games is shooting forty-two point eight percent and twenty-nine percent from the three. Yeah, yeah, that's what that, that's on, that's right. and he's and he's averaging twenty two point three points per game. See, the context for that is he was go going up against go great defenses throughout his whole career, right? There's context to everything when it comes to numbers. Like if you talk about the defense, yeah, he was going up against all time great defenses all the way throughout his career. You know, something that here, here we go. Here, here the, we go. The luxury. So it's just real. That's fact. That's fact. But though. this is what I don't like. That's fact. Y'all don't have that same energy for other players. Y'all will just sit here and say they lost. Who is y'all that you talking about, man? You nope, I know you nope, were talking about me, nope. though. Yeah, who, yeah, who the hell are you talking about? Who you talking about? Oh, I can talk about uh, Herm, Ralph. I'm talking directly nope. to both of y'all. Well, well, I, I know more basketball than you. Now I'm going to finish what I'm saying. I'm going to finish what I'm saying. I'm going to finish what I'm saying. Can I ask a question? At the end of the day, y'all don't do that for every player. Y'all don't That's a motherfucking lie. Hold on, hold on, y'all. Hold on, hold on, y all. Hold on, y all. Hold on. we heard from Swin. Y'all don't your job context on everything. What y'all don't sit here and say That's a damn lie. Y'all don't sit here and say that they didn't do it. Hold on, Herm. Hold on, Herm and Swin. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. I don't want to get into a tangent right there. I want to hear from everybody. We got locker room just pulled up. He said he want to have pose a question. I'm going to let him get his question off because I know Herm got to get out of here in a minute. So I hear niggas doing all this arguing for Kobe, right? My my question is, the numbers the numbers prove that Bron is more clutch, right? So let's let's flip it. If the numbers proved that Kobe was more clutch, and and Bron shot forty two percent from the field in elimination games and twenty nine percent from from the three in elimination games and averaged twenty two points, would niggas be on this panel right now making this argument for LeBron? Bro, if he ain't been in that many elimination Absolutely games, not. Bro, stop it. Nine and Absolutely ten. Absolutely not. Nine and ten. Keyword. Bro, locker room. I will answer your question. Yeah, locker room. Absolutely that's a good ass. That's a good ass question, though. That's the question, the answer to his question. question is absolutely not. Y'all wouldn't put not, all this context on it. Nah, but you, you, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't say that, though, brother, because... Man, I've seen you day, in action, Herm. Nigga, you, you, ain't, I, you ain't seen me in action like that, bro. It, it, it's, it's a thing, bro. When I actually talk basketball, I talk basketball. I ask you on Africa, bro. Sometimes I troll because the niggas like you be on defense mode all the time, and I just want to piss you off. So, no, nah, no, nah, I'm just saying. Nah, nah, bro, bro, nah, but, bro, I do keep the same energy. Motherfucker, I always keep the same energy. It's just that when, when, when so I do, no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I ain't go got ahead, that long. Go hold on, go I ain't ahead. got that long. So, end of the day, when there's guys like you, I can tell by your tone, I can tell how you talk, I can tell how you deliver that you already on the fence, you already got this perceived notions about certain things. So, with me being an asshole, Sometimes I said, man, I'll poke him a little bit. I just say anything just so he could go ahead and go on this rant about LeBron James. I do that shit on purpose sometimes. But when you put, when you actually talking, when I actually talk basketball, bro, 
I put context behind it. I understand that you got context with all these players because they do go through certain circumstances that they can't control. And some circumstances do be overwhelming to the point where no matter how good they perform, hell, they still ain't going to do any good for their team. So, end of the day, I understand all this. So, end of the day, bro, Ralph defended Cobra because that's what he believed. There's no reason to get into a full-blown fu- argument and going no, crazy because that's his, that's his LeBron is view. My open soliloquy, I said LeBron is the clutches. But 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 Herm, Herm, this this is this is what I'm sitting here saying. Even even though I understand exactly what you just sat here and said, and you're not even wrong, you still expect that your star player to show up and perform, right? Even in that loss. Yes or no? Hey, I, hey you know, hold on. I think All we got. Time. I think everybody got extremely far away from locker room's question because because he he basically posed a question, and that's going to be a testament to people's honesty. He may, the question was if if the tables were turned, if the tables were turned, we the one thing we hear with Kobe is in and I think is rightfully so in some instances is people say use context because he has so many moments that are kind of questionable, man. He has some questionable moments where people say use context. It's just it's just kind of funny to me that. When people talk about LeBron James and using context, for example, with some of his finals losses, all of a sudden that context goes into the garbage can. Y'all don't want to hear that he played against one of the most stacked teams in NBA history. Y'all don't want to hear that he carried a young team into the NBA finals. Is the context a lot of the times with LeBron goes into the garbage can. And and so it's fair. It's a fair question because I don't I don't believe that a lot of you guys will be willing to use context with LeBron if these numbers were flipped around. Y'all would just say and he's trashing the clutch. Now, you, you, you that's, actually, that's, that's you actually, point. That's now, point now, you LeBron. actually, you actually have to, though, because think about his playoff career, especially on the first stand of Cleveland. Uh, when he made it to the finals, that one of the youngest players ever lead a team to the finals, that was against arguably statistically the best defense of all time in NBA history. So you yeah, understand. Herm, you are right, Herm, but what fans and media has shown us is that in 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 situations with LeBron James, they are not willing to consider context. And that's why they're wrong, Lamar. Well, that's, that's because not, uh, that's the why narrative they're wrong. from his fans. No, no, I, I, the Lamar, 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 so the media because because, because Lamar, look, think, if you look at some of Kobe's numbers, if you look at some of Kobe's wrong. numbers, y'all in, the, in 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 clutch, it, it, some of the numbers no, no, could the support has to be. You're going up against the Detroit Pistons, no, the San no, Antonio no, Spurs, no, no. the Boston but, Celtics. Like the hold on, but but look, but what I'm happen. saying is, if we're just looking at Kobe's numbers alone, Kobe's numbers alone in the NBA Finals and clutch moments aren't really that great. And one could argue that he's a Finals dropper. Mm-hmm. No, he's regressed. He regr- You can't argue that without context. You can argue that. See, but no, no, no. But what I'm saying is that yes, with Kobe. It's always with context. Things have to be applied with context every, to make every, the case. But but when when it comes to Le, like so this is so when it comes to the LeBron James fans, obviously we know that there's context that needs to be applied in certain situations, like his finals losses. Yeah. In, in Kobe's case, we all know logically there's context and it needs to be applied. If we remove the context and we're just talking casual basketball talk, oh, okay. that's basically the most common basketball talk that we hear. No one is giving LeBron context, but we hear far more casuals willing to give Kobe context. Why is that? Why are casuals willing to? And that's why I said what I said, Lamont. That's why mm-hmm. I said, it's not it's not even to attack Herm or attack Ralph. That's why I said I don't want to hear all that context shit. His numbers are horrible in the clutch. No, 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 the no, star no, no. This is why I don't like it. Bro, 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 player, bro, hold no, on. No, no, let no. me finish. Bro, your star player. Let me finish. Oh, oh, yeah. after, let me finish, Africa. I'm Your star player is supposed to perform. LeBron James has put up monster numbers in no, finals no. that he lost. That. Nobody put context on anything. They just said he lost. That's my only point. That's why when um Locker Room came up here and posed that question, I'm the only one that sat here and said no, because it's the truth. They wouldn't put no context on that shit. They would just sit here and say he lost. It's not me no, getting no. defensive. That, it's that, me that's telling the truth. truth. But what we should do, but that's true too. But what we should do, and that was a good question by the locker room, but what we should do is actually show how 
that logic is flawed and show how the right way of doing it is how we do it for LeBron James. When we put context on the losses, we should put the context on Kobe's numbers and have a fair and hold on, but but hold on, hold on, but young Africa, and I'm gonna go to um go Kobe. He just pulled up in a second. If 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 who have you successfully been able to show context with LeBron James and you actually change their mind in regards to the NBA finals? Uh, well, I changed Herm's mind. Her, Herm's mind done changed very much so since I done talked. I don't about. think you changed Herm's mind. Don't you think, Herm? I changed your mind, Herm. No. Co hey, hey, Herm pulled up today and said LeBron's more clutch than Kobe. Once upon a time. Oh, so, so that's me. because of you. Uh, yeah, I am. Cause you my son, I man. I made you. <laughs> I made you. You my son. No, hold on, no, hold on. Let, let, let's just do this. Hold on. Somebody has some crazy background noise, man. Make sure I'm muted. What I'm saying is this. When we talk about, let's say, let's say you were talking to Dreamers Pro or some type of avid LeBron James hater. Could you convince them with context? Because these are people that are going to harp on his four and six finals record. Could you convince them with regards to context that, okay, if you apply context, the four and six isn't as significant um, as you might you know, utilize when you were arguing or were arguing some, a lot of these debates, who have you convinced? Cause the thing is you say you do it, but how you can't convince these, some of these fans, there's no convincing them. That's they know the logic and, and we and know that they know about context mm -hmm. because they'll use it when talking about COVID. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do on, on channels like FYO sports. You can't convince someone of a strong opinion of a player that they're not using context for, but what you can do is expose the flawed logic for the players that they do use context on. So when you do use context for Kobe Bryant and you talk about the New Jersey Nets, the San Antonio Spurs, the Boston Celtics, all these teams that he went up against in the playoffs, then and you don't put context on LeBron James and the stack squads and the competition in the finals, well, now you expose the logic. And when you expose the logic and the flawed logic, it's on the individual now to use that insight to change their opinion if they don't they look like mac def and if they do they kind of look like me wait, who's mm. more wait time out time out who's more who are you talking about <laughs> who's more clutch kobe me. or lebron mm. kobe yeah who, who, who more clutch like, yeah? kobe you i'm taking i would i would take kobe yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like I said, the but th that's but it's the but it's my point is is that it's highly it's highly debatable. Number one is Jordan, and that's hands down. Everybody else is the everybody else is debatable. You didn't hear about the numbers that uh, Lamont just broke down for you, uh, so, so, about the clutch This is the perfect example of people lying and numbers not. Lamont <laughs> okay. ran down the numbers in mm -hmm. several different situations in yes, which sir. Kobe sucks in the clutch. Correct. Now. <laughs> Now in the there, you're, you're correct. You're correct. So in the I regular in the reg in the regular season, LeBron, Kobe, Jordan, they got they got great numbers in the clutch. In the playoffs, that you can say Kobe's numbers are are crappy. You can say that, but he is clutch in the playoffs. He and he is clutch in clutch moments. LeBron is too. Jordan as well. Where Jordan separates himself. But no, is, no. Who's the, the most final. clutch? Who's the most clutch, Magda, and why? Michael Jordan. Michael and, Jordan. Because okay, so Michael now we Jordan know Michael Jordan is the most clutch. What is your definition of clutch? Uh, clutch is just being the guy that uh, you want taking uh, the shot. The when clutch is when you down, when you close in the game, and you down by a couple points, like LeBron was down by a couple points against Denver last year in the, in the Western Conference Final, and you see what he did every time it was it was in close. That's range. not the definition of clutch, bro. That's the definition of clutch when you're the last two, three minutes of the game. Clutch, no, it's clutch, not. Like, clutch can happen in any... We're gonna have, I think everybody is gonna have their different definition of clutch. Clutch could be a game where you know you're down 2 1, you gotta, you have to win this game. Clutch could be, uh, we, I gotta score. Okay, 20, no, if you I had to, score. if you had to do bullet points, because you're, you're all over the place. Yeah, now. that's what I'm saying. If that's you had to, saying. if you had so two of your most significant bullet points of clutch, what would those two bullet points be? Like you for said, me, Jordan is the clutch. What are the two most significant factors that lead you to saying Jordan is the most clutch player in NBA history? For me, the, the clutch, and, and there's one bullet point. For me, it's the guy that you want uh, the ball in his hands. When you need a basket, when you need a score, when you need Nobody to win, the, when you need to win the, when you need to win the game, 
who is the who is the player that you want the ball in his hands taking the shot? I would take arguably to me the greatest scorer of all time, Michael Jordan. I want the ball in his hands when I need a basket. Okay. What are your two bullet points for what clutch is? Uh when it a game winning bat a game winning basket. And what's the other one? And and I would say um when it, when I need to have when I need to win this game. Do or so, die, I need to win so this do game. Or, so do or so okay, so elimination. Le, okay, so LeBron James has more game winning baskets. He has a higher percentage on game winning baskets, and he has a better record in a, in elimination games or do or die games. And he has better Correct. stats, and he has better stats. Points, rebounds, assists, um, better shooting percentage, better three-point percentage than Jordan and Kobe. So based on your two primary elements of criteria, LeBron supremely beats out Jordan. Last week, please. Last week, please. Well, no, hold on, hold on, sir. Hold on. So <laughs> in the playoffs, Lamont, you're correct. They all got they all got those stats, but in the playoffs in general. Numbers wise, LeBron does have that. Six, when you man, hold, hold on, <laughs> sir, hold on, sir, hold on. I'm, I'm agreeing. Listen, yeah, listen. Yeah, hold it in, where it changes, hold where it changes, and where my context matters is in the finals. In the finals. So you, mean LeBron, me that does one not shot in the finals is better than a run to beat the Golden State Warriors and come back oh, from three one down. Okay. No, how about how about hold, hold on, sir? How about in ninety one when he makes a clutch? Hold on, hold on, because he doesn't know he doesn't know my. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. But back to yeah, back. I can go through it. You no, Mac, no, no, Mac. So what I'm saying is this, right? Because I can go through moments too. I can go with, with that. Not in I'm the finals. Is, what I'm saying is based on because your criteria. You didn't mention the finals. In your criteria, you said two things. You said, you said game winning game shots. winners. Hold on. You said game winners, and you said mm -hmm. um elimination games or big games. Yeah, I need LeBron. I, I need LeBron and elimination, game elimination game. games averages more points than Jordan, rebounds, assists, better field goal percentage, and better three point field goal percentage. And he has a better record in elimination games. He in in, in in buzzer beaters, whether it's under five seconds or whether it's um under 10 seconds, he has a better in, in the Eastern Conference. Hold on one second, um go Kobe. He has he has he has a better shooting percentage and he has more volume in those moments. So he's taken more shots in those moments and he's made more shots in those moments than Jordan and Kobe. So all I'm saying is see, the thing is, I know that most people have kind of the same ideology about what clutch is it's just when you say it out loud and then we in a non-biased fashion okay let we take your context and then compare it to the data it all goes back to lebron james and the guy that you have at the top he ain't the numbers don't support him being at the top and that's that's why i ask everybody individually what is your criteria to see where Correct. these guys fall with your with your criteria mm -hmm. lebron falls at number one with the criteria that I just named, yeah, numbers wise in the playoffs, like you said, you have the numbers, it will go to it will go to LeBron. There's no now when you look at Michael Jordan, who I have as number one, he has series ending game winning shots. And the and then you go to the that's in the playoffs. Then you go to the finals in the in the clutch moments. Get when you talk about game winners and elimination games where he's never had to uh, go to a game seven and he has three game winning shots in the finals, which LeBron doesn't. That to me is a key separator because still it's elimination. So so and, it's about game winners in the finals. So so no, so what you've done is he has he, I said he has series game winning. He has series game winning. Okay, so shots hold on. So in the hold playoffs. on, but, but Mac Def, so what you get again, so now you've tightened the constraints to even no a more I didn't. hold on one second, Mac Def. I'm gonna explain to you how Enders. hold on. So so what's so remember? So he's tightened his constraint down to where it would include guys like Damian Lillard, because he's talking about mm. series ending game winners now, mm. right? And then he also said buzzer beaters in the final so what what you've done and, and a lot of people do this is when they see that their logic doesn't support the player or narrative they'll tighten the constraints to where they find a constraint or system that supports their player so again a constraint or system so so, 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 so numbers on. is not a system no hold on Mac Def. what i'm that saying is using? this hold on Mac Def. what okay. you've done is 
I, I hold on, y'all. I didn't force Mac Def into telling me what his clutch was. He told us what his definition of clutch was, and I just applied the numbers. When those numbers did not support Jordan being the most clutch, he says, No, that's not what I mean. I was talking I about series that. ending shots, yes, and I was talking I about final shots. So, what you did was when I say you tighten the constraints, is first your constraints was just more general because it didn't suit MJ being at the top. You oh. tighten the constraints, and now that now you've crafted a constraint to where you can say Jordan is the top. But you but the lot, but all all I need, I'm just glad you did what you did publicly because now we see how people <laughs> finesse finesse things to it's try to put finesse. their favorite at the top. So <laughs> all you do is help us out. Hold on, every, hold on, look, Mac Jeff, everybody on this panel literally just watch you do it. We hold on, if, if, if I'm wrong, so, I want no, if anybody on the panel, if I'm wrong about this, I want anybody else other than Mac Jeff to tell me if I'm wrong or did Mac Jeff did did he not or did he or did he not just completely move the goalpost just to no, keep Jordan at the top? No, Every single time he got cornered, he moved that shit. But even if you go by the bullshit logic he's trying to push out there, Lamont, how does three shots in the finals outweigh four clutch performances to win an NBA title? Sir, your logic again. even even with your hold on, I, hold on, can I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I stop both? No, y'all? I can answer the question, on, but go I, ahead. My, hold on, I want to stop both of you because I know Goat Kobe been waiting. He been boiling over. He been hearing us talk. Oh, yeah, this uh, Kobe like that. You're go yelling Kobe. out four and six. Hold on, go Kobe. Can I? I'm gonna put you on the big screen, go Kobe, because I don't want nobody to cut you off, man. Um, talk to us, man. We we the numbers say LeBron is the most clutch, man. Who you got is the most clutch? Me personally, I got, I got, I got, I got Kobe at the end of the day, and I ain't trying to be. I like LeBron though. I like, I like LeBron as a player though. I ain't gonna mm -hmm. lie to you. But LeBron, LeBron. LeBron came, he can play some big games. He has some big games in the finals now. Don't get me wrong. But I'm talking about through it all. When, when Kobe won his championship, what teams he beat? The same team LeBron lost to. So at the end of the day, LeBron can't be too clever. When LeBron went to the uh, Miami Heat, when he had a stacked team, he lost to a fucking Jason Terry, man. And he went clutch then. He had like 11, 13 points in, uh, in the series. He got like the six leagues for only everybody team. My LeBron clutch. What's clutch, man? What, what's clutch? Clutch is, clutch is when you when when you when the game is close. Just like for example, like when they played against Denver last year, the game was close. When it was down by one, two, three points in the last couple of minutes, last five minutes of the game, when the game closed, and that's when you that's when it, that's when it's really clutch. That's when you clutch is because you make the difference of any other game. That's what clutch is. I don't care what game it is. It can be yeah, a no, but well, you go, Kobe. My question is. If we wanted to identify similar series with Kobe, did doesn't he have series where he also got swept and didn't perform well in the finals? No, no, because you talked about oh, LeBron. Oh, oh, oh. Well, oh, you talked and, about well, you talked about last year with oh, okay. LeBron. Now, Kobe, when the game oh, was oh, like oh. that, no, nah, Kobe oh, no, never no, got swept. The game no, was I'm like just, that, like, no, 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 I'm just yeah. talking about you. You just mentioned. I'm just going okay, off the yeah, example yeah. that you mentioned that. Rightfully so, LeBron got swept last year against Denver. You mentioned that wasn't the NBA it, Finals. It was his fault. It was his fault. But, was his fault. but I know, it, and we can say it was his fault. But the one Definitely. thing, but the one thing, and we can we can say it was LeBron. I know. Fault. Fault. Ho hold on one second. We can say it was his fault. The but the numbers don't support it being his fault. But there's there's also a series where Kobe Bryant and they were defending champions and they got swept. But Kobe's numbers also support hit being his fault because unlike LeBron against Denver, Kobe yeah, failed to Dallas, show up. Dallas, right? No, Kobe. No, yeah. When when they got swept by Dallas, Dallas Kobe did not show up. Be LeBron. But, no, hold on. No, hold on. LeBron. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Go, Kobe. Hold on. LeBron getting eliminated. This is a, almost the same way y'all praised Jordan for dropping sixty three, getting swept by the Celtics. Bron. Had one of the greatest. He had one of the greatest first half performances we've ever seen in a playoff game. If they got eliminated, they got beat by a better team, and he gets no credit. Kobe against Dallas played like complete garbage and got swept. See the difference between Jordan and LeBron when they got swept. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. When Jordan, when when LeBron and Jordan got swept, at least they went out guns a blazing. Kobe got swept by Dallas. And he played like an absolute complete bum, dropping seventeen points into elimination. I don't give I don't give credit if you lost. Hold on, Mike. Oh, this ain't you. This LeBron is for Go Kobe. With a stacked team, bro. LeBron, bro. LeBron needs every. He want everybody. Everybody, everybody cry about LeBron. Need help. LeBron need help. 
but, but, what, what are you talking about? Like but, but what are you talking I'm about? Saying, you know, you're talking about Kobe got swept. The book that's the same team beat LeBron. LeBron average 13 points. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go, hold on, go, Kobe. JJ Barrio was like, hold on, hold on, go, hold on, go. When Kobe got swept, they had the same team. They were the defending champions with 50 wins. They had a stacked team, too. Uh huh. And that team went on to win what? The championship. Okay. They beat, they swept my team and they beat y'all team. And y'all would, y'all had a no, stacked team. No, I'm not a, a hold on, book. No, I'm not talking about who they beat. I'm just want you to focus on. We got swept. We got swept. No. Yeah, yeah. We okay. Well, what I'm saying is. Kobe, Kobe got not if it's about being petty, Kobe got swept, but he didn't go out guns a blazing and swinging. He went out like a complete bum, dropping 17 points in back to back games. And he, when you talk about getting locked down, he really got shut down by Jason Terry and JJ yeah, Berea. Points in the finals against the same team, bro. Well, what he didn't average 13 about? points, he averaged more than yeah, 13. 13. Well, 15, I gave him 15, he ain't no more than 15. So he he averaged like more than 15. Come on, bro. Jason Terry, I stole him, bro. Look, but look, yeah, but still, on, hold on, bro. but go, but go, Kobe. We're talking about Don't do Kobe. Kobe like that. Don't do Kobe like that. No, but we're you talking about one. Kobe. How many times Kobe been swept? No, I but we're talking about Kobe. See, but see, that's the problem, go. See, I'm asking how many times Kobe. I'm asking Kobe been swept. Nah, but, see, but go. The problem is like this. Four or five times. That does. That's I all mean, irrelevant. See, when you start asking these questions, you're just trying to avoid answering questions about Kobe. Nah, Kobe clutch. When the Pacers, when they played in the Pacers series, when um, you, you see when Kobe, whoa, 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 when what a sweat got to the Pacers, man. What, what we doing, man? They, they lost to the Pacers. They, Kobe didn't play that game. Yeah. When they came back, they won every game. It's not, we're when not Sha talking about When Shaq got fouled out, when Shaq got fouled out, Kobe took over the game. They all got derailed. And Lamont, Lamont, you nasty too for that, too. Huh? The nigga only played four minutes in the fourth, bro. Huh? What? <laughs> Okay. How you gonna go out? How you gonna go out guns blazing when you only play four minutes? Well, you only play four minutes if you're getting your brains beat down and you have to sit. <laughs> okay. Cool, so they was getting the blown most, out. He didn't show up. That's the not most clutch, clutch right? player in NBA history is is not that in the finals. I, I get it. Ten finals and he hasn't proved that that he's the clutch. I understand. Huh? That's good. Why well, Lena clutch the LeBron then? Man, man, that's I want Andre Iguodala. Andre Iguodala. Hey, hey, man. You, you, okay. Hey, Lamont. You got to chill with that BS. Yo, what up, locker room? Okay. Who, who do you got on this panel, man? What you mean? Live? We got Ralph, man. We got Mac Def, man. We got we Jordan got, the most clutch all time. Who, who, nigga. who was that nigga that just said Kawhi was more clutch than, than LeBron? He's got to go. I didn't hear him. Yeah, you, you, uh, you heard him say that BS. Oh, that's oh, BS, bro. Okay, the stats. What you talking about? I can't What's get down that? like that. You got to kick him off, Alamont. Go check the back, bro. In locker room, I second that, brother. What's that? What's that? Lamont, can I tell you? Can I tell you what? Can I tell you, Lamont? Can you put me on big screen? Hold on, let me let me let me focus. Hold on, Lamont. Can I tell you what? 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 Can I tell you <laughs> in, 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 in this whole thing, right? Because you you give a platform to people that don't know what the fuck they're talking about, uh -huh. right? So when you get on a when you when you when you have a nigga that comes on the show and he says Kawhi is more clutch than LeBron, he's got to be booted. He's a he he's he's detrimental to the to the community. That that's that's just what I think. <laughs> I agree with uh, Lagro. How many? Hey, locker room. How many? How many? Uh, how many game winners does LeBron James have in the finals? Nasty. I don't think he has. Maybe I don't know. I don't think he has any. Okay. Most clutch play. So is it? A, is the finals a big enough sample size? Oh, oh, no, huh? no, Mac no, Stop it's not. You can't, Stop the dumb shit, Mac Def. So, so hold on, hold on. Ten finals, ten no, NBA finals is no, not a big enough sample no, size. No, no, but, but, but Mac Def, what you gotta understand, are, bro, is is not 50, every 50 game. Plus games. Yeah. Mac Def, oh, yeah. Mac Def, uh, 50 not plus every, games. Not every game in the finals comes down to a a last second shot. Yeah, no, let me go from B's. Go ahead, B. Hey, what up, what up, man? It's crazy what I'm hearing up here, man. Who who was that dude that said Kawhi more clutch? What was his name? Some nigga named Go Kobe. It don't Go matter. Kobe. Man, it don't get matter. that dude out of here, bro. We need <laughs> conversation, bro. But y'all can continue.
this, now, this what, would you, say, what would you have to Kobe, say about hold on did you hear mac def uh change his logic yeah man you know, i didn't change my logic no, you you got, i still you, got jordan you, number one you, hold on you got people that <laughs> understand understand what clutch means mm-hmm. and then you got people that just come with this tv narrative about taking the last shot clutch is your ability to grasp the moment and be successful in critical situations that's not shooting just shooting that's not just this it it, it encompasses everything jordan steal on Carmelo. malone that was a clutch steal mm. the one they replay before he comes down and hits the the, the nail in the coffin mm-hmm. the steal was more clutch than the shot mm. Mm-hmm. It's it's about being able to seize a moment. It's not well in this set of games. What did you do versus this set of games? LeBron's got the the clutchest play in history. The block on Iguodala. There is not a more clutch play. Well, I take Ray Allen's three. It, but, oh no. yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> I, take, I agree. Uh, I agree. Ray yeah, Allen's that, three didn't even five. win the game. What are you talking about? <laughs> I take Ray. Yeah, Allen's. yeah that that I'll foul. That foul. Lamont, that Lamont, foul. Lamont, 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 Lamont. Come on, Mac Def's got to go now. He's got to go. <laughs> hey, I'll take Ray. I'll take Ray Allen on, and Kyrie's right. Irving shot. This last, so this last two minutes and thirty seconds. This is a Skip Bayless narrative. Yeah, that's all it's that is. Narrative. So you know when it, when when these niggas start saying that, you know where they get the info from. You know who they daddy is. <laughs> now no, I understand it, what you're saying, B. No, but, but B. Let, let, who do you thought it all? Let's them pushing their more, agenda. Who's more clutch, LeBron or Jordan? LeBron is. How? Because in 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 crucial situations, LeBron mm-hmm. has been able to to be successful more than Michael Jordan. Okay. What I, so what I mean is, mm-hmm, what I mean mm-hmm. is LeBron has been successful with a lot of lesser talented players. When four, Mike four had, and six beasts, four when, and six. When, nah, four that's six. that 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 what just ain't got that ain't got nothing to do mm. with it. Oh, okay. That's got oh, nothing God. to do with it. Mm-hmm. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Okay, my bad. Keep going. I mean, have you ever seen Michael Jordan do what LeBron did in Detroit? Mm. Yes. Well, he, he did we, it against Boston. He just no. lost peace. He just lost. But he no, no, lost. no. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, we 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 forget. Yes. LeBron, LeBron has so many moments like that. We forget that that Detroit thing was one of the greatest things I ever seen. I agree. Mm. And I you agree. know what? Nobody brings it up. Yeah. Mm. That's well, how that many was points good. in a row did he score? Mm. Twenty-five. Like Twenty-nine. Yeah. Twenty-nine. Yeah, yeah for for the overtime. Yeah, yeah. Against no, the all-time nobody defense. Even, yeah. Nobody even even that that don't exist. That's not you, an all-time defense. Don't that, you, what? You, on. Hold on, you got a nigga up here talking about how he couldn't beat Joker last year, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's so, you. <laughs> so so hold on. So I and I let's let's put LeBron num let's put LeBron number one performance right there the versus Detroit. When I look at when I look at Jordan, it's right? Not in V number one. That, you can talk but, about let's just for, for the sake of this arc for the sake of this argument. Let's just let's oh. just put it number one. Would you say that is a better performance than Michael Jordan Game Six versus Phoenix, where he scored all the Bulls fourth quarter points except for the game winner where John Paxson hit the three? Oh, meaning yeah. that mean, uh, meaning uh, meaning uh, hold uh, on no, meaning he no, had no. to come back he had to come no. back in the fourth quarter score all the points in the fourth quarter right they take the they take the lead then Phoenix takes the lead right back then he ties the game and then John Paxson hits the game winning three Bro, I I think that I w- I would take you, that no I wouldn't because for your, for a championship I your, would yeah your question to me was flawed from the beginning you said all the points. Then you said Paxson won the game with a three. <laughs> I don't even yeah, need to answer act, that. You act like you act like LeBron James scored all all the points. That's he that's scored, my whole. No, no, he no, didn't. He scored no. twenty. He scored 25, 27 straight points, but in over in fourth quarter he and in overtime. Didn't he? No, 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 he yeah, no he, did. he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He scored twenty nine in a row for the, for the Ex- Exactly, but my, he's not my, the only my, player my, that scored in the fourth quarter or overtime is, for his I'm team. I'm gonna ask you: Is that Jordan's clutches moment, Magdev? No, Michael Jordan's clutches moment. 
to most you. clutch moment. I, I would say it, it. I would say it has to be '98 where he stole the ball from Carl Malone and then hit the game winning shot right. to win the championship. And that and that does not that does not equate to the block. Shit. I one agree. play. So hold hold on. So LeBron's one play I, I on agree. defense. <laughs> so hold on, hold on. Time out. Time out. LeBron's one play on defense with a block. Jordan has a play. A has a clutch play on defense. Mac, hold on. Hold on. Ask Le- you a question. No, no, no. Let me, no, no, no. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. So so LeBron James has a clutch block. Right. Cool. Sa- saves the game. Jordan has a clutch steal. And then hits the game winning shot for championships. No, it's the context. No. So let me ask him a question, Beast. Oh, what, what was that's the context. Hold on. Let me just oh, say this, African. You got it. If you go and watch sports science, because they did it, how improbable yeah. that was that he even blocked that ball. It, it's it's not sport. even a debate. Right went now. to sports science. <laughs> The ground they covered, yeah. It, it with the sports oh, okay, but what 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 game had more gravity? Like, what was the exactly. magnitude? The context. What, what was the series against? What was that state? What, what was if that Jordan, state? If Jordan if loses that, that game, block. I bet you they was up three two, three one. What was it, Macduff? That was up three one. If Jordan right? loses that game, they was up three. If Jordan First of all, hold game, on, time out. Jordan, I'm not giving, I'm not giving no, 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 extra the, credit. The, the, I'm not the, giving the, extra the, credit the, for a nigga who was down three no, one no, no, to that, a nigga who no, never no, went game seven. No, no, but, 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 but that goes but, against your logic. Hold on, hold on, no, 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 it does, no, it doesn't. It's still MacDef. You got to stop because you said it's still an elimination game. Hold on, MacDef. You said, you said the number two thing. In your criteria you need a was elimination games, big games. And I need a bucket. So hold yes. on one second. Hold on one second, Mac. <laughs> so if the elimin, remember your criteria said elimination yes. games. I had so two of them. LeBron mm-hmm. James, if he the block that he's just talking about, if the magnet, because when you say elimination games, obviously you're alluding to what is the gravity, what is the magnitude of each mm. of these games, then that means. LeBron's block, the magnitude of that block, more was on the line if he doesn't get that block and they Lamont, lose can the I, game. Can I, can I end it? Exactly. Can I end it real quick? Is Lamont, that, that is, okay, Lamont, my other goes to there's game two seven. criteria. Let, let go ahead. Did he hit the game go winning ahead. shot? Let, 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 let me, Mac Def, let me, let, me, let me end it for you. you I'm going to tell, tell you. I'm there ain't no you. ending it. You're not ending hold, nothing. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, I'm explaining the difference to you, right? Because you asked about the magnitude. Here's the difference. The difference is when Jordan was doing it, he was on the best team. When LeBron <laughs> did it, he beat the best team. So we're giving credit. So again, so that again, matters, though. No, no, it, no, it doesn't because that downplays <laughs> LeBron for not having the no, best no, no. team for being. Mac, Mac, hold on, so you're being no, shut up, shut up, no, shut no, up, shut up. No, you guys are trying to tell time, me, bro. You guys are when trying to tell me that LeBron nine, James. No, nah, three two nah, versus yeah. down. Being down, being up three two, and Chill, being Africa, down. Let him land his plane. Oh, bro. he ain't landing shit because you be finessing and he's this. No, because y'all how are you finessing and I'm telling facts. No, because Mac is Go ahead. Right. I'm, I'm letting y'all go. It's three on one. Go ahead, Africa. Yeah, yeah. The moment of clutch matters, right? And so when you up I'll three two and that, Jordan misses the shot, no, and he goes not. to game seven. That ain't the same as losing. Y'all niggas are contradicting yourself. Okay, okay, okay. Go. Oh, hold on, Ralph. Okay, stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. So if correct, 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 you're exactly between that. If you down, uh, you're exactly down, right. Finals. So how is that the same as Jordan misses the shot? I guess he still misses the shot, and he goes to Game Seven. You, get you know, ex- the ex- whole gravity ex- is different. Mm-hmm. And we talk ex- about a game seven exactly, in the the exactly, exactly. But you're cooking. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Keep going. No, 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 no. You just just acknowledge the gravity are two different things when it comes to the moment of how clutch the actual plays were. They were both clutch, but what, what meant more in that moment? I think that's how you weigh which one was more clutch. Well, hold on, Mac okay, so, so hold on. I, I, no, I'll mention it. I'll mention it. So since we're bringing up context, the motherfucking game was tied when he blocked the shot. You still had a minute and 30. Hold on. Time out. Time out. I'll let you talk. You still had a fucking minute and, and a 30 seconds left. Even if Kyrie misses that shot and Curry goes down and hits a bucket, you still got another possession. When Jordan stole the ball, it was the last possession of the game. So not only was he down by a point, stole the ball, stole the ball. 
right? And was then he a, goes and hits. Was it an no, 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 no. elimination hold, game? Hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me land my plane. Let me land my plane because y'all wanted to bring this context bullshit in here. So when he's down by a point on the last possession of the ball game with 30 seconds left, he makes a steal on defense down by a point. Okay, then go back down the court. Death. Hold on, Mac okay, y'all can cut me off. It's cool. Hold on, y'all. Go ahead, Mac. Mac, 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 Mac. Go ahead. Here's the problem. Mac, 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 Mac. Cut me off. Cut me off. Go ahead. No, Mac Def. I'm not trying to cut you off. I'm just trying to ask you one question. I'm trying to ask you one question, Mac Def. The the reason why there's a reason why I told everybody when they come up here, I'm going to ask you, what is clutch? What is your definition of clutch, and who's the most clutch? Because I want to get a before you tell us anything about this, I want to know your values. You told us your two most significant values in regards to clutch. And one of those values was elimination games. And now all of a sudden the elimination game no longer holds the gravity that you mentioned before, because now focusing on elimination game no longer favors MJ having the best play. It, it, it favors LeBron if we go with your logic of the elimination games alluding to something being more clutch. Um, and this is based on your own logic. So that's the problem is your own logic supports LeBron having the best play, like B's mentioned. But because you want Jordan's play to be better and nothing that, <laughs> nothing that Jordan did, nothing that Jordan did, and as far as that buzzer beater, it Lamont. wasn't an elimination game. Hey, game seven, it's, just, it's just magic. Your, your logic is weird. That's, yeah. that's what, so should we ask you again, MacDef? And let, let's give MacDef one more chance. Yeah, man. MacDef, MacDef, one more chance. Ask Please me. tell us what is your what are your two most important elements of clutch? Please redefine it because it's not making sense anymore. Because everything that you're that's saying funny, more Lamont. so aligns with LeBron that's being the funny. most clutch, not Jordan. I That's already right. gave you my already gave you my criteria. Now please don't well, now please you, don't cut. Hold on. Now remind, please don't cut me off. Can you remind you, us of you the can criteria put me again? On, you, can you remind us of the criteria again? Because I think we're all confused. Yeah, because man. you keep telling us stuff. You keep telling us about your criteria, and then when your criteria more so aligns with LeBron and MJ, you get mad. I at said us. game winning shot. Correct. No, hold on. No, you. Okay, yes, that, yes, that, I did. I, that yes, doesn't I did. favor that doesn't favor Jordan because yes, LeBron has more. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So A, I said game winning, I said game winning shot. Correct. Who has more? Who has more? Jordan or LeBron? LeBron James has more game okay. winning shots. No, no, no. You said elimination no. games number two. Uh, okay. No, we're back on we're still on one, sir. I'm I, I apologize. We're still on one. Okay. So again, when we talk in context. Regular regular season, Jordan has more. Uh, no, LeBron has more game winners, but Jordan has more buzzer beaters. In the playoffs, no, LeBron the playoff. James has. Oh, 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 I'm I'm bringing context to the whole thing because we're talking just player, player. So in playoffs now, LeBron James has more game winners. When you go <laughs> to the finals in the biggest clutch oh, yeah. moments of the the freaking game. Jordan okay, has that like over that. everybody. That's where now I have to the stop context. You. Hold on, like that. I got to stop you there. Now, in your criteria, why did you not say the finals is the highest is the is your highest grading scale? Because <laughs> because the <laughs> reason stupid, the reason why I'm asking you this, MacDef, is because you just admitted that LeBron has more game winners, and you said your number in one the playoffs. Criteria. Hold on. Okay, so hold on, MacDef. You just said your number one criteria is game winners. And look, you just admitted LeBron has more game winners. That's your number one criteria. And then, the your number, then your number two criteria is elimination games, right? Yeah. Which we, which we know LeBron James has not only a better win-loss percentage in elimination games, but he has better stats across the board in elimination games. So then we move. And so, mm -hmm. then, so then now because LeBron James is number one, you said, okay, now let's focus on the finals. Why didn't no, you I just didn't. say, why didn't you just say it's all about doing these things, more buzzer beaters and in, in, in elimination games or, or big time shots in the finals? Why don't you just say it's more so all about your finals performances? Because everything sure. that you're saying, because because the one thing we know, Magda, I didn't say you, finals performance. The one thing, no, no, the one thing is if you don't confine your entire logic to the finals, there's no way you can have. Jordan, um, 
as a better clutch player than LeBron. You have to confine it all to the finals because that's the mm -hmm. only space where you Sir, can say mm -hmm. Jordan outpaces LeBron mm -hmm. in any of these stats. So, so my question to you is, why would I take out the finals? I didn't say take out the finals. You, what? You okay, so what th there's no reason for me to specify it Lamont, either when my criteria you is game winners. Lamont, you know, Lamont, I understand you what you're saying. Calm down, no, calm down. My my criteria, shut up. My criteria is game winners. Now, if somebody has that in the regular season, if LeBron has that in the regular season, cool. LeBron, LeBron but Jordan has, has it in the playoffs too. But hold on. As far as game as far as game winners, Jordan has the more buzzer more buzzer beaters. LeBron James has more oh, game winners, oh, though. Okay. Total. Let me finish. Let game me finish. Buzz, Let buzzer me finish. Winners. So, so hold on. So, Lamont. So, basically, the most you're trying. In the playoffs, man. I don't know why. Way I understand that. Be y'all trying to cut me off. My whole point was game winning shots. That is clutch to me. LeBron now, has more. That, <laughs> now that specifies across all. That specifies across all. Areas, regular season, playoffs, finals. Okay. I'm not. I'm not specifying the finals and making it separate. I'm not specifying the finals. I'm not specifying the and finals LeBron as has more. separate. Then LeBron no, has more. No, he does. No, he does not. What? He where <laughs> the, where Jordan. So let me get this. Let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. I I, I just want to understand y'all logic. So if I say game winners is, is clutch, LeBron has the most. All, all time, all time. He has the most game winners all time, yes. Ex except, except in this particular area. Now, but you said if you're not Jordan, the finals. Hold on, everything is included, sir. I'm, I know. I apologize. You just everything said, is included. But you just said it doesn't matter if the finals, <laughs> you know, the regular. You said you added it everything. All up. Everything okay, so is included. You, hold on. So then, if you look at everything, who has the most game winners? LeBron James has that, the most game winning That is winning the conversation. Shot. What are we then, doing? The point. Lamont, 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 stop fucking cutting me off. Stop 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 cutting me off. This nigga just rambling. Shut up, locker room. One more time. I'm giving one more chance, locker room. No, shut up. Go ahead, Megan. Put me and put play the music. I don't care. Put me on a big screen and play the music so I can at least get my shit off. I don't stop cutting me off and put me on mute. Put put them put me on a big screen and put the music on. Like fuck. Stop cutting me off. Now, now we're gonna sit here. Now we're gonna sit here and say that LeBron James is the most clutch player all time. Okay, cool. Now, what has he done? He's hit the most game-winning shots in the regular season and playoffs. Okay, great. But you stop your logic right there. And you don't say, well, and I'm saying, well, what about the finals? Well, he doesn't have it in the finals. Well, my guy, Michael Jordan, has it in the regular season, has it in the playoffs, but he also elevates to another plateau and another level where your guy is not at, and that's the finals. And not only does he do it in the finals where LeBron couldn't do it, he does it better than anybody else in NBA history. So when you talk about elimination games, when you talk about game winning shots, which is my criteria, which is my criteria, Jordan does it on all levels where LeBron James still Mac hasn't Jeff. reached the NBA finals. Jeff, I'm going to ask you one question, Mac Jeff. How many eliminations is, games has Jordan played in in the finals? <laughs> He left, man. Oh. I, I think <laughs> Lamont. I think he was going with the logic of Jordan plays a game six like a game seven, bro. Lamont, <laughs> what? We doing something crazy? For I Lamont. think he's going with that logic. Hold on, let me let, let, let locker room go. Go ahead. Locker. Let, let me say this right because when you when you talk about the magnitude, like the point I brought up when I said the difference between LeBron and Jordan is Jordan was on the best team. LeBron beat the best team, right? So that has to count for something. You can't, we can't just gloss over that as if it means nothing. Jordan was on the 72 win Bulls team. LeBron beat the 73 and 9 Golden State Warriors. It's not the same thing. This is why I say people like to me, I, I genuinely believe that people who who got Jordan as the GOAT still, to me, it's it's damn near like a casual take at this point. That's just how I feel. You know what I'm saying? It's like when KD was on the Warriors, people was, you, you heard, who, what, what were they saying on mainstream media? They were saying KD's the best player because he was on the Warriors and they were winning. 
when when in you know when he was on the Warriors, 2017, 2018. That was the narrative. Stephen A. Smith, Skip Bay, that's what they were saying. KD's better than LeBron. It's like, bro, what are y'all talking about? He joined a 73 win team. How is he better than LeBron? How does that make him better than LeBron? Just because he beat LeBron in the finals. That doesn't make him better than LeBron. So to me, I gotta say, man, I I I really do blame you, Lamont. You know what I mean? Because you you know, <laughs> you give these dudes a platform to just get up on, just get up here and lie, man. Just tell lies. And, and, and let, let me ask. Look, B, no, B, what B, I look. want, I don't mind. And, and I, I got Georgia pair. I'm gonna let Young Africa cook right after I'm done. I don't mind who your selection is. It just needs to make sense and align with your logic. And see what ha what we saw very quickly with Mac left is before things got messy for him. <laughs> Before we really started going, we just asked him, what's your criteria? Yeah. And then he just went down this rabbit hole of trying to explain himself out of his own criteria. He didn't realize this whole time he was fighting his own criteria. He wasn't fighting us. He the one told us what his criteria was. I'm just trying to say, you got to make it make sense. I said, is it the finals? If in the next sentence, he's saying, No, it's all together, it's all of it. it the, the, I'm not separating finals. Yeah, he then elevated, he though. His then, last point was he elevated to levels that LeBron never did in the finals. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. That's that's different. And so, I would like to ask Bees about this elevation, right? So, these game winners in games five and six of the finals, please, that you watched in the 90s, do, do they compare to what you saw in 2016, for example, being 3 1 down? Are, are they comparable things with those elevations and game winners? Um, that clutch, I don't know. Bees, well, what bees doing, man? He taking his meds. What happened to bees, man? Why is the locker room still talking? That's not locker room talking. That's young Africa. Hey, no, somebody's in my ear. I had, I had a locker room. Oh, what, what are you talking about? Got beef with the locker room? I told you, man. These dudes be dreaming about me, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this nigga dreaming about me, man. Damn, George. Get your game. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on, George. Kick yourself out, man. George, you good? <laughs> No, man, I, I hear an echo. That's you, George, man. You, you got to fix your equipment. <laughs> no, nah, bro. You got to get off that Obama phone, nigga. <laughs> He's on the delay, man. George, yeah. man. This is some free phones. Uh, See, that's why I say, that's why I say, Lamont, you, you letting another one up. See, that's what I'm saying, Lamont. You, 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 it's people like you that are really the problem, bro. In, in this whole community, in this whole sports <laughs> sector, it's people like you, man. Oh, man. Look, you got man. niggas like Joe. I'm talking about you just have the most Jay. You just let the most random niggas on, this, on the panel. Lamar, I be thinking you be trolling, man. You be trying to get some look, content. Oh, look, Lamar, Jay, look. Hold on, hold on. You trying on, to get content, huh, Lamar? Did you see Jay? I gave Jay his own personal segment earlier, man. Mm -hmm. I gave Jay the floor, man. Look. Mm -hmm. He said he got the he said he got the t-shirt from uh you locker room. He said that's how they sell them in Atlanta, man. He, oh, you know, the V neck. Oh. oh, that was a crew neck, just oh. loose. It was just loose neck. Oh my. He got he had a loose neck too. Man, you be wearing V-necks locker room? Damn, that's crazy. Lamont, Lamont. Yeah. What hey Lamont. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey Lamont. Yeah, what up, locker room? Now, see, now, 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 remember just a few seconds ago, I said you part of the problem, right? <laughs> now, now, earlier you did a segment on a nigga in Africa named Dreamers Pro. You got his brother on the panel. See. I, I, I want to ask you. Oh, so, my what, God. Because, man. Lamont, I made a video earlier. I don't know if you've seen it. I saw some of it. But, I, but, I, but, I, but, I, but I'm calling out, right, you niggas over in Africa hating on American athletes. Now I want to ask Africa. Now you oh, call me the cone room. Yeah, yeah. Right? I do. I do. Right? So so my thing is, why do you mm. niggas over there in Africa mm. sit on the internet hating on American athletes, man? Who, who, who do inquiring, I be hating on? In, inquiring hating? minds want to know. Who do I be hating on? I, I don't represent the whole continent, but who do I be hating on? If you're talking to me, who are you talking to? I mean I don't talk for Dreamers Pro. I don't represent Dreamers Pro. You need to go to Dreamers Pro to address them issues, not me. I mean, you hate on me. Hmm? I hate on you. I didn't know you was an American athlete, man. Are you one of them American athletes? I don't think so. You five foot five, one hundred and forty pounds, bro. Get that shit up. Hey, 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 Lamont. I was on a, uh, I was on a uh, Herm stream earlier, right? Yeah. And uh, he had he had big tone on there, man. I I jumped on that panel, Lamont. I'm talking about uh, that nigga went off, man. I gotta see that, man. That is wild, man. I gotta tune in. Hey, hey, Dr Dr Lamont, real quick. 
Yeah, yeah Dreams yeah. Post. Yeah, he's African. No, no, he sound like he's from New York. I don't know what he's talking about. He sound like he's from New York. That's what he sound like. No, no, he's from where you from. No, he sound like Lamar, real quick, real quick. Yeah. But you see, you see what I was talking about, right? You went through the numbers, all of the clutch numbers, several goddamn times, and you still had people come up here with tortured ass logic. You asked Mac Def if LeBron James has the most clutch baskets, the most buzzer beaters, that makes him the most clutch. He picks up his ball and the goal and he moves it and says he has to hit it in the finals. So again, using that tortured ass logic, because that's tortured ass <laughs> logic. How is how is those two shots better than an entire series performance? These it's dudes not, but make I'm, no I'm, sense. It's not. It's you not, can go through this. all the well, fucking numbers several goddamn times, and they still gonna come up here and say stupid shit. This is why. Well, I, well, that's why I say Lamont's the problem. <laughs> nah. the problem. No, I had to expose it. Basically. Like what happens is when the numbers are significantly against you, what we saw MacDef have to try to do was he had to go through leaps and bounds to try to create um, an angle where he could say Jordan was better. That's what he was struggling with, right? So he went to the finals. I mean, we even heard him say series ending game winners, not just game winners. Like he, he started stretching it beyond stretching it just to try when all he needs to do is just be like you know what just lebron got it I, let me just stop fighting against just pure common sense mm -hmm. so he's but, stretching and stretching and stretching to try to get to um, an answer that suits let me say point. this about jordan and kobe and shot creators in the clutch right let me say this right because there is a certain level of value when it comes to shot creation and shot making in the clutch right when you talk about in the end and if i was representing kobe in as more clutch i would say this right the value of your best player being an elite shot creator in the NBA and being able to be an elite shot maker in the NBA, tough shot maker in the NBA, in the clutch is very valuable. If I'm talking about last shot bucket, I'm taking Jordan Kobe over LeBron. I'm doing that every single time. And if you value well, shot creation at a high level and you value the last shot, because most or often than not, more than what they do when they talk about LeBron James is, why did he pass to Kyle Culver in the corner? Why pass to um, George Hill on that cut? You got the switch on to Curry. Cook Curry one-on-one -on -one in the clutch on that game in game one of the finals, right? And to that, um, the value of your best player, you'd rather go down with your best player taking the last shot. And so if that's the case and you value Lamont, creation at a high ability, well, then I can understand that because when it comes let me to cook. the last shot itself, Matt. it is Jordan. Let me, it is let me cook. But let me cook. just that in the clutch. And that's let, not the only let thing. Me cook. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me cook. So, so you just you just brought up shot creation and you brought up LeBron passing the ball to Kyle Korver and George Hill. So now we're going to blame LeBron James, one of the smartest basketball players, if not the smartest to ever play a game of basketball, for making the right basketball play. But we're going to praise him. Hold on. But we're going to praise guys who shoot mm. over two and three defenders. Mm. Right. You would get to make that, that make sense. I didn't do that. That, that's not what I did. You, that's you, not what he did. I don't think. I don't think that's what he did, y'all. That's not what I did. Nah, I because so what was the point? No, because me and Africa were just talking about if if you're truly looking at clutch and you're trying to get an understanding of what clutch is, um, then you would consider anything a player does on the basketball court that's conducive to winning clutch. So, for example, those passes when LeBron James dimes off and hits an open guy in the clutch. That pass, make or miss, is clutch. But people will only judge that pass based on if the if the player that he passes it to makes or misses the shot. Like nobody's gonna look at that pass from Dan that he threw to Danny Green in the finals. Mm -hmm. That was an unbelievable pass that only maybe five players in NBA history can make. But people are gonna harp on that pass and say, "Oh, that's not clutch. He's scared of the moment. He's supposed to shoot over nineteen defenders." but they won't even look at how he was even able to get that pass off to Danny Green. That pass in and of itself was clutch. But people just like to hate, man. People people find ways to hate on things. So I said, if you're really trying to get an understanding of what clutch is, you'll consider it all. And you won't just stick, stay stuck on the offensive side of the ball. But what about the value of shot, creating, shot creation? Would you say the most valuable thing in the clutch, if you had to pick, right? And all the aspects, Lamont, of offense, right? Passing. Shot creation is scoring. probably the most valuable in the clutch especially right and 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 if you without even looking at numbers lebron is probably the best at that at in the clutch. 
efficiency in so, the moment. Self shot creation. Let's We're not talking about creating the best shot. We're talking about self shot creation for yourself. Right. One on one. LeBron James. Um, is the best. You know, I don't know. I don't that's know if that's I mean the. I don't know if that's the best. Um, because because a lot of times, you know, like like for for example, when I look at some of you know some game winners. Some of these game winners ain't really about creating high quality shots. A lot of these game winners that we see, especially from Jordan and Kobe throughout their career, game winning shots, buzzer beaters, it'd be some horrible shots. Like Kobe then took some horrible shots, highly contested. That's not shot creating. That's just making a tough shot. Shot creation, if you if shot creation generally improves shot quality. And you know. They're not, they're just taking tough shots, and they're some of the greatest tough shot makers, just like Kyrie is. But they're one of some of the greatest uh tough shot makers in the clutch. That's just an attribute that they have. But I don't want to say they're great shot creators. I don't give them that much. Who, who said so, my, go ahead. I don't give Kobe or Jordan. I don't say that they're great shot. I, wow. I wouldn't say that they're great shot creators. I mean, now if you look at Jordan's move against Russell. That was a great move. That was he did a good job of getting to pull off a high quality shot. But but outside of that, Jordan took a lot of highly contested shots at the buzzer. They weren't really great. It was just tough shots he made. It was low quality shots. He just made tough shots. So Lamont, that was the greatest push off ever, bro. But it's still shot creation. If you can get away with it, if you ain't trying, you ain't cheat. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. So push, push all you can. I mean, a lot of people do that. Push, shove, do what you got to do to get open. It's all creation. Lower your shoulder. Oh, that. Oh, that. Oh, that. I mean, LeBron does it to a certain degree. LeBron uses those shoulders to no other end when he gets inside. I mean, you might not see it on the TV screen, but ask the players after the game when they get hit with that shoulder, you know, or, and he driving through the lane. They, they, they feel it the next day, next couple days. So as the coach, you comfortable with passing the shot to the corner and Kyle Corp, even though you know he's a great shooter and all that in the clutch, the percentages are different, even for great shooters, right? Because of the moment, because of the gravity. And so you're comfortable with your best guy making that play and over the one-on-one -on -one shot creation, make or miss your best player taking the shot. Hold on, say that again. One-on-one. -on -one, LeBron. Mm -hmm. Steph Curry at the top of the key decides he breaks down the defense decides to kick it out Kyle Corbin in the corner Kyle Corbin misses the shot right but the play was the right basketball play but sometimes I would personally say the best basketball play the right basketball play ain't actually the right play when you talk about winning make or miss with your best player most talented player in a one-on-one -on -one situation I'm taking that over the regular catch and shoot when the gravity is different for a Kyle Corver, J.R. Smith, whoever it may be as a role player. I'm sorry, bro. I disagree mm -hmm. with that. But do you why get, force a shot over? Why force a shot over? Moments dictate. Four. Moments dictate the, oh, the, 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 the shot. That itself. Kyle Corver in the corner, mm -hmm. Kyle Corver from the corners, I think is the best ever in the NBA from the corners. And I'm sure the clutch, it would look different if we looked at clutch stats for Kyle Corver. It, would it, look does, it doesn't matter. That mm -hmm. shot from matter. Kyle Corver in the corners, is a, a high percentage shot for Kyle Corver. He's the I think the best ever from the corners. So See, that's a better that, that's player. a better shot than than that, than LeBron shooting over Steph Curry. Okay, why, that's why, fair. No, and I would no, say it's a better shot than Kyle LeBron Corver James shot. driving in the lane. Hold up, hold up, young Africa. Let me answer this question. Oh. That's a better shot than LeBron James driving in the lane and forcing a shot over three, four people. That is I didn't actually that. that. I didn't actually that. I didn't actually that. It's a better shot. It's a better that Kyle Corver shot is a better shot than LeBron James trying to back down Steph Curry or if, drive if, past Steph Curry. He didn't have to. He, he don't defense. have to back him down. He could turn around and shoot over him. You know what? He don't have to back him down. I do that when you can kick it out. You can drive and kick. You know what? Way, it don't matter. We, we are debating if LeBron James is the most clutch player in NBA history. So if LeBron is the most clutch player in NBA history, the numbers back it up. The efficiency backs it up. Aren't you backing? That guy, now I'm not saying that he made the wrong decision. I'm just saying sometimes moments dictate whether the shot is the best shot. And, and, and that's what the best players have done historically. I don't hold it against Kobe or Michael Jordan taking tough shots because it uh, it dictates that you have to at certain moments in the game because it's on your best player. And he's the most talented player. And if he has a one-on-one -on -one situation, even a contested situation, the skill set dictates I can make that over a wide open player at certain moments, especially in the clutch. I'm not mad at that. 
And I'm not sure yeah, that the best play is always the right play and the best play at the top. I'm not sure that that's always the case, especially well, when we talk about catch and shoot dudes in a corner. Hold, hold, especially on, them hold, on, hold on, let me ask you a question. Yeah, on that play, was Corver on the strong side of the court or the weak side of the court? He was on the weak side. He was on the weak side. You sure? I remember, I remember LeBron passing to the left corner, which was the weak side. But he was at, LeBron was at the top of the key, uh, from what I remember. But I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look at that again. Why, right. why, why do you ask that? I'm gonna look at it. I'm gonna look at it. Well, I, I, I don't think the moment dictates anything. The defense hmm. dictates. They, they were going to make the defense make a decision, and the decision was made. And and due to the decision the defense made, you either take a Take a highly contested shot, or you make the higher, the, the better play. Now we can argue about which one of those you should do. A highly contested shot. Yeah, because see, see what you, what you're not saying, George, is you you see Steph Curry out there, and you say, "Oh, well, he was on the strong side." He, but but LeBron was in the paint. Uh, LeBron was in the paint, yeah. but strong side. You yeah, strong exactly. Side. So, yeah. so that tells you the play was designed to make that defender choose. It was, it, late it was, close out. It was a late no, close out. No, on right. It, the play was designed to make his defender choose. Mm -hmm. If his defender came down, LeBron was supposed to kick the ball out. Oh. That's why I said he yeah. on the strong side. He did the exact thing you told him. He's so he, not he, that, that his defender is never supposed to leave him. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest pass in the book. So that tells you it wasn't a one on one situation. Even though you may think it was, everyone was collapsing on him on that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, Lamont, run that play, Lamont. And so, What's the oh, play? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, he's right. It's when LeBron passed. Run that play, Lamont. In the finals in game three, right? And in that, in that finals, it does essentially what B said. They collapse, he hedges, and then he closes out. But I'm gonna ask you this, B's. Run that play, Lamont. Do you care if, if Kyle Corbett is one of the greatest three-point shooters we all know of all time, right? But do you care if it's the clutch and Kyle Corbett might not have the best catch and shoot numbers in the clutch? Does that matter? Or it doesn't matter, well, it's just a good well, shot no matter what. I think that if 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 you want LeBron to take that shot, I think that you have to have a completely different play given LeBron's skill set. Okay. That, that that's what I would say. When you put him at the top of the key, mm -hmm. one of the bad things about that is everyone on the court can see him, and mm -hmm. him pulling up in the mid range isn't his strongest suit. Mm -hmm. So he's either going to the rim at that point. He wasn't as good as a three point shooter at that point. Mm -hmm. He's either going to the rim, or he's giving the ball to someone else. Mm. I hear you on that. That's true. So if you want him to take the shot, I think I think you have to run a different play. Yeah, post him up or come off a screen or off ball, some some something else. Okay, I'll see. I'll see. Right, because you basically are saying, LeBron, make the best play possible to get the dub. Mm. Whether that's you shooting or somebody else shooting. We're we're gonna put Carl Cor Corver on the strong side because he ain't supposed to leave him. But he left him anyway. <laughs> The game wasn't over yet. The oh, game wasn't God. over yet. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm about to see that play here. That play looks – I don't know. The, the design of that play was actually really well designed. Um, I'm about to show you guys um, when I look at it. Um, he doesn't Steph, completely leave Corver, right? He kind of hedges a little. Well, no. Well, the, it was a different play design. It was an exit screen happening as well that a lot of people don't talk about. So Curry was also getting hit. Because it looks like Curry was guarding Corver, and Curry got hit with an exit screen intentionally by design. I don't know the way the way that kind of looks. It it looks like the play might have been for Corver. Oh, okay, that's different. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I could be wrong. Has, I mean, obviously these plays that. got multiple options. Yeah, obviously. LeBron has a decision to think at the about it. Day, no matter what, what the, the run the play. Know, I'm about to hold the, on the one second. Warrior, the Warriors know Curry can't guard LeBron one on one. The defense Curry wasn't gonna his collapse. primary matchup in that situation. I that know, but he got switched on to LeBron. Curry can't hold him. If 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 um Corver's man doesn't leave, that's a that's a trip hold to on. the basket. Let's, let's just look at the play, y'all, so we get a better understanding of what's going on here. The reason why I say this play was by design, y'all. See, that was Draymond. That's no Curry. What hold on, hold on. Well, hold on. Look, look right here. So when when we see LeBron on the drive, hold on. Let me. It, it skipped. It did a little skip right there. 
All right. If you see the screen that oh, Kevin Love is hitting, screen. so Kevin Love hits hit Curry with something called an e exit screen. So e e exit screen is it's kind of hard to explain what they are. They're kind of like ghost screens so the player can't see coming, almost like a back screen off ball. And Curry actually played the. It's almost like Curry knew the screen was coming and he played the screen well. Th this play might have got blown up because of Steph Curry. It might have got blown up because of Steph Curry. So, look, Curry's getting hit with the exit screen right here. So he Curry gets screen. It's, it's almost like Curry knows the play because with LeBron driving with a head of steam to the rim, if Curry's the bad defender that people say he is, then he's just going to be one of those three guys that collapse on him. But First watch of all, Curry's not even driving. He's not even guarding Love. Hold on. Hold on. So let's just watch how Curry reacts to the screen. Corbin's wide open. See how he spins off the screen? He spun off the screen before LeBron even made the pass. He spun. Watch this. He spins off the screen before LeBron even makes the pass. Yeah, as soon as he feels love, he already knows what's happening. Well, he already knows. He know, like he he knows the play. Like he he read it well, hmm. and he he might have forced a miss there. LeBron actually passed it late. To be honest, you didn't take need to take that one extra dribble. You could have passed. Well, the one the one extra dribble he has to because remember one of the things they teach you in basketball. You got to, you got to, before you can pass that ball, because if he throws that pass right now, it's a steal. If you look at Curry, Curry's looking at that gap right there. So, so yes, because in this is, I, I talk to my players about this all the time. I say, before you make these passes, you got to commit to get into the middle of the floor. You have to get into the paint because it makes the, the defense honor you as a score right now. Everybody's just going to play the pass. If he move, if he even blinks to pass the ball, Curry's going to play that pass and lane gap and go get a steal and go the other way. So Brian has to get to the middle of the floor. So Brian did what he was supposed to do by getting to the paint before he made that pass. Look at Brian. So Brian did exactly what he was supposed to do. Look at Brian. Brian doesn't pass that ball until his feet touch the paint. Corbin exactly. could have maybe um flared out a bit more to the hash. Take I like, mean he could have right. he could have, but the play more. design called for him to be in the corner, mm. and so and because the thing is, if he cheats up anymore, then what is Steph Curry going to do? Steph Curry's not even going to allow himself to get screened. He's just going to cheat up. So not going to not going to say something when we play this through. Look at it. Cur Curry might have just see the thing is when we see plays like this and we watch it a few times over. Yeah, Corver missed a shot. Brian with a great pass. He made him commit. But nobody's ever going to give Steph Curry credit on that play for completely blowing that yeah. play up. That might be Steph Curry on that. We might hey, just need to be. That does look like a design for Corver. And I still say, so are we not going with the most clutch play? Uh, hey, pause it right there. Pause it right there. Re rewind it a little bit. Pause it right Can there. I say and something? Then, Everybody the thought middle? Curry was guarding LeBron. At the middle of the court, no, I, no, no, I, the, I the, the, the other angle that you just had where it was from the top of the court. I mixed up the plays. That was my fault. You let it go. One dribble into the move at the top of the – yeah, yeah, right here. Look at this. That's straight. Now, now, LeBron got a choice, right? And, and it looks like the play call, he's going with the play, right? Set a good screen. Um, Corbin's right there. I don't know why he takes another step to the left to go further into the corner, but he's right there. And LeBron got the one-on-one -on -one right there. You know why, though? You know, spin off <laughs> right now. But now, you know now, why, though? Durant, yeah, the re hold on. There. Africa, you answered your own question. They, did, they didn't They did expect for Curry to spin off the screen mm. like that. So normally what happens is a guy will fight over the top and chase it the other way and then be completely late. Curry, look, Brian hasn't even passed the ball yet, and he's already spinning off. He's already spinning off. and re Because he's spinning off. He's going to leave Kevin Love wide open, right? He doesn't care because Curry is actually reading the play before it happens. He's getting to the three-point shooter early. He forced a miss. That's not yeah. a bad screen yeah. rap guy reloaded. Yeah. That's a great screen. What are you talking about? Do you think that's a good play call? Because you got Kevin Durant in help because Kevin Love's not a threat setting the off-ball screen. There's no lane for LeBron to get to. He well, back. by design, it, it it again, anything with getting LeBron into the lane is – not a horrible design. Um, Kevin Durant sitting right there. He's could they have been a bit more creative with the play call? Probably. But, I mean, if, if Corver makes this shot, we having a whole different tune. Oh, that's true. Kevin Love sets a great screen. The, the problem is this play was every this play was executed perfectly. LeBron, perfect. Corver, perfect. Love, perfect screen. Steph Curry sniffed the play out. 
And he got to the shot early. That's that's all Steph Curry. He's never going to get credit for it. Look how early he got to that shot. You're here right there. You know how many times we see guys make mistakes in this situation, man? He got he snipped the play out, man. That's tough. Maybe a little slightly early on the screen to feel you because once he feels you, he already knows where Bro, you're going. That's a that's a great screen. That's a great exit screen. I'm not gonna say it was a bad screen. It could have been a better screen. If no, it couldn't have. Extra, extra step to the left. No, the you're spin, right. No, you you're right. About Curry, Curry made a clutch play. Facts. <laughs> Thank you. Facts. <laughs> but 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 see but see because the way people see the game now, no one's ever gonna give Curry credit for that exactly. being clutch. Oh, no, he, exactly. he definitely. No, no, no we can see up. the title. Who's most to blame for Cavs collapse, bro? We can see that right there. That's that's what it is. That's tough. Because they was up two, right? They was up two points in this. There was like 50 seconds left, and they were up two. So that's a two-possession game if he makes that. I don't know if that's the play if you need a three up two with 50 seconds left, though. I don't know if you need that. I mean, everything. I mean, he hit him right in the pocket, too, right? That was, ball's right in the pocket. They sniffed. He sniffed the play out. Steph, Steph Curry sniffed the play out, man. Blew it up. That was a perfect – they ran it perfectly. They did not do anything wrong. You can't blame Love. You can't blame Porver. And if and you can't blame Brock because Brian, if he drives and tries to shoot it, that means he's shooting over two blue blue jerseys. He he he. That's gonna be a, a crazy looking shot, make or miss. Right. And that Got was the whole it. debate on this play. I mixed up the the this play with the with the other play when he passed it to. No, Judge that was George the Hill. George Hill when he passed the George Hill cut in with Steph Curry on the ball. Yeah. Yeah, the, now the George Hill play is one that he LeBron left a lot to be desired there, man. And a lot of people are going to always ask, well, you, you got Steph Curry one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. I just think you, that's got to be the greatest matchup. Especially in the that game. game when you yeah. got 50. Yeah, when like, you, yeah, you barbecuing everybody exactly. offensively. It's just like <laughs> – yeah. that, that. I mean, but that, I can understand where people start to question that. On this play right here – not as much to be questioned. Warriors defended it well. The the Cavs executed well. It came down to a few centimeters. Corver makes this shot. We're having a different story. We're saying, right. you know, the problem with this is people blank talk more about Brian making this pass than they do with Curry making a hell of a defensive effort on this play. Oh, that's fair. And so I would say, as a coach, why why go to Corver in that fifty seconds left in the NBA Finals? And that's why I say the numbers don't always dictate what the percentages of a guy is because of the moment itself and the gravity. So why do you go to Culver as a well, coach in that situation? But you know what, though? I'm going to tell you one thing that I've seen from my perspective is <laughs> coaches don't change anything just because it's the clutch. Like, wow. the same set, like the same sets that I run throughout the game is the same, set I, same sets that I have in-game, mm. right? I, the same people, the same players that I would – facilitate playmaking, and do certain things i don't change i don't have any special go-to clutch plays that we go to only in the clutch right for your best the, players you don't wow no, no i have i already like like we have a set called five it's an iso play if 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 we needed a bucket and one of and my one of my best scores was cooking i'm gonna always run five right i'm always gonna run that play like I, like just because it's the clutch and now some some coaches got a deeper bag and they just know so many plays. They can always go to some new ATO that nobody's seen. But for the most part, you don't change based on clutch. Like you, you're always going to put the ball, try to get the ball in your best player's hands, try to get the highest percentage shot. Like when we lost the national championship, well, my best player went on a solo rogue mission. He went outside of the play that we drew up, went and did some BS on his own, <laughs> missed the shot, got blocked. Calls us a national championship. Like, like, so we see the execution here. I, I can, if I pull that up, I can show you guys what poor execution looks like um, to end the game and how you can lose a championship game off of poor execution. Because um, what happens after that is you're up to 55 seconds left. You mm -hmm. miss that shot. They come back. You lose the game. Yeah. Yep. And then they ask questions. So that's tough. You ain't lying. They blame LeBron, man. essentially. Like, why pass the quarter? Yeah, they blame Brian, but I, I think Brian played it perfectly. Mm. It's just I think the one thing that they did not foresee in that circumstance is Steph Curry sniffing the play out. That's oh, and, and the that's last the guy, guy on the want. court. Yeah, so that's you attacking a, Steph Curry as a coach. That's what he said. Oh, oh, Co yeah. Curry on Corver. Okay, off ball screen on Curry. Yeah. Look, this nigga all day you got wide open straight up. And but but Curry, 
said, I'm Curry won that battle. He outsmarted him. He won that defensive battle. Oh, he didn't allow right. himself to get screened. He sniffed the play out. He see no, he knew where his help was. So he knew he could leave Kevin Love. And you still got Kevin Durant under the basket for help. And he sniffed the play out. He got to the oh, shot early, contested well, and, and he got to stop. I don't know. As a coach, well, you got you got LeBron acting, James, one of the greatest like, uh, clutch players of all time. Why would just can't say he missed the shot? And you uh no, no, but the, the choice for he missed the shot is, because of use, Steph Curry. You use LeBron's gravity to be a decoy for Corver. And and the question for a coach is do you go with LeBron and, and him scoring or do it, you use it, it worked? Hold on, it, it worked. but it did but work to the, the reason why because when whenever you draw up a play, you don't draw up plays to always get the perfect shot. You you draw up plays to see if you can get the defense to make a mistake. Sometimes there's advantage defense if they can sniff the play out and get the stop. Um, we've seen Draymond do that a ton of times. He sniff his play, sniffs late game plays out. He blows them up by putting guys in the right spot. We just got to get – sometimes you just got to shake somebody's hand and be like, that's a hell of a play. What Steph Curry did when I'm watching it, that's a hell of a play defensively. Yeah. That's a hell of a play. He just – Curry made a hell of a play there, but it's hard for people to fathom that. He made a hell of a play. That's what won them the game. But the way people see basketball, Steph Curry won't ever get credit for that. Kevin Love should have set a moving screen. That's what he should have done. He should have set a Draymond type. I mean, maybe he could have tested it a little bit. Maybe, maybe, maybe he could have been a bit more physical on that. But, but the problem is, is, I mean, in a boom boom situation, y'all got to realize that play is going a million miles an hour. Right. I mean, Steph had 0.3 seconds to get that figured out and make it and make his read. He sniffed it out before the pass even happened. That's defensive IQ. I just think he missed the shot. Okay. If you don't think Steph Curry he, had anything to do with him missing that shot. This man, right. okay, Curry, Kyle Corver. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. Kyle Corver's been in the league for how many years before that shot? Hmm. He'd have had plenty of guys to run at him and do all type of stuff. I didn't see Steph get up to his hand level. I didn't see Steph did. stick his nuts. Yes, Yo, come on. George. What are you watching, George? <laughs> Steph was I was watching it. He That's jumped how much it. He actually jumped. Yeah, in. but it, did, it didn't interfere with the shot. It back rimmed. He just missed the yeah, shot. Basketball, George, when a guy even yes, he, he just miss, like, players miss shots. Hold on, oh, hold on, hold on. Miss, this is like, not missing the shot. This is a highly yeah, contested a shot. Because Curry is out there with a hand up contesting before Curry even releases it. You want me to show you again, oh, George? Yeah, show me again, bro. He just missed the shot. No, he did not just miss no shot, man. What are you talking about? Oh, watch this. Come on, George. Got to give it up. Y'all stop doing it, man. Stop. That's stop a great contest. He was there. He stop capping. On, on the catch. On the catch. Yeah, he, he, got a, he, got, he got the shot on. There's, there's a little Curry separation. There, that's a great now, attempt. Bro. Watch, yeah, watch, look, watch bro. his release. Watch, look, his watch his release. Watch his release. He go. missed the shot. Hey, hold on, George. You, you can look at how he alters Corver's release. Watch this. Exactly. Now, I want you to watch his shooting hand. Watch how Corver pushes his hand up slightly higher and takes it out of the natural shooting motion because Curry's early contest. Watch this. Watch his shooting hand. Hold on. Watch it from another angle. You see it better from this other angle. Look at his hand. Pause it on the release. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. I'm going to pull it back. I'm going to try to pause it. Okay. Yeah, it, so, the contest is right there, man. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Look at Steph. Steph is already... So what the way it looks here is because of Steph Curry's presence, it's almost like an early release. It's almost mm -hmm. like he releases it too quick. Any pressure affects your shot, man, and that's why it's short. Any, and, and, any and he pressure. short rimmed the shot, correct? Exactly. He did. That's why he short, short, short armed the shot because he shot it too quick. Like that's yeah. that's a lot of pressure, man. That's not. All, I wouldn't call that an open shot. I would not say that. Yeah, George, you tripping, man? Come on, George. George had to slide. So. Lamont, I, I think I think this argument is this argument has been put to bed, bro. Like, <laughs> like people need to stop arguing over who's the most clutch. That shit been over since 2018. Like for real, that's just the truth. And yeah. like I said in the beginning, people so, are going to lie and they're going to continue to lie. The numbers will never lie. <laughs> hey, now watch this. 
Now watch this, Africa. I'm going to show you what happens when somebody... This is why mama mentality gets people kicked off of teams, man. I'm going to show you why. <laughs> watch this. Going off script. Freestyle. Going off, off, off script. All the yeah, that, must, that must be the most frustrating thing as a coach. Oh, man. my God, man. This is what happens out. Now, I'm going to show you all in real time. So, so this guy, what was the play meant to be first off? Okay, what so, the, so the play was, so you see the guy running to the out of bounds line, the white yep. guy. Yep. So I'm gonna show you. Tournament sponsor. Hold on, let me let it play. There's chairs. So the guy running to the out of bounds line right mm -hmm. there, Mason. I think he at the time might have been a junior. Yeah, he was a junior. Probably the best at this level, at the club level, best three point shooter in the country. Hands down, the play was for him. Um, it was basically it was basically a double stagger. He's taking it out. He was going to come off a double stagger. And if if he didn't get the double stagger, the ball was supposed to reverse and we were going to hit our big man in the post. Our big man, you'll see him here. You'll see that he's wide open. You will mm. see that. Okay? okay. So all our best score needed to do. And this is I'm talking about the guy that shoots the ball mm. is a guy that in this very leading up to the national championship. Might have had two 40 point games, a 50 I'm point cooking. game, barbecuing, barbecuing everybody. All right. This is what happens when that mama mentality kicks in. All right. And you try to be like Kobe. This is what happens. And look, this is, I'm going to move this comment because this is a defensive battle. If you look at the score, it's 42 44. I'm talking about defense, all defense this game. Mm. Hold on. Let me, uh, low scoring game. Yeah. And for us, that was unnatural because okay. we, we scoring in. 90s, 80s. We, I mean, we really going. Oh, you got 32 seconds, so you got a lot of time on the clock. So a lot of time. Lot of so, time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So we had. So I caught the timeout at half, so we can get it at half. Mm. Hold on. Let me, I want y'all to watch this. Mom, have any more timeouts or no more timeouts left? I think we don't have no more timeouts. Okay. okay. You still All dissing right. Kobe on the sly? All right. Well, well, I, I'm not dissing Kobe. I'm just telling you how mama mentality is BS. Hmm. All right. Watch After that. this game, Matt. Because they have been running nonstop, and I'm sure they'd like to sit. So Absolutely. special Take, thanks to our tournament sponsor, Chairs. Take a load off. I know everyone's standing here. Everyone's standing here right now. But afterwards, we're going to take a seat. Off off you, can, you can see everyone rising to their feet. The Wisconsin oh, section getting nice and rowdy. Oh. All right. We get a glimpse of that. The inbounds oh. there. So Grand Canyon's going to keep the ball. Gay gets it into Black. And Black sets up. 30 seconds to go. Oh. Two-point game. Comes off. Back to Rice. Rice Post. against Post. Oh. <laughs> Now, look. Now, check this out. If you look at my big man, right? Look at the big man, right? I'm talking about our big man. He he, 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 he um, transferred to uh, Cal. Um, what Which Cal team? He transferred to one of the D1 schools in Cal. This is, this, if he gets this ball, he's going to dunk on this guy. He dunks everything at the rim. If, he, if we throw the ball into the post, he's going to dunk it. We tie the game and we we plan. This is what happens. We play it again. Gay gets it into double black. stagger coming. Black they don't set up. the double stagger very well. Go. Two point game. Reverse back. Now, yeah, if you it. throw the ball in, yeah. Yeah. this this African dude who's been hacking the whole game. <laughs> he's actually on the wrong side. He's actually still. He's going he can just, to get yeah. dunked on if all he does is just dump the ball in the paint. Mm. See, but you know what Jacob said. Hmm. He talked to George before the game, and George said, "Man, make sure you have mama mentality today." That's what George told him. Oh, right? <laughs> you foul! You foul! That's mama mentality. That's oh, he got number eight as well. He got number. <laughs> eight. <laughs> that's, that's what mama mentality gets you right there. Now, if you don't like, I wish you guys could see the look on my face, bro. I might, I might have had my hands in my, in my, in my, my head in my know, hands. Even if that goes in, that's not good. And so. Man, check this out. So the result was this. This is what and then because things go from bad to worse. Against Corbett, Rice pulls up, doesn't get it to go. Corbett with the rebound. Gets it over to Mueller. Mueller gets down. No to Corbett. Yeah. Corbett dunks it with 18 seconds to go, opening up a four-point lead. That yeah. might do it. Hold on, what? Wow. Four-point lead. Gunning. Okay, hold on. Now hold on. <laughs> hold on. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's really over. Like we down four now, so he's really over with it now. <laughs> So look, but look, anyway. he, that mama mentality had him about to do something crazy once again. <laughs> <laughs> he was rising up once again. Like that. That's mama mentality. Because look, 
Because if anything, if he was going to do anything, he could have swung it just to yeah, our big yeah, yeah. in the corner. <laughs> our big in the corner was one of our best three-point shooters. He didn't even do that. Wow. Hold on. E hold on. Easy said he got fouled. No, he didn't get fouled. I was there, I was there in real time, uh, Easy. My man did not get fouled, bro. That was a that was a great block. Huh? Mm. And so Mamba mentality cost us a national mm. championship. And even if you missed, like the the post missed, like it wouldn't have been a fast break. He could have recovered on the other side. Got Girl, the if he'd have threw that ball in the post, mm. we, we, the game at worst tie would have game. been tied. Yeah, tie game. Yeah. But man, oh man, yeah, it cost yeah, us, man. Yeah. So man, uh, I guess people sliding now. But I, I'm gonna leave you with this. I just got a question. So <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be shutting what, it down. <laughs> what um? When does a player become clutch? Well, when does a player officially become a clutch player in the NBA? How long do you think it takes? In the NBA? Yeah. In well, the NBA. it depends. Clutch as defined by fans in the media or clutch as defined by people um, that study the game, coaches. and, and So mm, both. You for, can both. Yeah. So so I'm going to I'm going to tell you guys something that a lot of you guys won't understand. The Lakers view Austin Reeves as a clutch player. Oh. How do I know this? Because when I watch, especially if you just watched that game yesterday, and they feel like he's clutch on both ends. Because when the Clippers have the ball on that last possession, call a timeout. Who did they bring out with confidence? They 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 had sub D low out, right? They in their defensive closing lineup, they left Austin Reeves out there. Now oh, yeah. If you let the fans and media tell it, he ain't a clutch player. But if you talk to that team and the value of what he brings to the team, the little things that he does late game, offensively and defensively, he's clutch to that team. So clutch as defined by us or clutch as defined by the people that are sitting there in the moments. And, you know, I even had a situation where we played a game a couple weeks ago. I had a player, um, guy came off the bench and he was cooking. It got to a tight moment in the game. I ended up subbing him out late in the game, brought in just another guy that I just trust more in those moments. And I had to tell him after the game, look, you played a hell of a game. I didn't take you out as no punishment because you ain't nice. It's just that I feel like this guy in these moments handles these moments a little bit better. He's just a tad bit more clutch. And so you just – and I think that just goes to – some of your higher IQ guys. And those tend to be the guys that are in the game, late game a lot, or the clutch moments of a game. Mm. So they are. A lot of people won't say it. They are clutch player. Oh, he had that uh, one uh, I saw, like uh, Norman Powell, one-on-one -on -one with AR, and uh, he played great defense in that game. I remember the last time they played the Clippers, who had the clutch stop against Kawhi Leonard that time? Mm. Yep. Austin Reeves. You know, he consistent effort, makes smart plays, can defend without fouling uh, offensively, can always make the right pass, can make tough shots, knows how to draw fouls and get to the free throw line. But if you let the fans and the media tell it, he's a scrub. Mm -hmm. Especially so the locker room. The locker room hates him. <laughs> no, I actually like Austin Reeves. I think he's, he adds value and he's actually playing well, well above his contract. But I would say this. Wait. Do you think for players like a uh, um, like Anthony Edwards, SGA, it takes it, uh, even even a Luca. I don't know if people would call him clutch. Yeah, uh, I personally would. But does it take playoff runs to become clutch? No matter what you do in the regular no, season, it takes playoff no. runs, right? It no, doesn't take the playoffs. I didn't. Play I play didn't. I didn't need to see no playoff runs to know Joe Johnson was clutch. Okay. Right. I didn't need to see no playoff runs to see that know that I could get a ball to Jamal Crawford late game. Hmm. Um. I don't, it, you know, you don't need it. Sometimes it happens in the playoffs. Sometimes it don't. But if you can perform late game, you can perform late game. Like people, people over glorify this. Oh, in the finals, late game is late game. When it get late game, everybody know this is showtime. This, these are the moments that get you on ESPN. These are the moments that can get you paid. So it could be late game in the in the beginning of the season, end of the season, playoffs, finals. If you can perform late game, you're gonna have a job. Um, because in the league, they don't separate it. You know, they don't, they don't separate it. You think you really think Africa, if, if a guy been barbecuing people in the fourth quarter, all regular season, if it's it, 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 it made five game winners in the regular season, you really think that guy going to be sitting on the bench in the finals? 
Mm, uh, no, I don't. Nah, because it matters. Blue Lamont, Slumu Africa, George. Y'all have a good night, mm. bro. All right, Beast. Yeah, 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 I'm going to slide too, man. But Salute Lamont was a good uh, stream. Man. Yeah, I'm about to shut this one down. I'm going to go ahead and end it, man. All right. All right, <clears throat> All right George. Stop hating Lamont. <laughs> My hate, man. All right, y'all. Look, man. FYL Sports, man. Great show today. Um, He said, Luca looks up to LeBron. Oh yeah, Ramon. I don't know why locker room hates. Um, I don't know why he hates Austin Reeves like that. It's it's, it's wild, man. He said Charles is from New York. I don't know where he's from. But it is what it is. All right, y'all, man. Look, this is another episode, man. Appreciate you guys being here, man. FYF Sports, man. Um, like I said, make sure you guys on the way out, man. Um, if you want to support the content, like I said, man, YouTube be doing working wonders when it comes to ad revenue. Uh, and like I said, man, because there's been too much truth telling, especially with the Deshaun Watson situation um, and some of the other videos where we have to expose the truth on certain things, man. Um, they've really done a number on our ad revenue. Hold on. Let me drop this uh, one more time. I'm tripping. I didn't put the wrong thing in the chat. Um, but yeah, make sure if you want to support, man, you hit the cash app to support dollar sign FYL sports. If you appreciate the content. Oh, let me give a shout out to the people that did hit the cash app. My bad, my bad, my bad. Um, and I put it on the screen. I did have a banner on the screen for it. Um, salute to Chris in the cash app, man, supporting the channel. I uh, also salute to um, Brian in the cash app. He came through and supported the channel as well. And then salute to um uh, hang i just see the name hang in uh make sure y'all put y'all youtube names in there put y'all youtube names in there so i can really give y'all proper shout outs so people could know who y'all are um but again i appreciate y'all supporting the channel man appreciate y'all pulling up fyf sports like on the video comment the video share the video that share button is significant i think that's the most underrated button on youtube that share button does wonders for channels man if you really want to impact a channel and help a channel succeed and grow hit the share button share the video to facebook share it anywhere it don't matter where you share it but that share button and understanding shares um that has that helps engagement so much salute to empire jeff as well another content creator i'll uh, make sure i go check out empire jeff tv man they cook on the lakers content almost after every game it seems uh a lot of times late night streams uh, pick and pop one of the ogs man one of the ogs man he's been here since day one for real for real I'm talking about when we was in the old studio, just me and FYF Fred, man, Pick and Pop, man. I think Pick and Pop might have sent the first ever super chat on FYF Sports, man. So Pick and, Pick and Pop is always going to be a legend over here on FYF Sports, man. Uh, so salute to him as well. Um, he said, Ghost 2000 said, great show. Salute to Ghost 2000. We're pulling up as well, man. I, again, we grinding, y'all. Look, the next grind, we, 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 we've been talking about. We've been talking about hitting 100K for so long, man. We hit 100K. Um, and so now it's time to grind, man. Now it's time to grind. We got to hit that half a million. And look, for us, it's not going to be like some of these other channels, man. I know these these NBA players. Am um, I going live tomorrow, Just Blaze? Yes, I will be live. Like these NBA players, man, they, as soon as they touch down, man, obviously they numbers start going crazy right out the gate because, you know, they, they bring in a significant social following. Um, that they're more favorable in the algorithm and things like that. Um, so they can shoot up really high. I mean, it still takes a ton of work, man. So, again, we just got to keep grinding, man. Uh, keep our OGs on the channel, man. Um, I know the notifications don't normally work properly. So if the notifications haven't been working for you, if you're not always getting notified when we go live, then here, here's the link right here in the chat. Join the Discord. Uh, join our Discord. We always post when we're going live, but we also have other content creators in there as well who post when they're going live as well, just because we know the notification button is just so finicky. Um, we got D Savage. He says, Jordan Baldwin in the 80s already. Yellow eyes on them 90s roids, man. Look, see D Savage. The, the, the one thing people don't understand, D Savage, is that if you truly want to push a conspiracy theory, you can Right. Jordan was balding in the 80s. And if you really and we all know that balding, especially at an early age, is an indicator of steroid use. Right. Um, but 
without significant evidence to support it, right? A test here or anything like that, without any significant evidence to support it. I mean, how can we put that allegation on him? And I think the same thing applies with LeBron James. There's, there's, I think people, people have been trying to connect LeBron James to steroids for years, for years. Even when the federal government has come out and said LeBron James has nothing to do with steroids, people are still trying to connect him. We just saw Jason Whitlock. Jason Whitlock is out here mad. He's saying ESPN and all these media outlets should be talking about LeBron and steroids. And it's just like, I know Jason Whitlock has access to more information than we, we are even privy to. I know he sat back and read some of those documents about the people that are truly connected and the people who aren't. But it just seems like he has an intention with his content. And his, his intention is to slander LeBron James whenever he gets an opportunity. He, he can say that's not his intention. He's, he's going to pretend like he's all high and noble, right? Just like he does when he's talking about, you know, some of these other people. When he's talking about Stephen A. Smith, he tries to pretend like he's high and noble over Stephen A. Smith, but he's not. Right. He, you know, he's on the blaze network. The, the only reason why he can make baseless allegations and kind of talk like he's the National Enquirer magazine um, is because he's on the blaze network and they're going to allow him to toe the line of misinformation. Um, We got um William, somebody in here said LeBron biogenesis, Anthony Bosch, 2013. And you know what? Malcolm. Now, Malcolm. I have the document, just like I have the document that was released, um, that was reported on by ESPN. So if you're going to mention LeBron, Biogenesis, Anthony Bosch in 2013, then read the document. Because if you read that 2013 document, Malcolm, LeBron's name was never in it. There was only one mention of his name, one mention, and it wasn't even of his name. It was a former employee that said they used the initials LJ on one of the packages. That's it. And so what people automatically did, like I said before, people are so it could have been Larry Johnson, which at the time there were multiple Larry Johnsons. There were multiple LJs. There were people with LJ in the NBA. There were there were people with LJ in the NFL. But pe because people are so thirsty to connect LeBron to steroids, they just automatically said, oh, that LJ had to be. It had to be. And then there was another package with another set of initials. Um, There was like an RP. And then people were running around saying, oh, that has to be Rich Paul. And then you come, then come to find out, I think it ended up being some baseball player. He says, so Randy Mims being a client. See, that's the thing. See, that's why you got to do your research, Malcolm Williams. So Rand, Rand, Randy Mims was never a client of Anthony Bosch. Right? Randy Mims was a client of a guy that worked at a GNC. He was a bodybuilder. Um, and this guy would simply buy his steroids from someone connected to the Balco thing. And so Randy Mims went to this guy at a GNC. He says, do you have any access to off the market fat loss drugs? See, you guys are always just going to use the word performance enhancing drugs or steroids. Randy Mims didn't ask the man for steroids didn't ask the man for PEDs. It was a fat loss drug that he was buying. It was it illegal. Yes, it had an illegal ingredient injury. Well, uh, it's an ingredient that's now banned. I think it's called ephedrine. So ephedrine, which used to be sold over the counter, that's was the main ingredient in the fat loss drug that he got. And, but he said he stopped taking it because the ephedrine made his stomach hurt. 
And so, you know, so that's what it was. So he started taking ephedrine, a fat loss drug, and he couldn't keep taking it because it made. So that's the only connection. So if you're telling me that your only connection with LeBron to steroids is you have to connect his manager to a guy that knows someone at GNC, and he only knows this guy at GNC because he bought ephedrine, a fat loss product from a guy that worked at GNC who was buying his steroids from a guy. And so now he says, well, see, Malcolm, see, you missed our show, Malcolm. You said, what about Savannah James? That's what he says. He says, what about Savannah James? Her, you know what? We, we got the document. I can explain the Savannah James connection. We talked about it on the show, but I could drop the link for you because I'm going to drop the link for you. Because I want you to tell me about Savannah James's connection. I want to know what stories y'all have concocted about Savannah James being connected to this. Let's see. Because the federal government was very clear about this. They were very, very clear about this. Let me drop the link for him. And I don't even know if he'll click the link. I just want, I want you to tell me what story did you... Because a lot of you guys that love to connect LeBron James to steroids... You're only going to run to people that are going to give you these hyped up, fictionalized stories that aren't based out of any fact. So if you get your story from the Kwame Browns, if you get your story from all these people that sensationalize the stories of narratives, Jason Whitlock's not going to tell you why Savannah James's name was on that document. They're not, they're not going to be honest about that. ESPN was honest about it when they released the document. The federal, the federal government was very clear about why Savannah James was connected to this. He says, it's the same exact thing when Peyton Manning got H. So Malcolm, if, if that's what happened, then I just want you to click the link and tell your story. If, 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 if the federal government said that there was, there was, PEDs being purchased in Savannah James's name. I need you to come up here and tell that story. And then I'm going to tell you why her name was even mentioned. I, I just want to see. I, I because again, I love having clips of silliness. That's why I'm dropping the I'm dropping the link. If you're gonna say Savannah James was buying the steroids, as if as if Savannah James, with as famous as she is. As if that's the way you hide your steroid purchases, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. This is this, hey, y'all. I'm gonna tell y'all. According to according to Malcolm, LeBron's grand plan to buy the illegal PEDs was to put it in his wife's name. That's the grand scheme to hide it. What what a scheme! He says Malcolm got it off Dreamers Pro's uh, stream. He probably did, man. I don't know, man. I'm not seeing it, man. It, uh, it doesn't look like he's clicking the link, man. Doesn't look like he's clicking the link, man. Hey, D Savage. Hey, D Savage. This is LeBron's grand plan. Hey, Savannah. I can't get caught buying these steroids, but nobody's going to recognize you or your name. So I need you to go buy him. That's the plan, y'all. That's what he's doing. Just put his wife on Front Street, right? Like the, the, the man who's dang near a billionaire, he couldn't go get a, a, a homeless person. He couldn't go get an a, 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 a old teammate from an AAU team that he could have paid off. He's just going to get Savannah James, one of the most recognizable faces to all sports fans, right? Yeah, you're like even Rich Paul, too. He going he gonna to use Savannah James, Rich Paul, and Randy Mims. Three extremely recognizable faces in sports. He's going to get them all together in a room. Hey, y'all, everybody knows me because I'm LeBron. But they don't know y'all, Savannah. They don't know you, Rich Paul. They don't know you, even though you married to one of the biggest pop stars in, 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 in music history. And Randy Mims, they don't know you either. I need all of y'all to go buy steroids for me so I can keep playing and they not going to figure it out that they just think the federal government is just that brought that dumb, right? 
federal government would just laugh at that. And then you don't be, you don't think that there's some federal agent who's making twenty five dollars an hour that ain't being extremely thirsty, willing to break or crack a case like this that would have jumped all over that. You got some guy on Jason Whitlock's channel talking about, I don't think the federal government even cares no more. Really? You really think the federal government ain't being thirsty for you literally got people in the federal government tr trying to chart. They, these people in the federal government put Donald Trump in a RICO act. I want you all to listen to how stupid this sounds. These politicians are so thirsty for fame. They concocted a way to put Donald Trump in a RICO act. And you think you don't think they will go after LeBron? These people that hate LeBron think that everybody is LeBron James fans, as if these basketball conversations that we have here on YouTube matter to some dude sitting in some courthouse or sitting in some CIA or FBI office or DEA office. Like these conversations, you imagine being the deep, imagine being the detective on the case and, and LeBron James file come across your desk. And, and, and the summary of the report is, yeah, it was witness of Savannah James got some steroids and and we followed her. And we watched and there's a connection to her giving it to LeBron and X, Y and Z. And then imagine being the detective that says. I love LeBron James, I can't do it, I'm ripping this up. That. And, and and now what you have to do if you're that detective is that the other detectives involved in it, you know what they have to do? Now you have to pay them off. Hey, y'all, I love, I'm too much of a fan of LeBron. I need y'all to stay mom on LeBron. Even if we fire you, even if you move on to other jobs, I don't want you to tell anybody about this investigation we did on LeBron, the fact that we caught him using steroids. And then, and, 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 then, and look, 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 look at Malcolm Williams. So Malcolm Williams... See, Malcolm Williams don't know FYF, y'all. We did a whole stream on Chell Sonnet. Do you know, Malcolm Williams, that Chell Sonnet has spent his entire career making up lies about LeBron James? It got so bad that Dana White in the UFC had to come to him and said, this beef that you have with LeBron James is wild. You need to stop. So, Malcolm. Before he even made a single steroid allegation, I'm going to tell you all the other allegations that it all started at a party. Oh, Malcolm, this is all documented. It all started at a party where Chell Sonnen's wife was hitting on LeBron James. This is all public information. And Chell Sonnen got super jealous because now there's pictures of her hanging all over him, whatnot. And y'all know all the rumors that comes with that. So Chell Sonnen, the next day after this party says, oh, LeBron James made a, a sexually suggestive, unwanted comment to my wife. And the quote, the quote that he said was, he said that LeBron James said to his wife, uh, Malcolm, he said, LeBron James said, are those TikToks in your TikToks in your blouse? Are you happy to see me? That's what that's the first allegation. He said that LeBron James went up to his wife and said, Are those TikTok tacks in your blouse or are you happy to see me? That don't even sound real, but that's his first allegation. That allegation didn't get any traction. So then Shell son and sits down and does an interview. And his next allegation is. Yeah, I was in an airport and I saw LeBron James in the airport. And I watched this man allow a kid in a wheelchair to roll up to him. And the kid just asked for an autograph. And he says, he just pushed the wheelchair. He said he pushed the wheelchair just to kid, get, get the kid out from in front of his face. He said, LeBron James is something else. That was his second allegation. Now LeBron is out here beating up on crippled kids in wheelchairs, pushing them out the way in airports. Nobody else in the airport saw it but Chael Sonnen. 
Nobody heard of it. Shell Sunday would just happen to be on the same red eye flight, no cameras, and one of those spots in it. That's what happened. And, and there, there were also more allegations. And it got so bad that the UFC had to come to Chell Sonnen and say, look, you need to stop talking about LeBron James. You are a UFC fighter. And then after Chell Sonnen gets busted for using steroids, after his career is over and he writes a book, and now that he's trying to sell a book, Malcolm Williams, now he comes out sitting on a podcast, career over. He's already been disgraced from the USC because he's gotten caught using steroids. What's the easiest way for me to sell my book? Oh, I can go back to LeBron James. Let me accuse LeBron James of using steroids and let's see how much traction I can get because he's taking recognition of all the LeBron James haters online who will run with anything that anyone with little bit of popularity says, even if it has no facts behind it whatsoever. And so there were other people that invited Chell Sonnen on today's podcast to go into detail about this. You know what Chell Sonnen did not do? He did not go to other podcasts with more detail because when other podcasts that required more levels of credibility pulled up, he didn't have the answers. He didn't have any additional information. He said he knows the guy. He said he, he claimed that he knows the guy that's selling LeBron James steroids. Well, we would assume that it's the same guy that ratted him out to the UFC. The guy that was selling him steroids is the same guy that ratted him out to the UFC. So we would we so it puts us down a, a trail where we kind of can identify who this person is supposedly selling LeBron James steroids, but he didn't want to go down that road because he was making everything up. And then it would come to a matter of legality if he went so far down that road. So uh, again, unfortunately, Malcolm, man, you just got to start looking at the facts. And so the most recent document came out was a document from the U.S. government. And again, it did talk about Savannah James, but they were very clear about why they were talking about Savannah James. And it had nothing to do with steroids. But see, you guys don't care about the facts. Y'all just say, Savannah James, name on the document. She must be giving steroids to LeBron. That's what it means. That's the farthest thing from the truth. So, again, if I can get the document, I know you guys can get it. Uh, Malcolm, I know you can get it. You don't seem like you're not very you, – you don't seem like you're not intelligent. And so it's very easy to go get the document and read it, man. That's all. No, Shedrick Cart. I don't think KG's hating. When KG says those things, the reason why what KG is saying is not getting any traction is because he's just joking. See, that's the problem with nowadays is you can't crack a joke without people running with it as if it's the truth. The reason why we don't have any good sitcoms no more is because these comedians can't get on a sitcom and crack a joke like we used to hear on Martin. Martin get on a sitcom talking about gays, this, that, the other. And it was funny. See, but now you start, you make a joke and it's the most serious thing in the world. Now, if you crack a racial joke, which sometimes are the funniest jokes, you got to go apologize to entire communities, even though you was joking. People talking about, yeah, I was so hurt. You, you literally had people. You, I'm going to tell you all the era that we live in. You literally had grown men talking about, man, when I heard, when I, when I saw that Kyrie Irving shared that book, man, I was so hurt. It brought me to tears. Then you had a guy saying about Kyrie Irving, man, uh, you know, my son, my son, you know, came up to me and said, dad, 
I saw what Kyrie Irving had to say, man. I just can't wear these Kyries anymore. That's what that's what his six year old son said. These people will these people will play victim to no end to get fame, fortune. They will make up stories. They'll use their kids. You can't even joke no more. And the fact that Kevin Kevin Garnett can't even joke no more, like he has to be so serious, is is sad. It's just sad. That's this is what we come to. You can't joke. Everything that you say is taken seriously. It's 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 crazy. That's but it's y'all the ones play into it. Thank you, Ramon. He has to be. If you if you can listen to Kevin Garnett, and remember, Kevin Garnett is in the NBA circle. He's not that that's like a brotherhood in, in in his own right. He's he's never been the one to to talk and try to scathe players within that within that circle. You got y'all gotta stop. Y'all gotta stop. But but the thing is, if y'all want to go find some dirt on LeBron, you can go find it because it exists on Jason Whitlock's channel. It exists on Dreamers Pro channel. And those two guys both do what? Love talking about stuff without showcasing any factual evidence whatsoever. So that's the problem right there. So uh, like I said, man, y'all just got to do a little research, man. You know, and, and look, if it comes out that LeBron James has used steroids, I'll, I'll, I'll judge it as I see fit. But some of the things that I'm seeing this man do on the basketball court, I don't have nothing to do with no steroids. When I saw LeBron James knock down five threes in a quarter, I'm a shooter. When I played, I'm I'm a shooter. If there's a steroid out there that makes your jumper better, then I need to know what the hell it is because I want it. I want to be a knockdown shooter. If there, if there if there's a steward out there that makes that jumper start falling, because really the only thing, I mean, because LeBron James is Le LeBron James is athleticism is declining right in front of our eyes. LeBron James is having sustainability in his league right now because he's added a jumper to his game. That's why LeBron James is able to do more on a basketball court because he's taking a step back defensively, so he can't defend the entire game. He's not the same athlete. We see this because he don't have the same explosion going to the rim. He ain't dunking on everybody. And he's dealing with an ankle ailment. LeBron James's game has expanded because he's added skills to his game that steroids or PDs can't provide. But I'm telling you guys right now, if there is some such PED that exists that gives you a better jump shot, I need you to please tell me exactly what it is. Because I'm going to start taking it tomorrow. He says, Whitlock exposed Stephen A for lying about his college career in his book. See, no, Malcolm, we already exposed Jason Whitlock for lying about that. See, Malcolm, you know what we did here? I'm going to tell you what we did over here, Malcolm. You know what we did, Malcolm? You know how we know Jason Whitlock is lying? You know, you, you know how we know that the stat sheet that he pulled up was fake it's because live on this show we called the school and asked about the record keeping and the school themselves said there is no box score there is no physical documented box score for games prior to 2001 it's also on their website they said it don't exist. It says we don't have them. It says we did not start keeping them till after 2001. So the problem with Jason Whitlock is the problem with him producing a box score is that they did not start keeping them until 2001. So now the next question is, Jason Whitlock, how did you get a box score 
that was never retained, saved, or kept by any university in that conference. Because the game that he's referring to is from one of their conference rivals. And even when you go to that other school's website, they did not even start retaining box scores until 2003. See, so again, Jason Whitlock, because he's on a platform that allows him to toe the line of truth more closely than if he was on a national network, if he was on Fox News or ESPN, he would not be allowed to say these things because of the legal ramifications. But because he's on a smaller network that allows their host to toe the line of truth a little bit more finer, he's just towing the line as best as he can tow it. He's going to say Stephen A. is lying. He can produce fake box scores. When Stephen, Stephen A. told him, he didn't average any points because he didn't even play. Yeah, Y'all act like Stephen A. Smith is running around here saying he was an All-American in college. Stephen A. Smith is telling you, I did not have a career because I tore my knee up. If he played in two, three games, what's the difference between saying zero games or two or three games? See, what's another problem? If Jason Whitlock was lying, just like, remember, Jason Whitlock is a savage person. This man even went and got former Colorado Buffalo football players to speak against Deion Sanders. If Stephen A. Smith was lying, do you really think he would have a problem finding one teammate that didn't like Stephen A. Smith to come onto a show and expose him to the world? Why is it every time he talks about Stephen A. Smith, it's just him yapping out of his mouth? How come he can't go get one of the players from that team? Yeah, Stephen A. lying, man. How come he can't go get a coach from that coaching staff? Obviously, he can't get Big Al's games because Big Al's games passed away. Why can't he get nobody to corroborate these stories that he's claiming Stephen A. lied? I want y'all to ask yourself that. In, a, in an era where all you got to do is offer one of those guys two, three thousand dollars one thousand dollars and they're going to come up here and spill the beans on everything. Whitlock don't be cooking, Stephen A. Whitlock just loves to lie. Jason Whitlock loves to lie. And the reason why he can lie to you guys is because he knows none of you guys are going to do what I did. Who, who else is going to call Winston-Salem State to see if there's a box score? I did. There's no box score. Jason Whitlock went on Ticket TV. And he allowed Ticket TV, a guy that hates Stephen A. Smith, to call him out on all the lies because nothing that he was saying was making Smith say, what has Jason Whitlock not done? Jason Whitlock hasn't said a word about that Ticket TV interview. See, Jason Whitlock thought I can go on Ticket TV's podcast because I know he hates Stephen A. Smith. And we can both pile on Stephen A. Smith together. That's what he thought. Then he went on that show and Ticket TV went on to call him out about all those lies about Stephen A. Smith because there was no proof to support it. See, it's not just me that can easily see that he's lying. I don't even agree with a lot of stuff that Ticket says basketball wise, but when you start looking at the stuff Jason Whitlock says, it don't take a rocket scientist to see that he's lying. Right? When people like Dan Liebertard, Jamel Hill, all of these other people start to come out. And the see, the first thing that all these other people came out and said about Stephen A., the first thing they said was, he ain't lying. Everything he said about Jason Whitlock Stephen A. had people coming out of the woodwork saying, well, he ain't lying. I want y'all to find one person 
that's come out and publicly said to Jason Whitlock, well, he ain't lying. Find me one. I just want one. Find me one person that's said about this Stephen A. Sisson situation. Get me one person that's come out and said, well, I can corroborate this. He ain't lying. He ain't got one. Just like when Stephen A. Smith said he no longer has any friends left in the media, he ain't got one. It's not. Look, man, I don't know. I mean, what you want me to do? I've already, I've done videos in this channel calling Stephen A. Smith a shock jock. I've done videos in this channel calling Jason Whitlock a shock jock. I don't have any reason to favor Stephen A over Jason Whitlock. It's just the problem is when you get to lying and it's become very clear and evident that you're lying, what you want me to do? You just want me to be like, let me gloss over it because I don't like Stephen A. You just lying. Now you're saying LeBron is boule. LeBron is a Mason. LeBron sold out. Okay. See? So you one of those. All right. Y'all just y'all trip me out how y'all be knowing about everybody who's in these secret or secret service organizations. But you can't figure nothing else out. Y'all didn't crack the code to the Illuminati. Y'all didn't crack the code to Germatria. Y'all didn't crack the code to everybody that's in the boule. Some of y'all be getting lost in the mall. Some of y'all can't figure nothing else out. It's, it's amazing me how you know all this. See, the one thing, the reason why I know this tattoo stuff is stupid. It's because how many things, how many symbols did we see? When we like that that we just like the symbol. It look cool. You know, you know how many people got Chinese and Japanese tatted on them and don't know what the hell it means to just look cool. I, I know, I know, I know somebody who had because I studied a little Japanese. I know somebody that had the symbol for ka. So in Japanese, they go ka, ki, ku, ke, ko. They use sounds like that. He had the symbol for the, the letters ka. He had a chain with the letter, the ka symbol. I said, what's that mean? He said, it means power. I said, no, that means ka. It's just a letter, K-A. It don't mean nothing. I said, why you got ka on your neck? I can, I can still draw the symbol to this day. He's like, no, nah, it means power. I was like, no, bro, I study Japanese. It just means ka. Sometimes people get some of these things because it's a cool thing to do. But see, and some, some of you guys got tattoos on y'all very bodies. Some of, some of y'all get crosses, don't go to church. Don't mean nothing. Oh, yeah, but people get weird tattoos all the time, Malcolm, and have different reasons for it all. I mean, y'all done flipped, y'all done flipped into this conspiracy stuff so much that y'all y'all didn't got the rock. Jay Z start doing the rock symbol because back then it was a cool thing to do with the rock. Is this something cool to do? I don't know who came up with it. They probably came up with it in some studio. Now all of a sudden, Jay Z Illuminati. This is how, so y'all. This is what happened, y'all. This is how Jay-Z became a billionaire. That's how he became a bit. That's all you got to do. Yeah, this is this. This is this is how, according to Malcolm and all these Illuminati heads, this is how you become a millionaire. Now, look, I'm telling you all right now. I'm telling you all right now. If I get 50 million dollars over the next couple of weeks, then this right here means something, right? If I if my studio goes from this to a to a six seven figure studio in the next couple of weeks, then y'all know this means something. Now, if y'all come back in a couple of weeks and I'm still sitting here doing this same thing, y'all know this don't mean nothing. 
because I'm doing it. I'm public with it. If this mean anything, you, you if this mean anything, Juan Stockton, you need to go tell the people that run this symbol that FYF Sports is interested. That's what you need to go tell them. Go tell them and tell them to write me a check because I'm throwing up the I'm throwing up the rock. And I need that check. I'm throwing up the rock. I need to be a billionaire. Joe, 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 look, celebrities do weird stuff, but I'm Joe, you know what else I've seen? I've seen people do weird stuff just to join fraternities on a college campus. Do, do you know, do, do, Joe, do you know some, I'm not even gonna say the frat. Some of you guys might know. There are some frats where part of the hazing is getting some pole stuck up your butt. Do you know to be a Q dog? What you know, one of the essential parts of being a Q dog is you got to get branded. Boom, right there on your arm. Branded. A real, and, and some of the, and I'm talking about dip the thing in the fire, stick it on your arm, brand you, burn you. So that scar starts to stick out from your skin. Look, bro, bro it ain't no secret society. You know what it is, though? You, you know what it is? They not seek. It's not a secret society because they're not secret with it. They just a brotherhood, just like a basketball team is a brotherhood. Just like there are certain things that happen in a basketball court and in a locker room that you will never know about. The, the, there, when you on a basketball team, it's a, it's not even a spoken code. It's not even something that you say. What happens in the locker room stays in the locker room. Does that make being on a basketball team a secret society? There are things that happen in a locker room that you will never be privy to if you ain't in that locker room. Does that make them a secret society? He said, can I ask Gil if there's any players in Illuminati or just look, I can on the next stream. I can. I could I could try to get them all here. I'm just not trying to waste nobody's time. He says, you got to open your third eye. Come on, man. Kobe was throwing up the rock symbol too. All right. Everybody, every black person that's been successful, y'all, is because they threw up the rock symbol. They got rich. Any rapper that got rich is because he threw up the rock. Illuminati. J. Cole can't really rap, y'all. J. Cole was part of the Illuminati. Tupac and Biggie can't really rap, y'all. They just part of the rock, the Illuminati. Jay-Z really couldn't rap that well, y'all. He wasn't, he ain't gonna go down as one of the goats of this game. He just threw up the rock symbol. Jay-Z wasn't gonna really be that good. Juan, Juan says I haven't done my homework. No, I'm just not stupid, Juan. See, Juan, I know that there are secret societies. But the secret, but the real secret societies are exactly that, Juan. They're secret. You don't know about them. That's the purpose of a secret society is to be secret. If Juan Stockton, you need to ask yourself. How secret is a secret society if you know about it and you ain't nobody just like me? If me and you know about it, it ain't secret. Herm, Herm what is wrong with these people? That's like y'all saying frats being accused. Being a Q ain't no secret society. You just in a frat. That's your frat brother. Ain't no secret about it. And they and they do have things that they keep within the fraternity that stay in house. I got one of my homies is an alpha. One of my players was going through the process of being an alpha while we were playing. He would come to practice, beat up, all types of silly stuff. I didn't ask no questions. This is how they get down. That's just part of it. It's, it's not no secret. I don't know what y'all talking about, though, man. Secret societies and stuff. If it's a secret society, it's going. If it's a if it's a true secret secret society, like the way y'all are explaining it, then it's then it's going to be secret. 
Oh, Moxie, Malcolm said it's another misconception because you know what Malcolm's going to say, y'all? They hide it in plain sight. That, that, like all the people that push these uh, agendas with secret societies, one of their favorite sayings is they hide the truth in plain sight. They be saying, they, I, that's, hey, they hey, Eli. They got all this stuff figured out. They got all this stuff figured out, man. I want I want you to figure something out that can help me make twenty million dollars over the next three months. Figure some figure something out that's actually resourceful. Y'all be doing all this research in gematria and all this stuff. When are you gonna figure something out that can actually? I want you to figure out what are the next Powerball numbers. If you're into gematria. Why are you not spending your gematria time studying the next Powerball or Mega Million numbers? All the Mega Million and Powerball is is numbers. Why don't y'all go figure out something that can get somebody paid? Yeah, I'm talking about they be they be talking gematria. Man, look, man, I'm not trying to hear about look, Malcolm. I'm there's only one way I'm going to believe you. If you use Gematria and you give me six numbers to play on the Powerball and I win, I promise you, I will put you on the channel. I'll fund your own show. I'll give you one third of my lottery winnings and I will allow you to propagate and have a show speaking about these secret societies and Illuminati for as long as you want. See, the one thing y'all can't do is y'all can't give me y'all can't give me no useful numbers with gematria that's gonna get me paid. The only numbers y'all can talk about is hey, look, they be wasting their time, D Savage, talking about this. Yeah, Kobe, 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 uh Kobe spent 37 minutes at the Laker game. He he left. He left uh, the game at 7.30, flipped the three and the seven. And we flipped the three and the seven because he changed his mind from driving back to Cali because he chose to fly back to Cali. That, they be just wasting their time with this stuff, man. This is a big waste of time. Okay, Malcolm, you and the Bitcoin, Malcolm. All right, I'll take that. Give me the next cryptocurrency that's going to blow over the next couple of weeks. Give me the give me the next cryptocurrency that's going to that's going to spike to where if I invest in it now, I can sell when it hits its peak. Give give me one. Give me something that's useful, y'all. Y'all can't give me nothing that's resourceful to the people here on FYL Sports. Titus, I already tried Cardano. I'll try again. I tried my ladies. Um, Doge is still out there. I mean, look, I could pull it up right now. I'm going to tell you everyone. I didn't try them all. Everybody just talking. Look, I, I just was in my crypto app. Watch this. I'm going to pull up my crypto app right now. No, I'm investing in all these. Y'all lying. Hold on. Ether, Ethereum. Look, Ethereum is I, I, Litecoin. I got them all, Malcolm. They ain't blowing up. I got them all. Uh-oh, he says Lamont equal 33 in Gematria. What that mean? All right, hold on, hold on. All right, look, look, I'm gonna tell you what I got, man. I got Kronos, Reserve Rights, I got Terra Luna Classic, Ethereum, Terra 2, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, BNB, Solano, XRP, and Cardano, Dogecoin. Okay, I got all them. So what can I expect to happen, my guy? What can I expect to happen, Malcolm Williams? Since, since, since I'm invested in all of those, what can I expect to happen with these numbers, man? Yeah, Doge has went up, but it ain't go up because I know Gematria. Uh-oh, hold on, hold on, Ishmael. You said, hold on, hold on. Ishmael said my name equals 33. It says Lamont equals 33. Oh, AD broke his hand. I forgot that game was on. Damn, let me see. 
Damn. How did AD break his hand? I forgot the game was even on. And Marty and Solano. It's early in the game. Y'all sure about that? Bro, AD is in the game, man. What are y'all talking about, man? AD's in the game. See, see what I'm saying? See, this is this was a prime example. Oh, so Malcolm, Solano will go up 300% by next year, man. So I can't find out if you're telling the truth for another 365 days. All right, man. All right, Malcolm, man. Hey, y'all. Malcolm said invest in hey, Ramon. See, Ramon, here's the thing, Ramon. If I'm a Freemason, I'm going to let you guys know. If I knew a secret with Dramatria that we all could win the Powerball, we all win in that Powerball. We all about to have mansions. You think I'm going to find a secret to power winning the Powerball? And it, I'm going to at least sell it to y'all. I'm going to be like, look, I just hit the Powerball. You need to send me $150 cash app, and I'm going to tell you the secret. I'm not even going to charge you that much. I need $150, though. Oh, I know, Malcolm. Malcolm, I play with strikes. I've been I've been buying and selling strikes. I actually like that. That's kind of fun. I like doing strikes with, the, with Bitcoin. I love doing strikes with Bitcoin. To me... That's strategic. You got to think a little bit. It's like playing the stock market. I love buying strikes. One of my favorite things to do. Actually, I don't think I've taken an L buying strikes. I think I've I think I've come out ahead buying strikes every single time. We got straight divorce. Jesus died at age 33. There's 33 shots from twin glocks. There's 16 apiece. <laughs> Oh, Trey Duvall, man. Trey Duvall is wild, man. Trey Duvall is wild, man. Hey, hey, Trey Duvall, that's what it means then, I guess. You, you hit me with the rap lyrics. Which means <laughs> one of my cousins holding 17. He hit me with the Nas. 17 hits your crew, two winning. The hey, a lot of people don't know about that, man. Hey, Nas was spitting, man. Nas, Nas, Nas is up there. When I heard him rap that song backwards, that's when I knew he was different. When I heard him rap that song backwards, I said, this is some diff this is different right here. This ain't no normal rapping right here. This ain't a normal brain. But see, y'all, if you let Malcolm tell it, Nas ain't great. Nas just threw up the rock, man. That's why he became buddies with Jay-Z, man. Malcolm says that Jermaine Berry, I work for a tech company, my guy. I make 500 in a few days. Um, I mean, look, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't, Solano is not a bad investment. I don't, I don't, I don't think you're wrong about the Bitcoin. I mean, there's no right or wrong answer, but I don't think you're wrong. But, but I can figure that out just studying the, studying the, studying the coins. I can study the coins and come out right. I can, and you know, if you, if you know what you're studying, if you're not a study trends, you don't, you know, it ain't no Illuminati secret. Yeah, Dogecoin has been a weird coin because it's been up really high and it's been down really low. I don't know. I, I would just I would just say Ramon Hope, if if you're dealing with like a small budget, um I say you'd be better off going with a, a like like a super small coin. Like the coin that I've been telling everybody about Ramon Hope is called Miladies, where you can literally take one hundred and seventy two hundred dollars, but you can buy like three billion tokens. And so. Like. It just needs to go up marginally, like if you just if it just has a week where it like goes viral and it goes up, you're going to become an overnight millionaire. Like, I feel like if you're going to invest small, because like with some of the other coins like Doge and Bitcoin and Ethereum, those coins are for the for the heavy players, which means 
it's hard to make money unless you invest in like 20, 30, 40, 50,000 here or there. It goes up and then you cash out. Because if, 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 if you have 100,000 in Bitcoin and it goes up, that's going to be a big, significant chunk that you're taking out. But if you got $25 in Bitcoin and it goes up, who, who want to take out a dollar fifteen, a dollar seventy five, and whatnot? So you know, it's, it's certain coins for the big players. It's just like a casino, y'all. Some people go to the high limit, but if you ain't got the bankroll, you ain't going to the high limit. You're going to the penny slots. So if you plan with a lower bankroll, I would say study. Coins like Miladies, right? Miladies is backed by what? A feminist movement? Women? It's if you're looking at the trends, if you're looking at how the government, it that's what's that's what's kind of winning right now. That type of mindset. Invest in coins that's kind of following certain trends. Look at the technology behind some of the coins. Right? What's backing these coins? But that's all it is. Y'all. Look, FYF Sports, man. Look, we've been we've been live too long. You said it's 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 my lady. Yeah, that's why I, I might be saying it wrong. I call it ladies because when I search it, when I search it, all I have to I think the the lettering for it is just ladies. L a d y s. It's called my lady. You're all right, Ramon. Hope. Yeah, it's my lady. It's my lady, Ramon. It's my lady. Um, I would say buy like ninety dollars worth of it. If you see the the reason why I say buy like ninety dollars, Ramon is if it if it blows up with ninety dollars worth, you're gonna have enough of that token to where you're gonna be a millionaire. You know, if some of them zeros start getting knocked off and they get closer to you, like the thing is, Ramon Hope is you can buy ninety dollars worth of ladies if it just gets to one cent. You're gonna have enough money that's gonna change your life. It don't even have to get to one. If it gets to one dollar, you might be set for the rest of your life. But if it gets to one cent, you're going to have enough money to go buy a business, to go do some stuff, buy a house. So that's what I say. But you might as well, if you're going to invest, just invest in the coin where, look, put a little ninety dollars to the side. You know, you're probably never going to lose it. It's probably going to go fluctuate and go up and down. But if it go crazy, you can flip 90 into something ridiculous. Yeah, 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 Ramon. Yeah, that's the one I would say do. Because I tried Terra Luna Classic, but Terra Luna Classic, man, the, the guy that was running it got caught up in some fed case. So that's raps. They starting to yank for Terra Luna Classic from some of the uh sites. I think they I think they just yanked uh I think they just yanked it from crypto.com. So I don't know, just be smart with it. Like I say, just look at look at look at the money you want to invest in it. And we all got, you know, a lot of us got like little 30, 40, 50, 90 dollars we can sell off to the side and not really care about it. But my ladies would be the one I would say. Because you can get billions in tokens there. So it is what it is. FYF Sports Show, another great podcast episode, man. We're gonna be back. More sports and news. We're gonna try to get a live stream in for you guys tomorrow. We will be having debates Saturday, man. So make sure y'all tune in. Um, so again, we're gonna keep it rocking. But FYF Sports, another great podcast episode. We're gonna be back with more sports and news until then. It's FYF Sports, and we out. Yeah, we done came from the bottom Mad that we up, but I don't hear him talking Started with knowledge inside of my noggin We took a dream and then we started vlogging Put my city on the map now I'ma say how it is and now I'm back down On the road to 100k, we finna act out We gon' show them that we not just in the background We the main event, we the main show We the one that people always gon' pay for If I yeah, if we the best, no debate though Number one sports channel, every angle I'ma show them all how we ride Best sports top show, we not like them guys We playing it safe while they fed the lines We pushing the narrative all the time Like who the go in the game is not MJ Kobe Bryant top 10, not what we say I keep my life, you want us very overrated Keep it real, if it ain't fact, we don't say yeah Now I'm safe, but we won't be ignored Bitch in the lake, I'm missing the drugs again, a hell of guy. I got a lot of deal with it, my mind is kind of slipping away. What's on the line? I made up my mind, some shit, I'll just taste it at gray. Whatever it is, whatever it was, it's never gonna be the same. How do I explain? What's
been going on with me You say that I changed, but you wouldn't know the old me I think that I saved you, tell me who gon' save me I'm way too fucked up in this club, I'm ashamed, baby You say that I changed, but you ain't really know me When I'm around my dogs, girl, they just can't control me Tryna spend my time right, using every second of it Tryna spend my time right, using every second of it For it's too late, girl, before it's too late Can I speak my mind right, girl, before it's too late I've been moving backwards, rolling up the back roads Gotta be in dash, dash, do you have my back up? For it's too late I said my peace, girl, girl, know what you mean to me You just keep it real with me I've been moving backwards, rolling up the back roads Every time I'm backstab, ah uh, Missing the liquor, I'm missing the drugs again A hell of pain I got a lot to deal with and my mind is kind of slipping away What's on the line? I made up my mind Some shit, I'll just taste it at gray Whatever it is, whatever it was It's never gonna be the same Floating again and I'm running the map They say the best defense is just to attack Hopping through too much, it's hard to attach All this bone on is beyond to relax Gotta get up, gotta get it again They ain't get the message, we spinning again I fit my back, I'm just leaving it in Get what they want, then they leaving again I cannot act like this ain't nothing new Been getting smarter with all I've been through Got what days I've more rewarding than truth Tired of keeping the G just to lose Let it all out when I step in the booth With that for some months, now it's time to recruit Read the investments, it's time to recoup It's time to recoup, but how do I explain what's been going on with me? You say that I changed, but you didn't know the old me I think that I saved you, tell me who gon' save me I'm way too fucked up in this club, I'm ashamed, baby You say that I changed, but you ain't really know me When I'm around my dogs, girl, you just can't control me Trying to spend my time right, using every second of it Trying to spend my time right, using every second of it For it's too late, girl, before it's too late Can I speak my mind right, girl, before it's too late I've been moving backwards, rolling up the bad roads Every time I'm backstab, I... Girl, I bought a whole mall if you ask me, girl 